friends, hello fellow traders and everyone else. Welcome to Top Step TV, the biggest, biggest and most watched futures trading stream you will find. We have an all-star cast each and every day of the week. Real traders, real educators that give you 100% transparency in their trading. You're not going to find another show anywhere else that offers what we do here at Top Step TV. It's education, support, good looks, cool swag, and tradertainment. This is opening call. He's Hogue and I'm Horn. There we go. We have an exciting and informative educational programming for you today. And throughout the week, we will be your trading buddy, your trading mentor, newscaster, fellow trader. And yes, even that voice in your head that says to accomplish great things, we must not only act, but also dream. Not only plan, but also believe. So let's get ourselves ready for this Friday. Yes. Friday. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. For some top notch, up to date market know how. Johnny, my friend, you got your uh, game plan ready? I'm all set. All right. How's that checklist looking? It is checked. All right. And the journal? Can I see it? Uh, already. Already. Okay, there I, it is. I already got some stuff on it. You got stuff on it. Okay, good, good, good. All right. All right. Uh, Johnny, how you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. Glad it's Friday. You got a little bit of a bug running around the house. Both my wife and and uh, and son uh, have a little something, a little flu, something going on. So I've been hiding from them. We had them hanging out in my office, uh, just uh, trying, to, trying to avoid the bug. So uh, they'll be fine in no time, I'm sure. And uh, just looking forward to... Uh, what we've got going on in these markets today oh my goodness it is friday and then thing is uh preservation friday right trade or capital not trade? preservation that is the question let's get to the news here u.s stock futures pointed to mixed openings on wall street after the equities advanced in the prior session uh talking about coinbase coinbase reports better than anticipated earnings in the fourth quarter thanks to a jump in activity um, also, uh, meanwhile, Jeff Bezos uh, sells another two billion in Amazon shares. Well, talking about corn, uh, corn base. We'll talk about corn <laughs> in a little bit. I got corn on the mind. Why? Coinbase. It posted its fourth quarter income that topped estimates as the approval of the spot Bitcoin exchange traded funds boosted activity on the crypto exchange platform. Back to Bezo. Um, like I said, he sold another two billion worth of Amazon shares, at bringing the total value of the stock he has offloaded, dumped uh, in February to approximately six billion. Now, according to the regulatory filing, Amazon's current executive chairman uh, sold 12 million shares in the e commerce Titan Tuesday and Wednesday. In a move valued around two billion. Wow! So he's aiming to sell about fifty billion, fifty million shares, uh, worth about mm. eight billion over the next year. Huh? What's he's that? Just collecting you, his money. He's, he's going on vacation. That's what he's doing. Mm -hmm. um, all right, Johnny. What do you got for us? All right. As far as economic numbers and the talking feds this morning at seven o'clock, uh, our good friend. Barkin was Barkin. Um, just a couple of comments from him. He said that the January economic numbers were messy and not that good. Whatever that means. I would say that might be a little bit hawkish. Uh, 730, the PPI numbers came out. Uh, just kind of looking at, the, at a couple of them, the core month over month January, they were looking for 0.1%. Uh, it came out 0.5%. Uh, the PPI month over month in January, the overall, they were looking for at that 1.1% 1, 1%, that came out 0.3%, a little bit inflationary there. The markets have responded to that. We'll see how they continue to respond throughout the day. We also had housing starts and permits. Both of those were lower. At 8.10 today, we have another talking Fed bar due to speak. Uh, 9 o'clock, the Michigan consumer sentiment due out 11.10 
another talking fed bailey uh daily is due to speak and then at 12 o'clock as always on fridays we've got the baker hughes rig count coming out Ooh, the vix course. jumped about two percent after those numbers came out it's up at 1435 we got a nice jump in the dollar index as well it's 104.64 last i checked and the yield on the 10-year continues to creep to the upside it is a little bit higher again this morning 4.33%. So that's what we've got as far as economic numbers are concerned. As far as earnings are concerned, it's a small list, smaller companies, not nothing really that I think is worth mentioning. We'll find out. Maybe Rips has some other ideas about that uh, mm-hmm. as he uh, comes into the, the program here in a little bit. Okay. All right. Uh, dude, where's my crude? Well, oil prices dropped in early European trading today, weighed down by the Persistent concerns over slowing demand. Well, still, crude prices are set for a uh, mild weekly gain. That was after clocking volatile swings throughout the week. A softer dollar offered oil prices some relief after the greenback fell sharply from a three-month high tracking weak U.S. retail sales. Um, Johnny, it's nice to hear that a young kid working hard, boy or girl, getting a scholarship to a college, you know, doing something that uh, um, gets them to the point of success and it is noticed and a college picks them up. Well, I got a story about these two teenagers uh, in Colorado, as a matter of fact. Um, two high school students in Colorado have turned throwing bean bags. <laughs> right. Colorado teens get the first ever corn. See, that's what I was talking about, corn. Cornhole scholarships. They were recruited by a college near American Cornhole League headquarters. I didn't know they had a headquarters there. Well, congratulations to Gavin and Jackson, 17-year-old seniors at Thunder Ridge. That's a pretty famous name for high school. Yeah. What high school do you go to? Thunder Ridge. Why? Um, in Highlands Ranch, they become the first students to receive this scholarship. And uh, they actually have a league, a D1 league. They are considered the best amongst high schoolers in the country. So good for them. I hope they do very well. Mm-hmm. And um, tip of the week, James, are you with us today? All right. What up, Yacht? How you doing, brother? There it is. Let's stay informed. Okay, this is our tip of the week, and it is Friday. Remember, staying informed is just not important uh, for traders. It's essential for survival and success in this fast-paced business and competitive world of trading. You need to be informed, and it's always better to be safe than sorry. Johnny, any take on that? Yeah, what was it? uh... In, in Wall Street, Gordon Gecko says it's uh, uh, information that is uh, most important. Information. You've got to be. The most valuable commodity I know of is information. There you go. There you go. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah, stay informed. you, you got to know what's coming up. you got to know what's coming out. Keep an eye on the news. You never know when something is uh, unusual is going to happen. Uh, and... Uh, Always stay protected by keeping your pulse, your finger on the pulse of the the information. Exactly. That was great, Eddie. (laughs) Well well said. Well said, Johnny. Well, um, let's get to our charts here. We got a big day ahead of us. Uh, Johnny, what do you got for our contestants today? All right. As always, starting with the daily and the S&Ps. Upside structure, of course, remains. Um, The breaks, pullbacks. Dips, they all continue to get bought. Uh, open interest incre- in- indicates yesterday that we did see some money come back into this market after that pullback. Uh, of course, today is PPI and anything can happen, but there's no break in upside structure here. Uh, no reason to fear the worst here. Uh, you know, Most of the information that we have coming out today is already out. Uh, Michigan sentiment, really the only thing left out there that that could throw a horseshoe into things. And we did see a pretty decent pullback after that number. As always, whenever we have information, especially known information, 
we don't know what's going to happen. Anything can happen. If you were able to capitalize on that pullback off that number, wonderful. If you Hopefully, if you were in it, you, you didn't get hurt. But there are a couple of things I want to talk about here in the S&Ps and the NASDAQ, which really treated yesterday quite a bit differently. Now, yesterday morning, we talked about the fact that there was a late spike on Wednesday afternoon in the S&P and the NASDAQ. The market opened right at the high of the late spike yesterday, pulled back almost to the base of the late spike. I was looking for it to get down to what was the base of that late spike, 5011 quarter. It got down to, where did it get down to? 50, 1375 in the S&Ps. That's when the buyers came in and continued to, to, to just con do what they do. They buy dips in this market. Now, the, the NASDAQ treated it a little bit differently. If you remember yesterday morning on fast markets, they were heading different directions. It was a real, really kind of a confusing morning. But once we put in that, that failed auction to the downside yesterday, it was all upside for the S&Ps, almost putting up another... Uh, late spike to the upside yesterday. Now we've got overnight inventory. Do we have any? No. I think that the uh, 730 numbers liquidated any overnight inventory. The market is set to open in range. Now the question for me is going to be, uh, do we reject value from yesterday or do we reaccept value from yesterday? Um, the... Well, the all-time high is certainly in sight, you know, and looking at this in, sh in the short time frame auction, we've been putting up higher highs and higher lows, and I'll be kind of looking for opportunities uh, in that direction. Uh, the profile yesterday was a double distribution trend date to the upside with a failed auction at the bottom. We talk about failed auctions. Deanna talks about failed auctions quite a bit. This is what it looked like on the profile. So this is the market profile from yesterday. There's the late spike. We opened, I, you know, right at the high of the late spike. That's an that's a higher probability of acceptance of higher pricing. The market came almost to the base of the late spike. We left the failed auction to the downside. We left a double distribution trend day to the upside. Yesterday in the Nasdaq was a little bit of a different story. Let's take a look. Here we go. So upside structure, yes, we know this. Yesterday in the NASDAQ, while the S&Ps added 24,000 in open interest, the NASDAQ lost 6,700 in open interest. Now, it was a completely different trading day in the NASDAQ. However, we did end up bringing value higher, which marks acceptance of higher pricing. Even though we took out the low of the late spike on, in, the, in the NASDAQ, we traded right to the points of control. We left a, a failed auction at the downside, and the market continued to rally for the rest of the day. That seems to be the pattern that these markets are in. So the upside structure, of course, is intact. Um, we, we've had the NASDAQ dropping open interest all week. What the heck does that mean? Well, it, the market is really starting to set up an area of balance. We, we traded to... The week last week's high, we traded the last week's low. We did the same in the S&Ps. S&Ps just presenting with a little bit more strength to them than the NASDAQ. Take a look at the 30-minute chart here. So I know it's kind of hard to see sometimes, but this was the gap from Tuesday to Wednesday. We've filled that gap. We filled that gap in the S&Ps as well. Yesterday, we opened at the high of the late spike. This is how valuable some of these, these profile levels can be. So we opened at the high of the late spike right there. There's where we opened. The base of the late spike was here. We took that out, but we traded right to the point of control from yesterday, left a failed auction at the downside, and rallied the rest of the day. Overnight inventory? No, we really don't have any. We were maybe a little bit long coming into that number. That, that push to the downside evened out inventory. There, I would say that there's a higher probability of the NASDAQ now opening with a gap to the upside than the S&Ps. Maybe the NASDAQ is going to try and catch up a little bit to the S&Ps, or is the S&P going to try and catch up with the NASDAQ? We don't know. Again, anything can happen. It's PPI day. We'll see what these markets do once the regular trading hours open. All-time high also in sight here 
18,121.50. And if we do open with a gap, we'll, we will use gap rules. In, a, in other words, if we can't close the gap or accept in value from yesterday, we'll look for opportunities for a continuation move to the upside. You know, acceptance of value from yesterday could bring us back down to the low of value, which lines up very nicely with the base of the late spike from front, from Wednesday. So visually, things are lining up. They're giving us opportunities. We see if the opening range is the higher the low. We'll, we'll start to stack the nuances as we get into the uh, the uh, fast markets segment, and we'll take a look and see what we have. The profile yesterday was a little bit different. It was a normal variation neutral day that says that this market is maybe likely to start seeking new levels to facilitate trade. We did not hold the base of the late spike. We traded all the way down to the point of control, but we can see value moved higher. Here's the value from Wednesday, uh, Tuesday. Here's the uh, Wednesday. Here's the value from yesterday. So even though it, deep, dick, it uh, dug a little bit deeper into the range from, from Wednesday, value continued to move higher, which is in indicating, yes, the market is still accepting value at higher levels. Take a look at crude oil real quick. So crude oil is really and has been all week testing at a very important level. Uh, you know, the, the market has been struggling above weekly kickoff high. It's gone up above it. It's tested the, the, this trend line. It has not closed above the weekly kickoff high. My question is, if there's enough buyers to hold price up here, when are they going to exhaust the sellers? expiration for the March contract is on Tuesday. We won't have to worry about rollover and maybe even starting today as some of the, a lot of most of the open interest has already moved into future months, but this is a really interesting market today. And I'm going to be really fascinated to see how today plays out. Now take a look at the 30 minute chart here for the crude oil. Let me let's make sure I uh, went over everything on the 10 minute, the, ten, the, the daily chart. Yes, I did. So, Yesterday, uh, you know, we we had some overnight inventory to the short side. A lot of that overnight inventory, by the time we had opened, was uh, was kind of reconciled. We opened in range and value, so we just basically kind of looked from low of value to high of value, and then you know retested weekly kickoff high, retested this trend line. We're retesting it now. Overnight inventory relatively flat but now we're starting to see in the day time frame a little possibility of support at the weekly kickoff high 7760 if we see some meaningful participation above this trend line this could be a, a potentially big move a big breakout to the upside but we've been running into sellers up here we've been running out of buyers up here which one is going to win up here there's a big battle going on in crude oil and i'm really fat i will be fascinated and hoping that D is in the chat today and making comments on what she's seeing in crude oil today so that we can all kind of get a, a, a glimpse of, of what Deanna is doing and what she's thinking in this market. It has been a tough market to trade, but this potential breakout could change things and, and move us from the uh, balancing area that we've been in. We've got this, this triangle formation, pennant formation, whatever you want to call it, is range bound. If we can break out and accept above this, this market could, could, no guarantees, could become directional if we do find acceptance and we bring in new business to the upside. That's what it's going to take. It's going to take a lot of new business, new buying, short covering, whatever it's going to be to, to make this big move to the upside. If it indeed happens, we've been struggling at this level all week long. Which side is going to win? I'm gonna be I'm gonna be fascinated to see how this plays out. Even if you don't trade crude, it's gonna be a fun market to watch today. All right, now gold. Wow. All right, so Goodness. we've got the pennant formation we broke out of here on Tuesday. <clears throat> it was a B breakout. The continuation was a little bit um, what disappointing on Wednesday. We had a pullback yesterday. What this is doing to me is what it looks like. It's it's kind of creating a bear flag, a bear flag. We lost 6,600 in open interest yesterday. That's what happens on bear flags and bull flags. You get a 
move in the opposite direction that reduces open interest and typically on lower volume. We didn't see the lower volume yesterday, but that 6,600, actually the, 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 the uh, estimated loss in open interest was 6,666. I don't want to use that number. <clears throat> so in essence, we did what a bear flag would do. It reduces size, evens inventories for the next leg, which could be to the downside today. Take a look at the 30-minute chart. <clears throat> Excuse me. My goodness. All right. So here it is. So um, overnight inventory, nothing until the number came out. But this is a bear flag. It is contrary to the recent breakout. We lose open interest. Volume wasn't that bad yesterday. It ended up being a normal variation trading day neutral, which says, you know, it used up a lot of its ability to facilitate trade in that level. It's going to start looking for new levels to facilitate trade. And now that we've broken out of that, of the lower end of the trend line of the bear flag, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, how many points of contact ended up being on this trend line? And yes, this is a new trend line. I'm, I'm including the information from last night, but we could have had this trend line here, here, and here. And look how it how it held it until the number came out, and then it broke down below it. So this is, again, a bear flag. This could bring continuation to the downside. It all depends if it brings new business, if it, if it, uh, if it brings in volume, look for it to continue. Don't try and step in front of it without some sort of ability to see some sort of structure. What kind of structure? Well, let me look at the dead cat bounce we had here. There's a lot of congestion down here. This could end up being a supportive level. Without that, then I think, you know, we've got a swing low from, well, uh, this kills me, from back here that could be targeted in on this continuation from a bear flag. That's a significant move, not suggesting by any stretch that it's going to happen or it's not going to happen. Just taking a look at the context, ladies and gentlemen, take your deep breath. Make sure you are remain humble, grateful, creative, and centered in your trading today. And by all means, please remember every day, all day long, pray for peace. We need all the prayers we can get. Let's have a good trading day. I like that, Johnny. Thank you very much, John. Uh, today on the menu, Friday's menu, uh, Rips is going to be here in just a few minutes. Uh, coming up for uh, Fast Markets, uh, Andre is going to join Hogan Rips. Shoulder Tap, Hogan Mick. Uh, power Players, we got a Peter Tuckman today. Pita uh, going to be here at 11 o'clock. And um, we're going to have Top Quiz with Brooke. Brooke is back by popular demand. Uh, we got Hogan JD for group coaching. Robert's going to have the strategy lab uh, with Anne Marie. So that's going to be at one o'clock central. And of course, power hour on the day. Uh, we will be having Andre Dolby and Danny trades. And um, well, well, we'll see here um, what those guys are going to do here for that last hour of the day. So let's uh, get ourselves ready here and. Uh, Let's see here. What do we got going on here? Oh, oh, somebody's here. I bet you it is Rips. And there he is. What's good up, Rips? Morning. How you doing? Good morning, Ho. Good morning, Eddie. How you folks doing this morning? Very Happy good. Friday. Well, we got... <laughs> it's Friday, baby. Um, oh, you man. know why we got here? Ever. Let's get our horses in the gates. And then uh, we'll just wait for the bell. We'll get Andre in here and um, pee. So. What do we got brewing today, Rips? Well, it is an interesting day of price action so far. We had the PPI read come in quite hotter than expected. I uh, heard Hoax commentary on that as well. And uh, what's interesting to me is that we are kind of holding down at the point of control from my visible range volume profile. We have two big areas that I want to see interacted with today. One of them we already have is this just big old point of control that's sticking out right here. We came mm -hmm. down, the market barreled down about 100 points from here in the NQ. We did kind of bottom out here for now. But what I would like to see is that if we have more downside pressure on the market, I would like to see an auction down here to around 797 and three quarters. If we do break below that, I would expect that we see a lot more pain in the markets today. But I do expect that we have at least a little bit of a kerfuffle down there, some kind of disagreement <laughs> in price once 
once we get down there. If we do, then I do think that we could probably see some kind of retracement from there bouncing back up, but we'll have to see. Off the open, we can also see a potential retracement from this point of control, maybe a touch higher or so. But we'll have to see. I'm probably going to be sitting on my hands, sitting on my butt, hands on my butt, whatever we want to call it, before the market opens and during the market open because I want to see what kind of range we develop here. So I'm going to be quite patient on my trades today. All right. Have you been patient so far? Have you done anything yet? Yeah, so far, I uh, just traded in the, one of my Top Step Combine accounts. We are currently sitting up about $100, uh, just really trading small size in that little tight range there. I didn't take the flush because I was just kind of watching to see where we'd bottom out. I was in, instead looking for a reflex trade, and there wasn't many points to catch on the reflex because I was only trading, you know, one and two lots. And so, you know, made 60 bucks here, made, you know, 100 bucks here. So nothing really crazy. Just a, a very slow start to my morning, but that's fine. This is the kind of day where, you know, we have a lot on the table. We have that PPI data that's going to be coming, uh, that has come out, which is very important for the market participants to now digest. But at 10 a.m., we also have the University of Michigan sentiment that's coming out. And that is very important for FOMC members to kind of guide what they're looking for in the future here. So 10 a.m. is going to be 30 minutes after the open. It's going to be a very big deal for the markets here. But then we also mix that in with that we have Vice Chair Michael Barr, who's been speaking right now. Um, talking about mm -hmm. commercial real estate risk, which is kind of important. And then we have Mary Daly, who's going to be speaking at noon, 10 past noon here. And all three of the speakers today, they're all FOMC voters. They're all voting members. So they carry a lot of weight in their words today. So a lot of volatility. And then you pair that with it is Mopex Friday, which means that we have all of the monthly contracts expiring today. So it's going to be a jam-packed day full of volatility, or it's going to be a very tight and sticky range. So we'll have to see here how this kind of unfurls. I'm happy to be hands on my butt here for the open sitting on my hands waiting for the opening range to kind of develop and take that market information and see if we can use it for about you know 10 minutes after the open or maybe even waiting until that university of michigan print comes out so we'll have to see lots of potential volatility on the table today just for clarity's sake when rips is talking about the the time for these numbers he's talking eastern time so the, yes. the michigan sentiment is nine central nine central make sure everybody's aware of that and uh so um I was you you kind of already touched on it the uh the the, the mopex uh do you have any really kind of solid expectations or any anticipations for that today well, uh, there's a couple things that are kind of keying me in for clues. Right now, we have SMCI, which has been ripping to the moon lately. We only have strikes the last time I checked, strikes up to 1210 right now. So if we do have a lot of people buying into that, the open interest is sitting around 3000. Generally speaking, if we have 3x the amount of open interest that's purchased today. So if we have a lot of people barreling into those calls, let's say 10,000 in volume before 10 a.m. Eastern time. Uh, in that first 30 minutes of trade, there is a good chance that that could kind of open up a gamma squeeze. We saw that when Bill Huang was trading stocks back in the COVID heydays, uh, he would barrel into out of the money calls and that would create gamma squeezes in a lot of these names. So SMCI runs the risk of that today. We also see a lot of call activity in NVIDIA and also AI names are really heating up. So SMCI is considerably an AI name, Microsoft, of course, and NVIDIA, all AI plays Google as well. But AI is important now for Apple. We've been talking about this a lot. Apple released a press release last, uh, mm -hmm. basically before the close yesterday, and we saw Apple do a little bit of a boot scoot and rally to the top side. Uh, we did see Apple talking about that they have a competitor coming out potentially to Microsoft's Copilot. And we also had big AI news yesterday with, I believe it's called Sora or uh, something, OpenAI coming out with a video uh, generation that uh, was just breathtaking if you're in the AI space and, and looking at that as a fan. It was just a, an amazing thing. So Sam Altman was posting that. Sora, thank you very much in chat. Uh, Sora was the, the new thing that OpenAI is coming out with we are one minute to the open so i don't want to steal anybody's time here we got uh we got somebody at the door andre andre come on in andre. oh what's up fellas what's up fellas hey what's up, boys? Good, how are you doing? Andre. good good uh inflation a little hot again huh Woo. <laughs> yeah but and the market's going to say, yeah, whatever. It's hot. Hold my beer. <laughs> exactly. exactly. <laughs> it's whatever. Don't the poke the bear with the stick. That's right. That's what we learned yesterday. Because <laughs> the bear will make yes, that sir. sound. <laughs> yes, <sir. laughs> All right. 10 seconds, folks. Oh, okay. Good luck, everybody. Hopefully, everybody has a great discipline trading day. Good luck out there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's see where we are here. Friday, Capital Preservation Capital Friday. Distribution. Opening range. Yep. 
NVIDIA is off to the races like here. Meta is tooling to the way downside here. Microsoft kind of shaking and baking about here. Amazon is uh, kind of catching a bid. S&Ps are rejecting off of the VWAP. And Apple is confidently auctioning above the VWAP here. Tesla, a small roll. And Google kind of chopping about here. I think we'll see some interesting volatility here today in these uh, AI names, AI geared names. And when I'm talking about AI names, I'm looking at names like Apple now specifically, Meta, NVIDIA, Microsoft, Google, SMCI. You know, Amazon has an AI component. Amazon basically powers the whole backbone of the internet with AWS, if you didn't know. And right. uh, they are using AI to power the uh, the shift in traffic of those servers. There's a lot that goes into that. But yeah, a lot of AI news on the table right now that is kind of going to direct things. And the only reason I'm bringing it up on a day like today is because, again, like uh, John was, and I were speaking about, it's, it's Mopex Friday. That's mean all the monthly op options are expiring today. So that can create an immense amount of volatility. Or not. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> either gonna be, it's either going to be volatile or sticky. <laughs> exactly right. That's uh, that's one of my favorite terms when we're talking about the market. I like to humanize the market as much as possible. So when we get in a range like this and it's just kind of holding, it's just that sticky volatility <laughs> Good or lack of volatility. We open right in the uh, upper distribution from yesterday. Five dollars, six dollar opening range in the S and P's. I haven't taken it yet, mm -hmm. but there is the possibility for repair. In other words. We go from the upper distribution of the double distribution to the upside yesterday to the, to the, the lower distribution. Uh, haven't done anything yet. Uh, kind of taking a rips idea here of, of keeping my hands on my butt here early yep. in the session, just to let things kind of settle out here a little bit. And, you know, don't forget, we do have that Michigan sentiment at nine o'clock mm. uh, central time, which, or Chicago time, which is, you know, that's 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 going to be a, a lot of talking feds are going to have their eyeballs on that. So we have to see how that plays out. Yeah. Talking feds could be burning down the house, perhaps. Um, so, yeah, wow. we will have to <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> 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 ah, I got him. <laughs> uh, so we will have to see, you know, people have been rewarded for their patience a lot in these markets lately. So waiting until 9 a.m. Uh, Central yep. Time, Chicago time has been beneficial to a lot of traders out there. And just letting this opening range kind of pass you by and being patient and letting that the market sentiment kind of show its hand to you. The one thing that you can hide in the market is hidden orders. But once they hit the tape, you can't hide them. So we use this market information to our favor. So when we wait for this opening print, we get an opening range. We can kind of judge how much volume was taken at certain areas and points of liquidity in the market. And then we just use that to our advantage as a patient trader would. So that's what we're going to be waiting for today. At least on my part, I want to be probably waiting until that Michigan sentiment read comes out. Hey, Rips, you said all the Fed speakers today are voting members. Exactly right. All three of them. And that's going to be Michael Barr. We already heard from Barkin, I believe. Uh, uh, yeah, Barkin was this morning. We had Michael Barr uh, yeah. speaking about 10 minutes ago. And then Mary Daly is the final speaker. She's 10, pin, uh, 10 past noon uh, Eastern time. Awesome. You know, man. Yeah, Barkin had some really good comments. He said that the January economic numbers were messy and not that good. I, 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 I quoted that. I was talking about that on my stream this morning. I said, this is so funny. We have a voting member. And he says, hold on, let's get this on the record. Not that good. I'm just going to say it. Not that good. Oh. <laughs> wow. It's kind oh. of a, a precarious thing to be saying as a, an FOMC voting member. It's just, I, I, I thought that was hilarious. I read that. I'm like, is that it? That's that's what he said. I mean, <laughs> Incredible. His entire feedback. And can we get a, a specific quote on the economy, please, Mr. Bark? And he goes, yes, put this in writing. Not that good. <laughs> Not that good. <laughs> wow. Uh. <laughs> Uh, so we are like, bouncing up here back to nine tens, which is kind of this point of control that we've been contracting liquidity from basically since the 14th of February. So basically since Valentine's Day, this point of control is resting at about nine, ten and a half in the NQ here. So I do expect a lot of liquidity to be exchanged in this area. And until we kind of break out or shake out from this range, I really don't want to be taking any trades. We have a trigger point that's up above. It was earlier around 41, 941 in the NQ. That trigger point is now moved to about 950 here. If we have some entertained liquidity above 950, we could probably start to see some stops blown out to the top side. Uh, probably gauge about 10 points higher at 960 and three quarters. If we get above that, we're going to be well above the VWAP and then we could start to squeeze. But 
that isn't without a lot of push through a lot of this top side liquidity right now. The offer is looking a little bit heavy to the top side. So again, very happy to be waiting here. Very happy to see this trade kind of develop on its own. Yeah, just for reference, the opening range in the S and P and the Nasdaq currently are the high of the session, and the you know the S and P looking very seriously like it just wants to repair the, the the profile from yesterday. If you guys want to put it on my chart, I'll show you what what, what I'm talking about with that. We so we have the as soon as we get the chart up here, all righty. So. Just to still waiting to get my charts up here. I should that they should be shared. There they go. Ah, there we go. Okay. All right. So yesterday was a double distribution trend day in profile. In other words, that first half of the day ranged here. The second half of the day, well, it, it left that area and then ranged up here. When we open at or in between an assumed point of control from these two sides, from these two uh, distributions of time and volume. There is a tendency for the for price to go to both points of control. So there's a, there is a main point of control from the from the profile yesterday, but I kind of separate these these distributions to separate sessions, session, separate auctions, right? So this auction has a point of control approximately right here. This auction has a point of control really where the where the main point of control is. So there's a possibility if the if the market is going to go into repair, it's going to come through this level down to this point of control to see if there's anything that that any liquidity, anything that got missed on the push to the upside. This was a very quick move. Didn't spend a lot of time there. It was somewhat emotional. That's why we leave the single TPOs there. And then we ranged up here. So I'm going to, you know, I, the opening range was, was kind of above it. So I wasn't that, that confident in the idea that we were going to go to repair but if we do go to repair you know an opportunity might exist down here we may see another opportunity inside the opening range to look for an opportunity to complete the repair but the market seems to be down here seeking any any anything that didn't get done down here it wants to go down and recheck and make sure that there's nothing no business left to do there before it's going to pick a direction so I'm liking oh, the would idea. Would you mind sharing the uh, the numbers because it's a little bit difficult to see those uh, those numbers on the chart. I'm sorry. Thank you. No, very no, no, no much problem. Just getting a couple uh, comments here in chat about that. Yeah. So I apologize, everybody. I, I tend to think that you know that, that that you can see this clearly, and sometimes it's not that clearly. So thank you, Rips and Andre. You 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 got me yesterday on that as well. Uh, Keep doing kids, that. Kids I, tell me all the time about it. Yeah, I do it all the time. As soon as, as, soon as it becomes habit. You'll probably tell me stop telling us the levels. We're good. All right. <laughs> it's, so, all good. it's all good. So the, I mean, the 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 assumed point of control up here would be probably be right here around fifty forty one quarter, fifty forty one quarter, which is basically the low of the opening range. So we opened above, we traded to this point of control, and we started moving lower, which gives me the 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 inclination, especially with the opening range at the high of the day. By the way, the the, high, the opening range high is 50, 45 quarter, the low of it, 50, 41. So it was about a $6 opening range. That gives me about seven points of risk. Would I be looking at 14 possible profit points on this? Yes, because if we do go to repair, repair is going to come down to this point of control, which is around 50, 25, 75, 50, 25, 75. This is going to be, as Rip says, sticky. It was rejection <laughs> yesterday. In other words, we had a, a, a distribution of time and, and, and volume here that, that broke out above 32 even, 50, 32 even, and quickly moved away from that level. So there were buyers that came in and moved this market higher. If those buyers are still long at those levels, they're, they may start to get a little bit nervous when price starts to get there, and that can be enough to push us down back to this lower point of control here of 50, 25, 75. And if I had any intestinal fortitude at all this morning, I probably would be short the opening range trade because we did come into the area of repair, and it seems to be trying to get down to that the, to that lower uh, that point of control from the lower distribution. Again, that level 50. 2575. So we if we get down there, repair is finished. 
and then you know, the, we're still inside the range from yesterday. We'll largely be inside a value from yesterday. So I think it's a good idea for us. Rips, Andre, be patient. Nine o'clock number. Let the initial balance play itself out. And then we may find our opportunities at the extremes of, of that initial balance. Yeah, and just to uh, echo what you're saying here, Hogue, we have seen quite uh, often in these sessions here that if uh, the move is to the downside, we've still seen a lot of punishment for those shorts being too early to that. And we've seen a lot of squeezing happening where shorts are getting into this move. And even though we may see more downside, we're seeing pops where they're squeezing out these early shorts. And the same thing goes, you're talking about we have potential pain to the downside. Uh, well, that's not without the the fact that these uh, buyers are sitting there with sell stops and trying to get out of their positions. And in rapid succession, right. we can see that go pop, 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 pop all the way down. Mm -hmm. And that can create that downside price action that you were talking about. I really like that analysis there. Good, good. Well, I mean, the bears have been trying to, to, they've been poking the bear with the stick. They have been unable to awaken the bear just yet. But one of these days, it's, you know, we're going to see a, a, a pullback. And for any reason or, or no reason, <laughs> sometimes the bear just wakes up. Right. <laughs> <laughs> We are about 130 points off the high from the NQ here where we were in the pre-market session before the PPI print came out. So we do want to see whether or not uh, we kind of find a floor or footing here. There's a couple interesting levels that I'm watching here on the NQ. The first level that I want to see interaction with, since we are kind of wrestling below this point of control here that has been sitting here since you know, a couple days back. Uh, I do want to see if we can get down to 873 evens here. And if we do see an auction below that, again, I talked about this right before the market opened. I do want to see an auction all the way down to 797 and three quarters. Those are the trouble points that I see that, uh, you know, we we're talking about this just a moment ago where Hogue was saying that, you know, buyers could be in trouble. Below this point, I would expect to see a lot of sell stops going off for players that are trying to get out of that. I would say that this is a big pain point in this zone here. So if we do actually auction below that, it would be in a very rapid succession. This is one of those things where we can kind of meander here and then you'd see a huge drop on that basically from all of that liquidity that's resting below that and all of those sell stops going off so again i'm happy to let this opening range play out i'm happy to wait for that michigan sentiment read and i'm happy to be hands on my butt right now because it's just not i don't think that we have an advantage trade showing up just yet agree can uh you guys have an uh, delta update i think cost in the chat here said es heavy negative is that true uh, yes it is congruent with direction uh, day session only in the s and is negative 4,600 already. Negative 4,600. Okay. And I have negative 9,200 on my for my, mine for the S&Ps, and my session start time is at 8.30, I believe. I'm pretty wow. sure. Okay. Um, and then in the, in the, time. Right. And then time. In, correct. And then in the NASDAQ, uh, 2,200 negative delta. And I'm curious what you have on yours for your negative delta. A session, regular trading hour session, 8.30 open only, negative 700 right now. Okay, cool. Yeah, so mine's just a little bit more exaggerated than yours. Pretty short already. Yeah. Yeah, because you're including the old, that 7 o'clock, that 7.30 number in that. Correct. And that's why it's so negative because of that flush of Cito to the downside off that PPI print. Thank you, Coach Vince. Coach Vince. Yeah, man. The successful... Three combine winner yeah. yesterday. Nice. It was so good to see. You. I'm so proud of you, Vince. Happy for you. So just some notes from uh, from Fed's bar here, basically talking about bank supervisors, how they're closely focused on commercial real estate risks right now. That's CREs. Uh, so they're, they're really focused on commercial real estate right now. They, that's the talk that he was given. Uh, just some notes on that. He's saying that they're closely focused on CRE loans. Examiners conducting additional examinations of firms with large realized un unrealized losses and other vulnerabilities right now. So that is a threat to the CRE space. Regulators have downgraded bank ratings right now at a faster pace. So this could be something that starts the, the downfall of the house of cards right now. People are wondering if it's gonna be in housing, if it's gonna be in commercial real estate, if it's going to be in auto loans. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of cracks that have been kind of on the horizon. We will have to see if mid to later this year, you know, when we're intertwined with these rate cuts that are on the horizon, how this kind of shakes out. But a lot of people have been looking at this as a potential uh, cause for concern. And I think that Michael Barr bringing that to light, we're going to start to hear more and more about that as the uh, the months go on here. Mm -hmm. um, that's been something that has been in the back of my mind for, well, since really the 
the the okay. COVID thing. I mean, yep. you know, there's not 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 there's a lot of open office space in all of these cities because people are a lot of them are working from home now. That's been something that's been on my mind. And and to hear something else, Rips. How, how do you how do you feel about the health of the small community banks? Mm. Well, you know, it's it's funny because we actually had the man himself, Jay Powell, kind of bring that up in his 60 Minutes interview. And he basically said flat out, yeah, we're, those, those are going to fail. <laughs> it's not a matter <laughs> of if, it's just like he uh. just said, they're going to fail. And that was kind of, I mean, that was the one thing that stuck out the most to me. There was two things that stuck out. Number one was that. Number two was the fact that he didn't talk about rate hikes, which was a good sign, right? Not talking about possibly right. potentially turning around the rates from here. So potentially only seeing cuts in the future. But that was the second thing that stuck out uh, was basically saying, yeah, yeah, their books are, are basically banged up and they're going to fail. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> big cause for concern. A big cause for concern. And what, you know, what if we have f five banks in the United States? Only five banks. What does that, that do? Hmm. I mean, uh, put that on your tinfoil hat. Good. It's all part of the plan, Hogue. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's all part of the big plan. Yeah, but regionals are definitely uh, under threat, especially after what Jay Powell said. I mean, everybody's known that that's been something on the horizon after we saw what happened with uh, Silvergate Financial and uh, Silicon Valley Bank. You know, we've seen this already showing its ugly face and we saw how the markets reacted to it. We saw, what, three weeks of pain and then it kind of shrugged it off and we yep. said, oh, yeah, whatever. It's all good. Don't worry about it. Um, and right. then so, yeah, I, I think that it's definitely something that might rear its ugly head again this year. So definitely of concern alongside, you know, the CRE risk that Michael Barr was talking about this morning. And the uh, I forget what it's called. There's an index that's, that, that that keeps the number of institutions do business as banks shrinking. Mm hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah, that that's that is correct and uh yeah, that's that's one of the things that you can track on on Bloomberg as well. So, yeah, it's 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 uh, again, I say this a lot. We're in a precarious situation in this market. We're in an election year. Uh the markets have been unusually pumpy so far, so we'll have to see if uh you know, there it's it's I feel like the markets are in such a fragile state right now that there really is like, you know, we have a, a, a regional banking crisis that can rear its ugly head and that can snap the markets. And we're talking about thousands of points of, of flushes in the equities and in the NQs, yeah. uh, you know, a thousand points in the uh, S&Ps here. You can see things happen really, really fast since, you know, it's it's thinner liquidity up here in these equity uh, futures, very thin liquidity to support this up here. And uh, a lot of things are technically overbought right now. So there's a lot of folks out there. Perma Bears, of course, want to see this market rolling. So all it's going to take is a couple catalysts to get that in motion. But we'll have to see whether or not that can be uh, quickly controlled with damage control from the Fed or if it even comes to light at all. Mm. Oh, poke the bear. <laughs> you poke the bear uh, enough times, the bear. the bear will wake now, up and start showing you its claws. Yes, it will. I'm meaning to ask you this. While we're here, sit, we're keeping our hands on our butts, look, just waiting for this number to come out. Yep. Uh, a good friend of mine who is a who is an excellent trader. I, I think he's still trading. I haven't talked to him in a in a in a, I don't know three, four, or five years. It was before COVID the last time we talked, and you know he's 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 a, he he follows this this guy. I forget the guy's name, but. He like goes. He spends like five thousand dollars, and he goes to goes to Florida, and they do this three day thing. And th this guy has has like predicted unbelievable um, uh, breaks and and rallies and and this kind of thing. And so he told me, I said, "Well, what do you think of the stock market?" He said, "Well, the stock market's going to go to the moon." And I said, <laughs> "Why? If all this shit is going on, why is the stock market going to go to the moon?" He says, "Because." The only thing that's going to be worth anything are are, are equities and hard assets, mm -hmm. real yeah. estate, gold, silver, equity. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, there has been the discussion for quite. Uh, I mean, I'd say over eighteen months now, and markets are rolling. By the way, we are uh, cresting below that area that I was talking about earlier, where I think that things can get pretty speedy here to the downside. We do want to see that. Uh, that is contingent upon whether or not the S&P wants to break down below 50, 30 here. But yeah, you know, it's, I think that uh, we have seen for about 18 months or longer, the discussion about how much money and cash is still on the sidelines. And as the market ebbs and flows and yields change and fixies change, you kind of run into the situation where 
where do folks park these funds to get the best yield and the best returns on that? And right now, I mean, you look at equities and the answer is equities and you're looking at yields coming down. You're looking at the uh, the yield curve is rapidly changing here. So you're looking at these uh, these risks that are running in the economy right now. But, you know, where, where else are you going to park money to have your money make money? And the answer right now, like you said, equities are hard assets. There's not really much that anywhere else that you can put your money, especially if we're talking about you know, rate cuts on the horizon here. We are getting speedy to the downside. We are yeah, through we are. Uh, 8.55 here and coming down the NQ. Anybody have this short here to the downside? I'm curious not about this. Let's get a test room in chat. Anybody short on this NQ or on the S&Ps here? Nothing showing so until- NASDAQ traded right down to the, the TPO point of control from yesterday. That, yeah, this that is level, coming down super heavy here. Yeah, dude. We go seventeen eight fifty one. Hey, the Michigan network can be purchased, correct? We're, we're still not in repair from the uh, S and P's. We're still in that in that. All right. We're right in that. Uh, there's those single TPOs. We just took them out. Correct. What was the the question there, Andre? What was the, oh, question about the, uh, the, the University of Michigan sentiment number that can be purchased ahead of time? Correct. Um, what do you mean by that? Uh, I think you can get early access to the number. If I'm not mistaken. Oh, I didn't, I don't. I, John, I've have you heard of that? I know that there's I one mean, that you can, and Andre, you were, you always had it when you were at the prop firm. I did, yeah, okay, it might be Michigan, okay. Where, I mean, I, I have the, the quickest reads on any of that, and I'm not, I don't have, my data's all flat right now. I, I, I would have that pretty quickly if, if, if somebody has early access to it. So maybe somebody leaked the numbers, but I don't have that coming out until uh, 9 a.m. Chicago time. Sounds good. Well, we are selling off here. Uh, Benny Hanna saying that's the Chicago PMI. Is that what it is? Okay, Chicago. thank you. Yeah, so I remember that. This level from... right now, 34 and three quarters. If we are rushing through this level, I do want to try to put on a uh, one contract short here. All right. All right, we got our break in market here, John. <laughs> I'm going to take a short here. Looking for this to uh, carry lower. I want to see this auctioning low 20s. All right, so you're in, okay. Coming up to yeah, 5,000. I'm taking a short That's here. I want to see this uh, confidently auctioning below the 20s, targeting 797 and three quarters to the downside here. 797. That's well, we are nice selling trade. here. They're hammering this thing. Mm hmm. Yeah, 20s are holding for now. We have a lot of bid support at the 20s. So if we were to break through those 20s, it would get pretty violent to the downside here. 400 lots sitting on the 30s and S&Ps. There we go, through the 20s. Wow, very nice. Hot knife. There it goes. You know, we got a lot of liquidity down below Beautiful. here in the S&Ps. I filled three lots on the bid there. Nice rips. 700 lots sitting on the 28 bid in S&Ps. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we want to see 50, 30 flushing in the S&Ps here. As I said earlier, that's kind of the trigger point to see this. Bring some more maximum pain to the downside here. I was, uh, I, I just, while we're kind of here, John Jones was mentioning that the different points of control on different platforms, like Top Step TV, our point of control, I think is is based off of the uh, trade uh, trading view point of control. It, it, there, there's nothing that's perfect in electronic trading. Sometimes they there there's slight differences and every point of control is more of a zone than a, than a finite level. So don't worry about that as long as it's close. And we are coming down here. Uh, I took off most of my position. It was a five lot. I'm down to one lot as a runner here. So currently up nice. on that position, 822 bucks. Nice rips. Beautiful. Nice little rip to the downside there. And all before the... Uh... Michigan before that sentiment. Michigan sentiment. So we are coming down here. Uh, the big test is going to be at 800s. We do have a potential of somebody front running 800s rejection at 797. We also have a potential of draw of liquidity. The level below 797 and three quarters is 769, but I would be hard pressed to not see us bounce before that. So we're just letting this final lot work here. This is just extraordinary downside. Yes, Anybody is. holding this from the tippy top? I am curious. Okay, repair is done. Dolby, Dolby time in at 801s. Nice work. Dolby time. Nice. Full-blown nice. NASDAQ trader. 
Wow, we're just selling. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That is extraordinary. Very nice. So the repair is now done in the S&Ps. Sounds about right. The points of control from yesterday. Yeah, this thing is coming down. Yeah, it is. They're super heavy. Get on board, Ray. Nice trade, Ribs. Thank you. Wow, this is violent to the downside here. Did something come out? I don't know. Uh, our speech was halted by climate change protesters. Tilt's not even getting very tilty. This is just pure sellers. So I just covered uh, some more there, and I'm going to... Uh, Let's see here. S&Ps went right down to the 200 session moving average on the 30 minute chart. All right, moving my stop there. Extraordinary downside. Uh, yeah, drop was. a W in the chat, by the way, if you caught any of that. That was a nice trade, Rips. Thank you. So stopped out there. So we ended up making fifteen hundred and twenty bucks there, and then another thousand bucks in our exa phase. Nice job! Nice. Wow, look at those W's. Give it up for yourselves. Hell yeah, guys! All right. That paper. So that brings me up total on the day twenty five hundred bucks. Very nice. Yeah. It took Start. out yesterday's regular trading hour session low. So I did say it was going to be speedy below those 873s. I just didn't think it was going to be a slipstream. <laughs> that was crazy, dude. That was nuts. That was yeah, uh, that one was of the great. fastest fades that I've seen in the NQ as of late. That was more than an elevator down. That was a, a speeding bullet to the downside. It sure was. Jeez, look at that chart. Look at that chart. All right. Well, we got a lot of day left. Three minutes. So we are having that Michigan sentiment. Yeah, like Andre just said, three minutes to the Michigan sentiment read. And I guess somebody knew something. <laughs> before I was going to say, come on, something's up there. Right? So, come on. Yep, somebody knew something as the story goes. Hey, John, what's uh, Delta now? The S&P is negative 10,800. Yeah. Congruent. I got negative 15,000 on mine. <laughs> so they're just hammered, yeah. Holy smokes. Yep. No Delta Divergence yes, today here, Hogue. <laughs> oh, no, man. Congruent no, is not right. Yet. Not yet. Yes, not yet. Yeah. So don't forget, this is the infinite we'll bid market. Them. So this could be the, <laughs> the dip before mm -hmm. the rip. We'll squeeze them. Right. Yeah, we got, I got negative 3,800 in the NASDAQ regular trading hour session only, as far as Delta is concerned. Yeah, I think somebody stepped on a power cord probably over at the market. So somebody happened? tripped on a power cord. I think that's probably what happened. <laughs> somebody forgot to turn the machines back on. <laughs> hey. <laughs> All right. The, uh, the data is coming sellers. out here pretty soon. Sellers are still here. We here do we have go. more downside pain, more downside room here. here we got one minute you know one minute until the read love these markets so many opportunities it's just been incredible that was a wild one so you were you were content sitting on your hands or keeping your hands on your butt as we say and and uh things change don't they you have to, you know, the market is an organic organism and we have to adapt to it from time to time. I tried my best to stay out of the trade, but I couldn't help myself and put my hands in that cookie jar. <laughs> that was smart. Well, you got a cookie. Yep. <laughs> we did get a nice little $2,500 cookie there. Damn. 30 seconds. Sack lunch. 
Hey, right. we back lunch. Mm-hmm. There you go. <laughs> 15 seconds here, folks. Good luck. If this number comes out positive, I swear. <laughs> <laughs> Getting thin. So repair didn't take out the low from the S P. Oh my! He did in the man. Oh Add, my! Add 79.6. There you go. Versus uh, it's rising. Inflation outlook is rising. There you go. Mm. There you go. God bless. The bear is waking up. Hmm. For those of you in the S&P, we are holding these lows this, for now. Yeah, we are. Yeah, this uh, the uh, base of the late spike from Wednesday. Just as a reminder, that was going to be a support level yesterday. We didn't even get to it. We haven't even gotten to it today. That level was. Uh, hang on a second here. Hang on a second. Fifty eleven quarter. Oh. A 50 11 quarter. 11s. All right. Here's what it looks like on the profile. I see where I'm on my screen here. So there's that base of the late spike. That's where the market drove away from balance, came back to that level, rejection yesterday, back to it today. Would be a scary trade to take along here, wouldn't it, though? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Especially in the NASDAQ. I think the NASDAQ is looking a little bit weaker because it did take out yesterday's low, the the, the failed auction yesterday, as well as that's the base of the late spike that we were that we've held so far in the S and P's. Look at the NASDAQ. Well below it. Getting wet. Yep. NASDAQ is on uh, Wednesday's oh, yesterday oh, value oh, area. Wow. High. Who hit the buy button? Son of a. Eddie, you were saying? No, where NASDAQ is just sort of holding around the uh, Wednesday's value area high, 17,728. Thank you, Eddie. Tagging that a little bit here. Hmm. Very interesting. You saw that. Uh, you saw that, Andre. That little pop on the buy side there in the S and P, didn't you? I sold into it. Yeah, I sold into it. You're short now. I am. Yep, things are holding up here. Yes, they are. Go figure. Stopped out on the first two. When- Seeing a bounce here now. Yes, we are. I want to see up here towards 769. When I said this would be a really scary long, those are my favorite trades. So you like this from the long side here, John? Yeah, because it scares the hell out of me. Those tend to be the best trades. (laughs) I mean, this is something where we could give back the entire move, right? (laughs) I've. Yeah. At least a good part of it. You know, I mean, it's, we're trying to poke the bear with the stick. We don't know if he's awake yet. Can't stay short. I haven't even yeah, looked. It looks like, uh, looks like it wants to get a little bit of buy side coming in here. We're seeing uh, a little bit of bounce from the S&Ps as well. Yes, we are. You know, a little liquidity up here at 25. Looks like we've kind of used up the liquidity below. Oh, eight, oh, three. 
Yeah, this is super volatile in here. Yeah, it is. I'm just going to head into a long here and, and see what's going on with SMCI. Really bad trade location. Wow, straight see down. What Holy smokes. SMCI also went straight down there. Huh. Wowzers. Andre, any trades? Ismail. I'm short right now, taking heat. Can't keep a good market down. Yeah, this is that infinite bids market, right? Yes, it is, man. Sell right into it. <laughs> On that pop, but yeah. Now we're holding here. This is a, we'll see. I'm this in is a FOMO trip. long right now. So uh, we got John Long. We got Andre Short. Yeah. We're even. Wins. Thunderdome. Yeah. <laughs> those five, I think those uh, 25s got filled. And here come the buyers. We'll have to see whether or not this is going to break below 750 again in the uh, NASDAQ. We're going to have rejection below 5025 in the S&Ps. We'll have to see. Yeah, it can go either way, really, here. Yeah, this is yeah, totally. Trying totally. to watch and see if we have any kind of uh, clear direction in this market. Yeah, this Tops up X is frozen right now? Interesting. It's mm. Probably a lot of traffic in Top Step X today. Oh, yeah. 23, 23. Hmm. Yeah, it's a lot coming at it. Yeah, it looks like it kind of wants I'll to break down below these 50s here. No, I'm not winning, trust me. Are you short in the hole? Oh, yeah. And I'm long in bad location. There's Exxon. Yeah, it has to stay weak below 750s here. 750. That's really what we have to watch for. And it looks like it doesn't want to stay weak. Nope. <clears throat> We still down to 12, 12, 12 and three quarters. Yeah. Can you remember that late spike? 50, 11 and something? At base? 50, 11 quarter was the base of the late spike. What was that paper order at 25s in the SP? So they're going to buy this shit. Unreal. I wonder if MP is trading right now. No, he's skiing. I'm peace skiing right now. <laughs> Lucky him. <laughs> Not skiing these markets. No, there's money to be made in these markets too. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. We're just kind of in this consolidation range right here. Right back to the yesterday's point of control in the S and P's. I think I can get better trade location, so I'm out. What are you looking for for uh, your trade location here, Hug? I want to get I want to get a pullback anywhere near the lows. Um, I would love to get an opportunity right down here near fifty eighteen quarter, which is basically where the where the the failed auction left yesterday. We already traded down to the base of the late spike or close to it in the day time frame today. But mm -hmm. I, I want to. I want to try and uh, kind of reposition and better trade location if I get the chance. Right. Otherwise, you know, I'll, I'll look for the next opportunity. Gotcha. Well, I got stopped out. Yeah, I'm trying I'm to bounce long here. I have a I'm pretty tight stop. Right? I'm just trying to a little bit of a bounce long here. Yeah, I mean, I made a few ticks on that, but I, I, maybe I chickened out one of the two. Right. <laughs> So I'm looking at my top step X and it, it seems to be working well. Seems to be right on now. Now market's looking to bounce. We want to clear up above 769 here for this bounce to be confirmed through these 70s and then smacking through these 80s. So How are you finding those levels? At 769. Mostly oh, really? chicken bones and tea leaves. <laughs> chicken bones and tea, there you go. The best. That's the, the best technique right there. 
Well, I did not get a pullback so I could position myself better. No, at least not yet. I'm adding into that pullback there. I want to see this clear above these 70s now. Infinite bids market is what we're going Infinite for here. It's right. Even on bad news, right? Yep. It's having some trouble wrestling oh. out of this range, so we might get Multi smacked on this one. But right now, a lot of liquidity is still being pulled to the upside here. Nice push up here through the 70s. You long reps? This is a big level here. Uh, 769s and 770s. We are strong above this. We have a straight shot basically to the 80s here. But we want to see no rejection here at 769. I'm adding it to that for this push up through the 70s again. Let's get out, well, let's get out and push. Infinite bit is right. <laughs> wow. Yeah, this looks like it uh, has the potential to snap as well. Yes, it does. I'm trying to cover three on the offer. We had a rejection right there above 75. It's covered three there. Another three. Nice rips. I squeezed into a measly little long here at uh, 2575. So then we're up uh, 3200 bucks now. Nice. Are you flat now? Are you flat now? Sorry about that. I was muted. Wow. Yes, completely flat. It's just hey, a little bit tough to trust this price cool. action to the north side. Yes, here. it is. Nice. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm I've scalped a little bit of a profit here, but I, I missed my good trade location, man. When I say that, boy, this would be a really scary long. I got to yep. take it every time. Infinite bid. Yeah, you that uh, that was a beautiful long. If you caught that off that seven twenty yep. area, that was a fifty handle rally there to the top side. Let me give it a, I feel like I'm having a lot of trouble trusting myself when I'm on screen. Yeah, it's it's difficult trading uh, on screen is uh, quite difficult. It's a it's a it's you its own beast. Getting better at it. It's been six months, but I just still feel <laughs> like I'm, it takes like a I'm, while. Sucking wind. <laughs> it takes a while. I want to see if we're actually a week here at these 50s again. We auctioned right back to the 50s from the 80s. So it looks like uh, Top Step X, uh, the support team is working on the issue right now, which is great. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you. So surprisingly, uh, range bound in this area. Yeah, Very we choppy. are. What's, what's going on? Well, I just think there's a disagreement down here. I think there's a lot of folks that want to continue to short this market. And then there's too many folks that are covering down here. And that's what's giving us these massive bounces. And I think that uh, whoever's providing liquidity knows that they can take this liquidity higher. Uh, why here. sell it at 60s when you could sell heavy at 75s and 80s? That's my opinion. Yeah. Instead of the moron trade where you sell 60s, 70s, and 80s, and 90s, and buy even. <laughs> yes. uh, That's the one. Get your best trade location first, ladies and gentlemen. Exactly right. Which I just did not do. But at least I get a small small profit. A lot of folks that are down 1,000 would be happy to where I'd be sitting where I am right now. That's I'll, right. I'll just, wear that. I'll just wear that like a badge. <laughs> Dolbyism. Oh my goodness. Yeah, this still looks like it wants to to perk to the north side here. Yeah, it does. We'll try another long here into these 70s. Looking for this clear out above the 80s again. There would be a, a pretty clear blowout above that level, in my opinion. 
trying so to as find long as we can get a decent volume caller here that's right around 67 halves we do have a potential of a big trade here to the upside if we can forcefully push through that just want to see if we have enough uh, liquidity to push through in the upside here if they thin up these offers we'll be looking at adding into this And tape is kind of shifting here back to the downside. I'm keeping my stop pretty tight here. I'm looking for some sort of a pullback I can sink my teeth into. But you got to be. Got to wait this out. Got to be okay to miss the trade. Right. If you're going to demand a good location. Go to the upside, S&Ps, 400 sitting at the 30 offer. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that means above that, let me take a look. 400 on the 30 offer. No real size liquidity above as far as Top Step X is pre presenting here. NASDAQ catching a bid. There's 547 nice, there. there. Very nice. Beautiful. That was a nice, nice whip up right up to 75 there. Had yep. nine lots, peeled off six. Now looking for Damn, this son. 80 pull. There we go. Nice. Boom. Got him. So that's going to put us up uh, Damn, 43, uh, 4,300 bucks. Carving this up. Just trying to carve up Putting this range. clinic. Here. <laughs> Putting on a clinic. Just trying to carve things up over here. So this is a big area up here at these 80s. We see a trigger point above these 80s here. So just have to be on guard for this 80 area. We can have a big, yeah, there's that flush right at 80s. <laughs> to the upside? <laughs> yep. We tapped 80s and then instant rejection. That's what I say. You know, we have a troublesome area there at 80s. We either have a trigger point where we blast through it or we're going to have a harsh rejection. So there we go. Keeps hitting these 80s, 80s, boom, 80s, 80s, boom. There it goes, Rips. Passed another uh, combine on that one. I have to switch accounts. Gonna take, nice. out, gonna take out these 30s and the SPs. That original long is looking great yeah. there, John. Yeah. So was the original short if I took the over the opening range and then <laughs> when I was scared to buy it. When I said, that's, that's a scary long. That's the one I should have taken right there. Right. It's usually how yeah, it goes, I'm right? I don't trust myself. I got issues, man. I got issues ah. right now. You know, I did have, you know, something happen in, in our personal life a couple of weeks ago that may still be kind of affecting me, but, I, you know, I'm, 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 uh, I'm a mess. <laughs> I'm sorry to hear that, John. Well, I've been I've been here before. I'll be there again, and I will I will survive and I will thrive. I know this because I've been there so many times. Damn straight. It's just a matter matter of time. That's a great idea to have right there. Mm -hmm. Great Resistance mindset. At Resistance at thirty S and P's. Yeah, this is well, the same level yeah. we were watching to the downside. Those thirties. So if we have a rejection there, you know. Can kind of uh, here it is. shake things up a bit jab, here. Jab, jab, in here. I'm gonna go onto my chart for a second. I know there. I know uh, Rip's charts are much more charming. Uh, but <laughs> here's, <laughs> here's that level, right? Here's that. Here's the level where we rejected the early distribution from yesterday and pushed higher. It was support on the way up. Is it going to be support on the way down? We're approaching that level. So this this level. This low, these single TPOs, these are all areas of previous rejection. Will it be rejected again? And if it is, will it be rejected <laughs> lower or will it be rejected to the upside? Stay tuned to As the Market Turns. <laughs> like a My favorite up. show. Yeah. Well, they do not want to take these 30s bid. That's the piece. It's crazy, right? Yeah. Boom. Boom. Hammered.
And we're still kind of holding above 80s oh, yeah. here in the NQ. Interesting to see that. Be right back. Andre, any uh, additional trades? Any follow-up trades I, for you? Yeah, I got uh, about 250 back on uh, on a long there. Still jab jab in here. Nice. Give me all day, all day comeback. We'll see how it goes. Done it before, but uh, it's interesting level right here in the, with the 50 30s and the S and P's. Anytime they go bids, yeah, uh, someone keeps taking them offered. They do not want it to go higher keep, right now. They keep just pushing in in liquidity above the market here in the yeah. S and P's. Oh, they just keep yeah, pushing, and pushing in rejection there. In. Yep, there he's got rejected hard. That's right, Dolby. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Power hour comeback. The boy right there. There you go. <laughs> 15 line. Wouldn't be the oh, first yeah. time, 15 right? 15 lots always work. Yeah, not. 15 lots always work. Uh, and I, I've, I am absolutely 100% joking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they don't? Up immediately. Nothing always works. Nothing is, nothing ever you, you can <laughs> say is is going to absolutely happen. Nothing. It's an ambiguous environment. Yeah, that slipstream to the downside was something yeah. else. That was from 918 all the way to you gotta read that basically trade. 710. That's you're talking about a 200 point downswing there. Insane. So markets are looking a little bit heavier here. We're coming back down to that 65 level in the NAS. Uh, still rejecting those 50 30s up top in the S and P's as well. Mm. Still looking pretty heavy here. I'm gonna try a short. Uh, nothing in tilt. Yeah. Damn, but here they come. We've got lower highs, lower lows. We came to this low, right back to it. Just a little bit of resistance there. That 30 yeah, level was, was a sweet looking level on the five minute chart here. Yeah, it was. Yeah, this is a big area of uh, a volume here at these 760s. If we break these 760s to the downside, there is a potential that we have a massive flush on the table here. It's just a lot of liquidity here at 760s. Bam, look at that. Yeah, it looks like they want to take this to the downside here. Watching this break of 60s. They want to see continued weakness below this. A lot of liquidity pre-55 here as well. Yeah, there's a volume shelf basically from 760 all the way up to 767. If we are rejecting this volume shelf, we will probe liquidity lower towards 737. See that? I'm adding it to that there. Nice flush. We Beautiful. Go. Damn, son. I want to see I'm, thick I'm offers good. here to get confirmation, adding into that again. Those 30s, man. I think it's short. Yeah. I'm basically just trying to scalp off of some of these levels, right? And I'm not a scalper. I'm not a scalper, but I'm playing one on TV. <laughs> Pretty, much. Pretty much. I like but that. I'm thinking, I'm thinking, uh, I'm thinking about what my next trade is going to be SWF swim. A little bit of rejection those, here. Think about those thirties. That guy was uh, selling. And Reese, that tilt's been swinging wildly. Maybe I need to update my tilt. So right now, if we uh, if we're auctioning above these seventies with confidence, I'll probably stop out here. But if we're auctioning above these seventies, we might have a reversal. So might have gotten yeah, already, a yeah, little I, bit too heavy there at these lows. I took a few ticks on that short, and uh, it occurred to me that my 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 kind of my hypothesis is I'm looking for a place to a pullback but this five minute chart is definitely scaring me away from that but that's those are the good trades man the ones that scare you right so rejection there at 75 we are coming back down i want to see a clean flush through 60s again here yeah market cannot make up its mind in this consolidation sure. zone we might have to revisit a trade so we kind of uh I, I was pretty sure that if we flush those 60s we would have stayed below them but right now Thought Mark has other good. plans. We're just kind of chopping around in this range. Hurry up and wait. Yeah, exactly right. Right. 
So back again, revisiting these 60s. Some sellers are, are stepping in here. S&Ps did reject those 30s up top. Yeah, so I want to see clean follow through now below the 50s in the NAS here. We got to get through 25. So a lot of bid side liquidity is stepping in, and that is kind of what's scaring the market and keeping it up. Scaring the shorts away, I should say, not scaring the market. Mm -hmm. A lot of uh, big bid side liquidity just touched below the uh, 60s here. And that is kind of uh, propping things up, at least for the time being. Yeah, can we see uh, rips charts now? I want to. I want to watch this on the on the uh, the the. Uh, you can go on book map right here. Book map, yeah. There you go. So yeah, we're looking for this fifty-five takeout entertainment of liquidity below the fifties and a clean flush. But you can see it's very, very heavily stacked on the bids here. Mm -hmm. We just have to have enough enough forceful sell side to get below that. And the more we can track liquidity right here between sixty and seventy the more likely it is that this is going to bottom out here and start to run back up to the top side. Yeah, uh, buyers are defending the 25s and the S&Ps create some support there. They will not let those things go off. Or, oh, you got to read this shit, Dre. <laughs> Sorry, I'm talking, to, I'm talking to myself here. You got to read this. Yeah, right now it's it's like what, what you're saying. They're just defending it too hard right now. And the offer is very, very thin. So they're able to run the offer pretty quickly here. And that's kind of you know, smoking any early shorts that are getting into this move. And it's kind of scaring uh, any shorts from taking this very heavily here. So once again, we're testing these 60s, very thick bid. I want to see if we have enough push. There's a nice push looking there for 55. Go. Yeah, look at that big player at 55 there. Large, uh, large amount of liquidity there at 55. That was uh, 215 lots there on the bid. Is that right? Damn. Yep. And that's in the NAS, so it's pretty heavy. Okay. Yeah, it is. Okay, continued downside here. We are starting to flush. There's that flush below the 50s. Can oh. we get continuation? A lot of volume right there below the 50s. A lot of bid to cover there. We want to see panic now uh, where the bid gets softened up here for a continued downside flush. We're looking for 37 and a quarter to the downside here. So nice testing 45s now. Nice Dolby. So there's your 45 test. Again, a lot of bid side liquidity. We run the risk of a pretty large bounce here at any of one of these levels here. Yeah, we do. Hmm. Hmm. Very thin offer too in the NQ, mind you. I'm keeping an eye on NVIDIA too, because NVIDIA has been dictating a lot of uh, the NQ's price action here. You're not kidding. It looks like the same chart. <laughs> it's crazy, right? Uh -huh. So let's see if they can sweep these 45s now. Uh, 45s have been kind of the point that's being defended here. The offer is very, very thin, which makes it very difficult for shorts to be confident in this because... You know, they can get stopped out pretty easily. If the, the offer is too thin, they can run this pretty quickly back up to the top side. You'll see 20 handle bounces and moves like this. So I'm looking for the offer to kind of get much more thick than it is. Once the offer is thick, then the bid usually thins out. Then we get a retest of that. So we'll see if we can retest below 50 here again. There's your 50 test. Looking for 45 retest here. 45s are looking a little bit weaker than last time. But again, very, very thin offer. So right now, 45s are the spot to break through. What does that look like for you on the S&Ps there, Andre? 25s, same bid. Now, now we're trading 26s or 27s now. Same, uh, we're in a range right now. So we got to wait and see if we can break out one way or another. But right now we're trading sideways. Big, bid side, uh, big, big uh, offer swipe there. Is that all that was? I saw it on the corner of my eye. Yeah, huge offer swipe in the NQ there. Yeah, so again, I want to see 69s good. being defended. If 69s are being defended, there's a chance we'll go down and revisit that 45. But right now, very thick bids at those 60s. Big pop in NVIDIA there. Watching to see if we have weakness back down towards 60s. Offer got kind of thick there up towards 69, but not being defended how I'd want to see. Mm -hmm. So again, we might get stopped out on this trade, but... 
I want to let this thing play out because if we can get that liquidity dusted below the 45s there, this thing get pretty speedy to the downside, in my opinion. Yeah, we're pretty short just, right now, right? Yep, just short, just trying to let this trade work. Got it. Wow, a lot of liquidity injected there, bottom of the hour, 1030 liquidity. Mm -hmm. 930 Central Time. <laughs> right. <laughs> Got to make sure we have the Chicago time here. <laughs> All right, we're yeah, still just uh, keeping bids afloat in this market for now. They are. All right, patience. Right now, just kind of holding 65s, getting up to the 70s. My stop's at 77, so good chance we'll get stopped out here, and I might have to try uh, taking a, a second follow up trade here. But we'll have it to see. Like we gonna, uh, it looked like we were going to go there, Rips. Yeah, it's uh, again, we're looking uh, a little bit too much. Uh, the offer's too thin right now to kind of hold back these buyers. And as I'm saying that, we are kind of reversing here, but a lot of big bids are showing up, and we're just having a very, very thin offer in this thing. So. It makes it very easy for us to probe higher highs. Nice little flush here below the 60s, but again, huge bid stack up. The moment yeah. we start to flush, we get huge, huge bids stacking up. Yes, we do. So what does that tell you? Stay out of it or get long with it? I, you know, where's your I head mean, at? There's a, there's a lot of defense it. going off of, and, and yeah. we have to be wary of any bounces. I'm just trying to clear out of these specific liquidity zones so I can kind of relax in this trade and just let it. There we go. Yeah. We get some bids down to uh, 50s again. Here's a 50 test. Looking for the 45 pull here. Again, big bids at 45. And it looks like we might bounce those 45s again. Huge bids showing up at 45s. S&Ps are starting to roll, so that should give us a little bit more downside taster here to the 45s. Mm -hmm. So this is the big area that we need to see snap for our short. Looking for these 45s to give out. But again, very, very thin offer here. We, won the, we, we run the risk wow. of another big bounce. Wow, wow, wow. And this is why it gets very difficult to kind of short and tighter range here because the offer is so thin. It is thin tape, Trader Page. John, what do you got in uh, Delta? Are they getting more short down here? Negative 8,000 right now, so kind of evened out. Yeah, I cleaned up quite a bit on my end too. Cool. So 50s got defended once more, and again, very, very thin tape. Huge, huge bounces here to the north side. Really just want to see those 45s give out here. This is a hell of a tug of war right, we're watching right now. 45 test again. <laughs> All the sellers just evaporate. They, they completely evaporate every damn here. Time. 45. Yeah, 45s come and test, and then the sellers kind of evaporate. There's that 45 <sighs> pull. Big, big bid there. That's a big sign of strength there, right below 45. We need to see I continuation won. here. This is kind of the big, this is like Custer's last stand here. <laughs> yeah. I like that. Crazy. <laughs> that's a, it's a big red bubble there. Yeah, and that's what we don't want to see when we're short here. We want to see that easing through, and then we see stops getting popped. We see a lot of pain to the downside. But right now, they're just defending the crap out of these lows. I mean, every single time that we get down there, there's a lot of defense that shows up. We probe lower lows, we get a big defensive pull, and then the offer thins up, and we go right back up. So. Difficult, difficult trade to be holding on to. I do want to see us a clean flush below 40s, entertaining those 30s. We have a level, like I said, at 37 quarters. If we flush below that level, there should be more downside pain. A lot of uh, sticky liquidity in this area. I do think that ultimate downside that I'd be looking for on this one would be at 676 halves. So once again, same area of liquidity where we had a lot of defense. They're probing to see whether or not this defense is thinning up at all. Mm -hmm. And right now, sellers evaporating. Same kind of story. Probed lower into those 40s. There's some bids at the 40s. Looking for follow through here, just below 40 now. Keep probing. Oh, jeez, look at that. Rejected. Huge, Rejected. huge buy. Yeah, so that's those are some Rejected. buy stops that go off. We probe 40s, and instantly there's a large buy stop order that goes off there. But it's also counter defended by the uh, the thickness yeah. of that offer. So somebody's taking the counterparty to that liquidity, which is generally what you want to see. But uh, we need to see this, like, yeah, so <laughs> there you have it. There we, go. Uh, we need to see that probing heavily below the 40s. And when we have, like, a big buy stop like that, they're going to thin out the offer to let this run. And we're just kind of having this ping pong back and forth here. So unfortunately, uh, not a very clean trade. This is one of the more difficult trades to hold on to. 
exhausting. Yeah, this is the exhausting part of trading where it's uh, it's always so close to getting confirmation for your trade. And then it just gets right to that exact level where you want to see exactly what you're looking for. And then you have a big reversal. And, you know, that's trading. You get used to it after so many years of doing this. Yes, you do. Oh, man. Yeah. yeah, I know. This is just a different way of looking at it for me. What are you used to? Just using uh, TPOs or regular charts, volume? TPOs, 30-minute charts. That's pretty much it. Sure. Yeah, this is uh, this is how you can see the tick by tick action and see the actual liquidity how it's represented in bookmap here. Yeah, I like is, it. Yeah, it's one of my favorite ways yeah. to watch the market. It it really gives you kind of it puts you in tune with the market and it shows you exactly what's happening at each level and how much liquidity uh -huh. is being pushed and pulled at each, pulled at each level. And um, yeah, again, this is uh, this is one of the more frustrating trades here where it's just you're just kind of chopping around in this range and it's making higher highs or higher lows here, and they're just letting it kind of. Uh, run these areas of liquidity. 300 lot sitting on the 27 offer S&Ps. Uh -huh. They probably want to go for that. They probably want to swipe so, that. I'm long from 24 in S&Ps. Right. I'm long. I'm long. The short, they can't take it lower. These shorts can't take it lower. lower. Every time they Good start selling. You. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. I said yesterday, I'm never selling again. Sure enough, I sold today. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it got me. It got me. So back to being a bull. You gotta be careful saying that because the minute you say that, you got you gotta be sure. <laughs> the market heard me. Yeah, we are swiping that liquidity up at 5027. We're trying to tap into that right now. So I've been and thinking we just about, it, so the market is loose here to the top yeah. sign. I've been nice thinking there, about Andre. Yeah. Yeah, it is looking good. Are you in the S and P or are you in the NQ? S and P's, S and P's, fifty twenty four. Very nice. So I've been thinking about getting the getting book map and just kind of yes, no. I'm thinking maybe I'll think maybe I'll get it. Yeah, I think it's a it's a fantastic platform. It's it's amazing. S and P's are pushing now. Yeah, like you said, Andre, great read on that. That's we're not going any lower here. I'm probably going to stop out of my trade. Yep, stopped out there. So yeah, you're right. We couldn't uh, we couldn't push any lower. Longs are uh, those bids are just being defended so strong. So yeah, yeah nothing doing there. So taking a taking a little bit of loss there. That's going to bring me down to to so the thirties. Nice. Uh, Thirty one hundred bucks. Nice. Interesting level in the S and P's of these fifty thirties. Earlier, all the sellers came in. We would not take it higher above these thirties. <laughs> Dolby time says yes. I faded rips and what. <laughs> Dolby time. <laughs> nice work there, Steve. Dolby. It's you and Power Hour, Dolby time. Great job. Yeah, we just couldn't break down there. It was uh, We were looking for that uh, liquidity to the downside, and there's nothing we can do to break that down. That's a nice location there, uh, Andre. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I like that trade a lot now. Looking nice and clean there. Uh, Hogue, any trades for you? No, I've just been watching. I've been waiting for a little bit of a deeper pullback, but we're just we just haven't gotten it. So uh, this is a big area right now. We're at the hourly high, mm -hmm. so there is a chance that we break out of this area here. That's if we do, thinking. market should kind launch. Of looking, kind of looking at it, at it, you know, the five minute consolidation we've been in for the last you know twenty twenty five minutes. Mm hmm. The breakout. Yeah, I'm looking for this breakout trade for the hourly high. Looking for an hourly high breakout here on my end. And I'm seeing again, we're getting a lot of bid support showing up here. I do want to add if we have a pullback, since it is looking very thick on the bid side here. I think we're going to shoot right up through 17,800 here. I'm joining you in the S and P's. I'm long at 30 half. Very nice. Little rejection, some front runs uh, into 17,800 here. Adding into that for that push up above. Let's see if we can get through any kind of rejection here at 17,800. Some thicker liquidity here as expected. Sounds good, Jack. Nice, now adding into that, beautiful. Now we're into those single TPOs and the S&Ps that we discussed. 
maybe a little bit of a resistance here. Yeah, I covered. All right, almost there. Getting there, getting there. That was uh, so far 2,200 realized on that trade. Nice, dude. It's a nice recovery from that last. Uh, there we go. Nice push. There we go. That's what we're looking for. Big snap, big burst of volume there to the upside. That's then. That's where I got out of that long. I'm, covered there. I'm yeah, a, I covered awesome there too. So that's going to put me I'm up. Awesome scalper. <laughs> <laughs> so that's going to put me up now 5.7K. Nice. Oh, well done. Look at that tilt. Yeah. says. <laughs> I know, seriously, Andy. And also, after that trade, nice trade, by the way, I uh, just want to give an update real quick. Um, we sincerely apologize if you were affected by the frozen screen and top step X. Um, the team's working on it right now. It seems to be back to normal, but uh, we always do our best to make it right. And we will do that and get back to you later in the show. But in the meantime, if you have specific questions about your account, be sure to reach out to support uh, because in chat, we don't have the tools to help you. Unfortunately, we just don't. So I'll be back with updates on how we're going to remedy this, but we always make it right. We will this sure. time. Thanks, Jack. Thanks, Jack. has the uh, best in class support out of any prop firm out there. Don't forget that. And that is true. Every issue we've ever had, we have made it right, and we will again. Thanks again, Jack. Heavy tilt, as uh, Nasdaq, eighty three percent. S and P seventy two, almost seventy three percent long. Trying to catch this move to the upside. Yeah, we have room all the way up to eight thirty four now. From here, we just have to get through this eight fifteen rejection. Nice trade That's what I'm rips. looking at. And stopped out on the shorts, reversed out, got long. Didn't marry your bias. Let the market tell you what to do. Well done. Thank you. You are now watching a master at work. And resales 90%. Okay. 90% is still 90, to the north side? She said it, it got up to north. Yeah, it got up to 90%. Wow. Yes, you did. That's SS. crazy. Yes, you did. I'm in comeback mode right now. I got to pick and choose my spots, guys. So can't take every trade right now. Got a lot of day left. Man, that sell-off going into that Michigan number rips. Something was up. Yeah, that was insane. That was that oh, was super what nuts. What did we catch are this rolling over? here. We rejected at, at 8.15, so I'm looking for a bounce trade on this one. Right on. Yeah, big, big rejection from uh, that 8.15 area up there. So we are holding 800s for now. So a little pull back to 800s. Looking for this bounce up above 8.10 here. Trying to be aggressive through these 8.10s now. I think we do touch these 815s once more. That's what I'm banking on here. Very thin offer here above 810. You fixated on the ladder, Rips? Yeah, I'm just watching book map. I'm staring at book map right now, seeing how thin these offers are to the, no the north side here. We have liquidity all the way up to 816, and I'm just trying to time this right here. Get my fills. Try to get nice filled change. there at like 814. Little rejection there, just front running 815s there. Trying to just nail this extension here. Yeah, they rejected right below 815. So unfortunately, oh. I did not get any of my fills there. I had fills at 814. Some limit orders at 814 to get filled. Unfortunately, did not get filled on any of those. So we have to hope that we reject uh, pre 800s here. Get back up to the north side. Get these swipes back, back up at eight. Uh, can't talk. 814. This is intense right now, man. This is intense trading right now. For a Friday? Come on, man. We didn't expect this. It was supposed to be chill today. Yeah. Here we are. Yeah, I was one tick away from getting filled there. That's crazy. Right. I actually ran into my order, but it didn't fill. I was at uh, 814 halves. So let's see if we can get back uh, 
back up there to bounce back up to where my orders are resting here. And yeah, looking like it's in a sell off before we get there. That might get stopped out. <coughs> yeah, right below 800s, finding some liquidity there, a little bit of a bounce. Back up to 805s here. Big tug of war. We yeah, want to see if that uh, liquidity at 800s can propel us back up to 814 halves and get filled here. Wrestling at 805s again. A lot of liquidity resting at 805s. If we clear through this, it should be a straight shot back up to 814s. Just kind of wrestling around here. Yep, we just did this dance. But wait, watch the price action, see what prices get defended, see what gets rejected. Yeah, right now, defense is at 806, 807. If we bust through that, we have a straight shot to 815 again. Uh, 800s are being defended to the downside, so we just have to see uh, liquidity come one way or the other. Right now, there's just a lot of front running going on either way. Like yeah, <laughs> this is wild price action right now. Yeah, it is. We're, we're back in the same deal where we're, we're having sort of this consolidation and not any kind of breakout. There's a push above 807 again, but quickly rejected. A lot of thicker liquidity coming in here. Oh. Damn, it's, tr it's tricky. It's very tricky tape here. I mean, it's very thin to either side. Both sides are defending it pretty heavily. So we're, you know, we'll push up to eight tens and then instantly reject 10 handles lower. It's just a very big swinging range here. I just want to see as long as these 800s are defended, we should find our way to pro back up higher here to these 815s. That's kind of what I'm banking on in this trade here. Coming up to view up in the S&Ps at 35 and three quarters, 35.75. Yeah, that probably explains why we're having so much trouble breaking through right now is because the S&Ps are looking to potentially break through that VWAP here. It's crazy because, you know, we have so it looks like we have such a clean shot right up to 815 and then we just get these quick rejections towards 810. Let's see if we can get like a fill that. here. <laughs> yep. <laughs> just need to push a little bit more there at those 810s and then we can try to get this fill at 814 halves. Well, let's get out and push. <laughs> let's go, John. Yeah. A little bit higher. <laughs> Can we get just a little bit higher? <laughs> Push a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit more. There we go, Phil. Beautiful. Nice. Tires are winning. Sweet. And we're out. And that brings us up to 6,800. My man. Got him. <laughs> a boy. Nicely done. Thank you. Thank you. Breaking through VWAP, S&Ps. Oh, yeah, now we're up again, up above VWAP. Now we took out those single TPOs from yesterday again, so now we're back up in the upper distribution. Heading towards the opening range again here, folks. Hey, we're John, real long, quick. Long way away from that in the NASDAQ. Okay, go ahead. Uh, yeah, the chat saying, would you mind taking a look at some of the other markets? We're just sitting here focused yeah, on equities. Yeah, just take do a, that. Yeah, take just a peek at gold and oil. Thanks. Yeah, here's here's crude. Here's the 30 minute chart in crude oil, and this market just continues to show rejection above weekly kickoff high and above this trend line. Nothing but nothing but shadows, nothing but wicks above that level today on that trend line. So I mean, this market is is uh, I mean they're trying to to get a nice breakout outside of that pennant formation, triangle formation, whatever you want to call it on the daily chart. That's this this yellow line here. They've just been so far very unsuccessful at doing so. Yeah, and I I used to I'll, I'll I'll tell you about this in just a second. But the you know the market is it's finding sellers up here. It's running out of buyers up here. Whichever one exhausts first, we we're either going to come back into range and rotate lower, or you know if we if we exhaust the sellers up here, those sellers may turn buyer and we may see a decent move to the upside. But Right now, we're so stuck. We're so magnetic towards weekly kickoff high. That's this 7760 level. We closed at it here. We closed at it yesterday. 
it's just been so magnetic and sticky. It's very, very difficult to trade a market like this until there is a direction chosen. So be careful, stay calm, be patient, look for the right opportunities in, in crude oil today. I, I knew it was going to be an interesting trading day. I didn't know it was going to be a chop shop like it is today. Now, this is similar. similar <laughs> chop <seriously>. shop. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, the chop so, shop. I love that. <laughs> so gold, we had the breakout on Tuesday. We didn't really see much continuation on Wednesday, which was a little unnerving. And then it started to put up a bear flag. Now, this bear flag we broke out of it on the 730 number today. So this is the 30 minute chart now. So we had the breakout. We put together a bear flag. We break the bear flag to the downside. Buyer, you know, obviously, you know, this consolidation, this con stickiness, this what is it? Congestion, as Anne Marie yep. calls it, ended up finding buyers down there. And those buyers have taken us back up. Two and now back above the lower trend line of the bear flag. This could end up being a stiff rejection off the low and a continuation move to the other extreme of the current bear flag, which would take us basically right up to weekly kickoff high 2034. Um, and that's what we're kind of looking at here. Man, I was I was telling people in in the in the the opening call, watch crude oil today, watch crude oil. There's something big might happen. Nothing has happened. It has, mm -hmm. like I said, just become basically a chop shop. If you're going to go short below weekly kickoff low, maybe you got some opportunity, but eventually those opportunities got taken away. If you were going to go long above the trend line, maybe some small opportunities, but all of those opportunities have been taken away. It's magnetic mm -hmm. towards weekly kickoff high and this trend line until there's a direction, until there's some sort of decision be careful. And this is a function of rollover, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Rollover takes the longer time frame traders who really move these markets away from directional trade and gets them focusing on, I've got to get out of all this March. I got to get into April and future contracts. I got to do it smart because I can lose a lot of money if I do it wrong. That's why the, the market has a tendency to remain Really range bound during rollover. Tuesday is expiration of the March contract. We'll get two, two, three weeks of clean movement in crude oil if there is such a thing. And then we'll be back in rollover. That's the thing about crude oil that I, that, that irks me so much is the fact mm. that we that we 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 have rollover every month. It's like for a whole week, it becomes difficult to trade. And I, I'm not a fan of trading rollover. Rips, what do you think about trading during rollover in the equities? Oh, man, it's <laughs> it can be wild. I mean, if you're if you have a stomach for it, sure, you could do it. But I mean, it's it's very thin, right? Of course, that's that's the the paramount thing is that it's so thin. Uh, it's like trading an extended Globex period with on crack. <laughs> I don't know. It's, just, <laughs> it's, it's like very skippy, you know, it's very, very skippy. So, I mean, Here's the thing, as traders, we can always pick and choose our battles. There's nobody yep. that's forcing us to trade this market right now. So if this market isn't your cup of tea, do this, take your hands off the wheel and just forget it, you know? And when we're talking about roll week, it's, uh, you know, it can get a little spicy, it can get a little crazy. Uh, the contract is expiring a week, uh, I'm sorry, a week, a month from today. So mm -hmm. uh, we are going to be entering into that roll period. Uh, it just really is whether or not you have the stomach for it. I personally always go to where the contract has the largest open interest, but I also have my caution flag out knowing that we're in a roll period. We're going to be transitioning from one contract to the next. And you just want to, I mean, you just have to be cognizant of that fact. So your caution flag is out in, in short, you know, you have your caution flag out. You don't go hot and heavy. You understand that you're going to have skipping prints from time to time. And it is what it is. You know, it's just something that we have to deal with as equity futures traders. And, uh, you know, it, it, as I mentioned, it's, you know, equity rollover. You got to think, you know, there's banks, funds, uh, pension funds. Um, they, they're all holding positions right now in the March contract, right? Yep. They all have to either liquidate move it into the next month which is going to be the june summer already which will be the june month or let it expire and settle it in cash if you have a large position 
let's say you have 50,000 E-minis in the March contract that you want to continue as one of your hedges, you're going to have to move those contracts from the March contract to the June contract. There's different ways to do that. You can, if you're buying the spread, you can work the bid on the spread and hope that you get filled on 50,000 E-mini S&Ps, which is probably not as likely as you might think it is. Or you can leg the spread. You can, if you have to sell the March and buy the June, you can see if you can sell a pop in the March and buy a pullback in the June. That's called legging. But right. if you if you do it wrong with 50,000 contracts, you think about that. What's, what's 50,000 ticks? Even if you buy the offer or sell the bid and you have to, and you have to, um, and you, and you have to move that contract. So 50, thousand ticks times 1250 you can save yourself six hundred and twenty five thousand dollars just by getting the rollover done on the bid or the offer whichever whichever side you have to do now to somebody who is moving billions of dollars of money around every every day every month every year that may not seem like a lot but it's a lot of money so if I can be smart and roll my position from the current front month to the back month. Maybe I can make money on the roll. Maybe I can do something or leg it correctly. And there's always a risk of that because, because that's going to leave you outright open in one month or another. And you don't want to do that, especially if you're just trying to roll the position over. So you can understand how the... The longer time frame traders focusing on rollover don't want the market to become directional. And you're seeing that in crude oil right now. It's been range bound. It's been choppy. It's been difficult to trade. And that is the story behind rollover and why, if you ask me, rollover is so difficult to trade. There were outright traders in the S&Ps back in the day that when rollover came, they took that two weeks off. Because it just becomes a little bit more difficult. The market goes too far. It doesn't go far enough. You get into a position you can't get out of because of the liquidity. If it's not one thing, it's another. And that's the story of rollover. And it is sometimes you can be on the right side of things. Sometimes you can be on the wrong side of things. But that's the story of trading anyways. So, But I prefer not to trade rollover and today in crude oil is a good example of that. I'm hoping that, um, that, uh, uh, Deanna had a good trading day today. I was kind of excited to watch and see what happened in crude oil today, but knowing that it's roll, knowing that it's rollover, you got to kind of expect that, that it's going to be very difficult to become directional again, because those longer time frame. Uh, hedgers and and you know users producers the people who really use these markets to protect themselves against risk are protecting themselves against rollover risk and you know when you think about it those users and those producers of tangible commodities like crude oil you know if you're a driller you're a producer if if you have a refinery you're a user if you buy gasoline you're a user and, but they don't they don't trade in the marketplace the producers and the users don't trade the producers are trying to sell it for as much as they can the the the, the users are trying to buy it for as cheap as they can and they're not going to meet in the middle it's the speculators the ones that are assuming the risk of the producers and the users that create the opportunity for the producer to sell high and the user to buy low and as you know, it seems like speculators are always going to be buying the high and selling the low, but that's true. But because of our time frame, we may buy the high, but we can get out of it a tick lower. We can we can move things around. When as price goes up and down, the producers sell high, the users buy low, the market rotates back and forth, and the story goes on and on. But that's our role as as speculators is to assume the risk of people trying to protect themselves of risk as producers or users. It's a little different when we're talking about equities, S&Ps, who are the producers and who are the users? Well, the producers and the users are the hedge funds, the banks, the pension funds, all of those people. They're they're moving money around from product to product and, and asset class to asset class. 
So we never really know what their outright, well, we, I mean, we can tell what their outright position is in the S&Ps, but we don't know what they're leaning against, what they're hedging it against. The point is, when the longer time frame participants are in the marketplace, that's, a, that's an opportunity for us to recognize, hey, the longer time frame's been buying and been buying, been buying, that means the speculators are getting shorter and shorter and shorter. And that's when we get those delta divergences and those, those good opportunities to use that delta divergence against our speculator class and, and, and profit from it. Uh, if you want to call that a rant, call it a rant. No, that was money, dude. That was money. Yeah, that was, that enough that's crew very talk? educational stuff. I, I, if you uh, missed any of that, definitely go back and watch the YouTube stream at a later time because that was masterclass stuff. Thank you for that, Hogan. Amazing. Yeah, I think we got Basta. I think we got Basta coming up on CNBC right now. Is that right? I believe so. I think they they just ran a promo for Bostic on CNBC. A little surprise drop in here. Yeah, caught out of the corner of my eye. I'll keep you guys updated, but I think he's going to be speaking. I wonder if he'll come out with a doozy and say, "Not that great." Who <laughs> <laughs> said that? Was that Barkin this morning? Yeah, <laughs> and he looks at the data and says, "Hey, quote me on this one." Not that good. <laughs> <laughs> Run in the paper. Who says that? Dude, it's like, dude, it's your economy, uh, dude. I was barking, <laughs> apparently. Oh my god! Yeah. I'm never going to get over that one. That's probably the funniest thing I've heard all year. <laughs> Great. The market guru is saying, uh, the market is going to go higher unless, of course, it goes lower. <laughs> you know, I have a guarantee on the market, a sure thing. The market will go to the right. <laughs> it will, it will go to the market will definitely go to the right. <laughs> and if it doesn't sell, <laughs> it's over. Uh -huh. right. The big one, Jack. Oh, We're looking for the, the big, big one. one. <laughs> <laughs> Jack's been. Uh, we thought we had it this morning. Uh, yeah, we good kind stuff. of did have it this morning. We kind of did have it this morning. But this, uh, you know, this is kind of. Uh, I don't know if you agree with the, agree with me on this one, Hogue. But this is kind of painting the picture that we've seen lately, where. Shorts are getting trapped again, where we have this big downside move and everybody gets hot and heavy into it. And then all of a sudden now shorts are trapped and they're going, God, what do we do now? <laughs> mm -hmm. And it's and it's always so obvious after the fact, you know, we, we, we just looked at, hey, that late spike from Wednesday, we we couldn't take that out yesterday. We put in a, a, a failed auction to the downside. We just traded into that failed auction and into that late spike from Wednesday and we found buyers down there. Imagine that. Yeah. And here we go. We're right where, I mean, the S and P's are, are moving rather steadily right back to the opening range, which remains the high of the session. Chop around. Yeah. And up. I was, uh, I was a knucklehead who was trying to short below that 37 quarter level. And in hindsight, it's like Andre saw it before I saw it. Andre was, was talking to himself. He goes, come on, Andre, you see this, you see those bids. You take that long. I heard him. I heard him talking. Yeah. He was in my ear. <laughs> he takes it long and like a rock. Sorry, he nailed that trade. I was the knucklehead who didn't see it until after the fact, but I did end up flipping long. And it just goes to show that, you know, hindsight's everything. And, uh, you know, this is why I recommend like with Bookmap, you record the tape in Bookmap. You go back and you watch it with the gift of hindsight. You can look back at where I was shorting those 37s. And now I can see that and try to commit that pattern to my, to my memory. So the next time I see that pattern, I can recognize it as quickly as Andre did. Yeah. Hey, and, and, you know, everybody, what Rips is saying here is genius. You want to learn something about markets? Look left. Yeah. <laughs> Look <laughs> left. Check out the patterns. See what happened. Recognize them. Put them to memory. If, as You know, sometimes it takes um, 150 times to commit something to memory, at least for me. But at least then it gets committed, committed to memory. And you can, at the very least, protect yourself in those situations. Really quick, breaking from Bostic here, he says, quote, I was a little surprised by the data, but have seen a lot of progress on inflation. Still more work to do on lower inflation pressures. Can live with recent inflation data. The Fed should be patient on policy. And we are ripping on this commentary from Mr. Bostic. Raphael. My man. <laughs> yeah, that's your favorite one. Yeah, he's, Raphael, he's first name basis, baby. <laughs> that's right. What did, he, what did he say? Was it dovish what he said? <laughs> He's a, he's a dove. He's very dove. He is. He says, around, uh, people are feeling okay about this. <laughs> this is wow. so good. Uh, people are feeling okay. <laughs> Profound shit today, guys. Our Fed speakers are just uh, Fed heads are on it today. And he, uh, keep in mind, folks, uh, Bostic is also a voter. These are all voters that are saying these out-of-pocket commentaries today. 
Yeah, people think the economy is, uh, well, let's see what adjective. Uh, they think it's okay. Okay. <laughs> I feel okay. <laughs> 86% long in NASDAQ. Uh, we still need to stay good. vigilant. There's a lot of risk and uncertainty out there. Today still expects the trend back to 2% inflation, and that shall remain intact. This is more commentary coming out of Bostick here on CNBC. <laughs> People are feeling okay. That's good okay. enough for me. Let's send it buy in it. long, Andre. <laughs> yeah. Buy it, baby. <laughs> okay, buy it. Not that great. <laughs> buy it. Put it down. Buy it. Oh, never saw. We just need too. to have a calendar on our desk every day. You just tear off a, another day that says, "Oh, buy it." <laughs> buy it. Yep. <laughs> what do we do? Friday? Ah, oh, buy it. Tuesday? Buy it. Buy it. Oh. Yeah. Buy it be an art to the decision to start cutting rates. So now, <laughs> so people think the economy's okay. Uh, right. I feel good uh, or not so good. And then uh, this is going to be an art form. This decision is going to be an art form. <laughs> mm, he's just propping they himself all? up there. He's the artist now. He's Aren't an they artist. You know, they create looks like uh, Isaac Rivera here in chat. He is in the top five. He is uh, finessing a position on the E-mini S&Ps to the long side. Looking good there, Isaac. Okay. Nice trading. That's Isaac. Yeah, we've got uh, a couple of standout traders. Uh, she, C is currently up six grand on the day. And Nicholas T, a uh, frequent flyer, is up 4,600 today. Okay. Those are some of our standout traders. <laughs> Himachali says, Rip's mocking the Fed because shorts didn't go his way. Uh, I flipped long and I'm up. What am I up right now? You made I'm money up both 6,800 ways. bucks, so not really sure what you're talking about there. <laughs> you made money the downside and upside. So I I, yeah, I'm not sure about that comment. <laughs> I'm mocking the Fed because I think it's hilarious. I'm not even mocking them. I'm just, I think it's hilarious what they're saying. I'm having fun with it. It's Friday. Hey, smile over there, Himachala. Life's on. not so it's, bad. <laughs> it is Friday. <laughs> 825s are holding here in the NQ. Yeah, it looks like we're holding above VWAP in the S&P. Yeah. Get a little pullback back to VWAP. Maybe take a long here. Bostic said buy it, so let's buy it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, some more commentary. Uh, big, big commentary. He just said, Outlook to start cutting rates is in the summertime. Summer, summertime. All right. He's not afraid just um, to let it rip. <laughs> it's it's not, today, I'm telling you, it's just so great. I, I can't believe it. I, I wonder what Mary Daly's going to have the follow-up. Yeah, I know. Mary Daly's going to look at it and say, I looked at the economy and then, Nah, decent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they all have to coordinate yeah, the all right. Yeah, I mean. I hate yeah, decent. I don't know. It's right. It's decent. I, <laughs> I wouldn't would okay. buy it, but it's doing okay. Uh, it's all right. I don't uh, know. One of them is going to finally come out and say, how am I supposed to know? <laughs> <laughs> then it's over. I would <laughs> Uh, that would be one of the most honest things they could say. Absolutely. <laughs> exactly right. Dude, you know, as much as me, says, she's going to say, meh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Finally, one of them would be honest. We don't yeah, know. Exactly. <laughs> it's so good. If the data comes in more positively, I could move to three cuts for 2024, which is in line with the original SCP dot plot that we saw back in December. Uh, keep in mind, the Fed is pricing in, uh, well, Fed fund futures are pricing in two rate cuts. So Bostic walking it back and asking for three now. Market launching on that. <laughs> Coach Dakota, yeah, I just work here. What do you want from me? Yeah. <laughs> uh, why are you asking me? Why are you why? asking? <laughs> Pay me my uh, speaking fee and let me get out of here. <laughs> that's killing today. Uh, just cool. shut why the other door. Yeah. <laughs> do me a favor. Shut the f door <laughs> <laughs> why are you asking me well done chat <laughs> oh man that's that's the dream job right there be an fomc voting member and just get paid a quarter mil every time you go in front of a port a podium <laughs> yep. all right catching a bit here we got 450 sitting at the offer on uh 50 40s 400 at 40 as they'd say at the, in the pits john what's here 400 at 40 440 440 440 now if this was the pit Everybody in front of them would be offering 20 at 90, 20 at 390, 20 at, 20 at I'm sorry, 990, 20 at 990, 20 at 990. You get 100 sold. If it doesn't go, if it goes, you make money. If it doesn't, you lose a ticket. Yep. 
That's the lean. That's the lean. Isaac Rivera's long is looking nice and juicy here. I think he added on that pullback too. Isaac, if you have any commentary, please sound off in chat. I know you're crushing it out there. Nice. Yeah, well, Isaac, I'm, I'm hoping joins my uh, top set trading league team. Wow, we are. <laughs> well, us. Andre, here's my question and Hogue for you as well. Do we give the entire move back today by 100%. the uh, end of the day? 100% we're going to settle. We're going to test settle. 100%. <laughs> no hesitation. 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%, 100%. we're testing. I love it. Yeah, why not? <laughs> when in doubt, dude, just buy it, man. Oh. <laughs> uh, I wish Kill I had me. my original long still. Oh, God. Yeah, me too, man. It would have been real tight uh. right now. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah, the, uh, that long would have been sick uh, oh uh, goodness uh, yeah, more commentary out here from Bostic there's still tremendous momentum in the economy there's evidence to suggest worker productivity has improved allowing us to be patient with the policy now if the data comes in more positively could move to three cuts and if the economy is performing well the Fed can be patient there's lots of positive news to reflect on this is according to Bostic okay he's friendly Seems chill, yeah. Lots of positive so, moves to reflect on. What else we have? Oh, we have daily coming up. You can see his. You can see his reflection in a mirror. Not a vampire. That's good. Yes, Long's about to get crushed. According to Jonathan M. I don't know about that. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> Long seem to be doing all right. Isaac Rivera is up nicely. 3,000 unrealized. Give it up for Isaac, folks, here in chat. Top Isaac. five trader on top nice step. Job, We're crushing it. Love to see that. Well done. Nice job, Isaac. Yeah, S&Ps are already all the way back to the opening range. <laughs> what a market. What a market. What's up? What's up? Uh, here we go. 440s failed S&Ps. We're just cruising. Oh, my gosh. Settlement. Here we come, baby. Oh. Uh... Uh, more uh, more commentary out of Bostic. He says, acknowledging that the balance sheet is definitely a conversation right now. Balance sheet cuts can continue amid strong market liquidity. So talking about quantitative tightening there. So QT possibly bringing some effects here in an election year. Uh, pointing towards the reverse repo operation that it is down about, what is it? I think last time it was down about 500 million or billion. I can't remember which, but yeah, reverse repo has been down as well. So quantitative tightening could be on the uh, the menu here even more so. Tightening? Yeah, QT. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. If they're talking about reducing their balance sheet, that's QT right there. Okay, yeah. Huh. Well, I said, don't talk him dirty here. Uh, he also says, I'm a little bit surprised on January's inflation, but not so much in a big way. Okay, here we go. Launch it. <laughs> <laughs> Set it up. Okay, 540 million. Thank you for that, Richard Holt, here in chat. Keeping me uh, honest there. Thank you so much. 540 million. Definitely not 500 billion. That seemed off. Wow, we are launching. Wow, look at this thing go. Uh, we might get to back up to the uh, highs in the S&P sooner than later here. We just auctioned above 50, 40 here in the S&Ps. We're almost years. there. Yep, very close. Wow. What was the opening price on S&Ps today? Was it 50, 50? Uh, opening price was 50, 43 even. Wait, really? Oh my gosh. Well, regular trading hour, yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. So yeah, we're I'm, back I'm in the opening range. They're officially back in the opening range. We're wow. damn near there. Uh, he just said that the Fed wants to make sure our actions don't trigger market dysfunction. <laughs> okay. Hey, You're good there. Uh, yeah. Like I think more so his, his commentary is causing the dysfunction. Love it. Pretty comfortable with the labor market as real wage growth continues to normalize has as it's been. Okay. And we are setting it higher here. Keep wanting to get into a long, but the thing's not too, pulling back at all. Me too, no, it's <laughs> not. Me both, right? Uh, <laughs> it's just, it's nonstop. Sure. Like I can't, like I'm waiting for that pullback and it's just like, all right, I guess I'll buy it and then I'll end up buying the top here. Yeah. I'm sure. Oh, no Sell way. You. Are you? Yeah. Good luck to you. Good luck, yeah. <laughs> Thanks for the confidence, Rich. I mean that in the best way. I don't, I don't mean that in a snarky way at all. I really do want you to win that trade. 
I mean, it's back to the opening range. This is where this is where the sellers came in on the open uh, overnight. You know, this is where we saw some resistance. Uh, just gonna see what happens. This is the five minute chart, by the way, a chart that I'm not familiar with. Yeah, I think I'm SMCI probably is still rally too. Goodness, Nasdaq just hit view up. Yeah, just hit view up. trying to find a pullback, and uh, Nvidia is just going crazy here. By the way, I'm going to try Upside. along here. I have to do it. I want to see this above uh, the VWAP here, 860. I want to see break a VWAP and then encroachment above 873. So let me try a trade. If this thing here. doesn't go my way soon. I'm out of it. As long as we're holding strong above 850s here, I'm confident in this trade. I mean, there's a good chance after that big of an extension that we reject VWAP, but we'll see. A little bit, yeah. I do want to add uh, if we pull back to 850s or so. It's been a good trade today. Market's been good. Market's been amazing lately. Market's been really good today. Yeah, we do have Euro close in about 14 minutes as well. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. And then we got speaker Good old 11. Euro close. Uh, when's daily speaking reps? Sorry, if you're in a trade, uh, focus on 10 up. minutes before noon Eastern, or okay. 10 minutes after noon Eastern. Gotcha. Tilt 80% like long NQ, 71% long ES. What was it on NQ? NQ, uh, well, just uh, NQ just, okay, now it's 72%. It was 80, just dropped down to 71% long. A lot of folks getting their paid out at the view app there. So, I think so. Mm -hmm. I want to see this run through the VWAP here. 861. There we go. Nice push through the VWAP there. Gorgeous. Wow. Need to see follow through here. We'll wow, get wow. super squeezy yeah. above this. I want to see this encroachment up to the 70s now. Nice. See you later. Wow. We're above VWAP now. Son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> it's not giving me what I want. I'm out. Here comes settle and SPs. Settlement. There you go. Un bleeping real. Un yep. bleeping real. This is the strongest bull market I've ever Possibly seen. just concluded his interview, so we might see uh, this launch now since he's done talking. Out the way? Yeah. Yeah, it's out the way. It, it minimizes any future risk. So, All right. watching for this encroachment into the 70s here. Filled uh, nine contracts. Damn, son. Filled three more. So we realized 1200 bucks so far there on that trade. Wow. Looking for this to pop above 65 or so. I'm going to keep my stop pretty tight here, just in case I'm wrong. I want to see this uh, pushing up through 73s here. Yeah, you're holding VWAP there, so you're in good shape. Marry that sucker. Yep. Uh, we will have a little pop of resistance up towards 73, so I have to be on guard. I'm going to try to peel two and front run those 73s. Yeah, master class today, Ribs. Hey, thanks. We're trying our best. Yeah, was, this is impressive shit today. Not going to lie. Thank you. I'm going to cover two more there since we're not breaking just yet. And I stop at the rest. Let's see what this will uh, put us up at. We still have a one lot running here. Now we're starting to push up. We need to see breakout into 73 here. Above 73, we get super speedy. NVIDIA is just off to the races. S&P is going nuts. What a market. What a market. Google what a been held back by the VWAP here. I had stopped out there, so that puts us up on the day now. Let me bring that up here. 8,000 even. There we go. Impressive. Impressive. In less than two hours. In less than two hours, man. 
Where else can you do that? Impressive. Nice job. Beautiful futures market. <laughs> God bless this beautiful market and the opportunities that mm -hmm. we've had. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's yeah, Dolby. It was great. You you definitely put on a clinic today, Rips. It was well done, man. Oh, thank you. Some, sometimes we get lucky. Some days we're in the pocket. <laughs> some days we do. Some days not so much. Some days you're the bug. Some days you're the windshield. Today yep. we were the windshield. <laughs> <laughs> some days you're the hammer. Some days you're the nail. Uh, what oh, we yeah, got here? Right. Hey, uh, ask Hoke anything. Uh, plug in here the group coaching form pinned to the top of the chat. Let's get those ready for uh, Hoke segment at the noon hour, central time, 1 o'clock Eastern. Uh, fill out that form, get those questions loaded, and uh, yeah, we'll uh, get those populated Hogue answers every question to the best of his ability and is not afraid to say, I don't know. Right, John? Mm, nope. Yep, that's the best. Every, I, I don't know everything. 99.9% .9 though, you do. Nah. <laughs> I'm kidding. Some days you're the dog, some days you're the hydrant. That's right. I'm just, I'm just, <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, there we are. We're right into those 73s now. Look at that settlement, top. baby. Oh, amazing. you can't make this up. Just what a day, folks. What a day. We're at the high of the opening range in the S&Ps. We're still a long ways from the opening range in the NASDAQ, but wow, what a, what a turnaround. Wow, it's Unbelievable. Right. Yeah, right there. We tagged 73s, a little bit of a rejection. So I can hold on for those 73s. Congratulations to everybody who did. That was nice. I mean, basically 53s to 73s, 20 handle whip there to the top side. Just gorgeous resolution today. This market, I mean, honest to this goodness, good. I mean, this market has just been such a beautiful thing. And if you're patient enough, you don't marry a bias and you're fluid with your trading and you're patient, this is a market that you can get consistently paid on. You just have to have the patience for it. These are the days. Isaac Rivera up 4,000 unrealized. Let's go, Isaac. Nice work. Nice. Nice job. Nice job. Yeah. This, look at this. Two hours flies by, man. It sure does. This was a wild one. Oh, my gosh. I can't even believe that. It's already this is a wild one today. Ain't done what a either. great show this has been. This has been a lot of fun. And I think yeah. that uh, everybody really enjoyed so much knowledge that you're dropping there, Hogue, on, on the contracts and the roles. And exactly. it's amazing. You know, I always uh, I always remember the uh, the contract names by, I mean, I don't know why. It's just funny to me. H Muzz. <laughs> I don't know why. It's like, you know, because those are the, the months. H M U Z. Right. H Muzz. Uh, I don't know why. It's always stuck with me throughout the year. <laughs> June Septis. Yep. Yep. Like, Z is always like the last, last letter in the alphabet last month right. of the year and easy to remember. Right. Yep. F is January 1st month of this, uh, on the calendar. There's all those tricks there. Mm hmm. You know that there's actually um, letter, like letter months for uh, the, the contracts next year. No kidding. White's yeah, reds, like, right? The reds. Reds, like, uh, red. like red Jan is A. Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. You know, I've heard that before. I never really looked into it myself, though. Why would you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I have a passion for this stuff. I like, yeah. you know, I'm a, I'm a market nerd. I love reading about all this stuff. Oh, well, yeah, but you're not going to be trading red red March. No. <laughs> what about the uh, the orange March or the yellow March? Orange, orange <laughs> out there. Blue's out there. Orange. Right. Yellow, yeah. We were trading euro dollars. We were always trading a couple years out. No kidding. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Got a short. Are you long grips? Uh, yeah. Are you flat? I'm flat again. Um, but uh, just some some. Uh, I want to touch on the final two commentaries out from uh, Raphael here, Mr. Bostic. He did say always monitoring the bank risk, and this is important because we're talking about this at the top of the call. It was um, who was talking? It was not Barkin, but who's who was the follow up to Barkin? It was Michael Barr. Michael Barr. He was speaking right. about the CRE commercial real estate. Um, so Boston commented on. It, and he said he's monitoring bank risk, commercial real estate issues. Atlanta Fed district banks are doing okay. <laughs> Again, and here's a key word. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> with uh, commercial real estate, and then he followed that that up with he believes the biggest risk to the outlook right now is geopolitical which is, again, that's very important. You want to listen to these clues, these little breadcrumbs that the Fed is leaving for us. So he says the biggest risk is geopolitics right now, and the Red Sea disruptions haven't had much of an effect yet on the U.S. policy. Okay. 
basically they're telling us what they're looking at. So we should be looking at the same thing. Yeah. So when they when they uh, had some Fed speak, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago or a week ago, they're talking about we're looking intently at in employment data. And so anytime that we have jobless claims on Thursday, that's when jobless claims come out. You know, you want to pay attention to that. That's an 830 Eastern print, 730 Central. And you want to be paying attention to that because if the Fed is using that as an indicator of when they're going to drop rates, well, you know, there's your answer. The market's going to perform one way or the other. It's going to go up on a certain print. It's going to go down on a certain print. And we get that tell from the Fed when they're telling us that they're looking at exactly that for their uh, indicator of what they're going to do with the rates. Jake Johnson, yes, still trading H, March for equities is yes. in March. March in, in ARB, like on the floor. Nice. This is March. March, oh yeah, it was like this, yeah. It was like marching feet, marching feet, March. <laughs> what would they do for uh, Back December? Month, March. Like Back month, Santa Claus March. beard? Back month, March. <laughs> what was Dees, John? It was this, DC. right? Oh, yeah, what's this? Uh, I thought that was Dees. Maybe it was on the grains. Uh, Maybe on the grains. In the grains, it was. Nov. Well, that's Nov. I thought Nov X. was this. X. Oh, okay. As far as I this, like, Why didn't you cover me? <laughs> and, and extend, <laughs> extend the middle finger. <laughs> yep, you got it. I'll buy one. I would buy a thousand. Pissed. I'll buy you one, yeah. <laughs> I was buy a thousand. Uh, bounce off subtle. Wow, that was a fast two hours, gentlemen. Yeah, nuts. Yes, we was. tapped into that 73 topside liquidity and we rejected on that. So happy that we got out. We got out a little bit earlier than that 73. But yeah, first rejection there after that big triumphant blaster to the top side. So is that going to be the uh, the retracement on the market today? Tell us next road. <laughs> as the market turns. <laughs> yes. the market turns. Wow, what a trade. Yep. All right, well... Uh, Rips, hey man, thanks so much for all your contributions this week, every day and all day. Uh, we really appreciate the, the, to the opportunity we have to spend with you. I know I do. I know everybody does. Uh, what are you doing this weekend? Are you going to go out and spend some of that money? <laughs> no, no, no. You know, probably take it nice and relaxing. We do have a three-day weekend. I'm probably not going to be back on Monday streaming or trading. So, uh, probably going to enjoy the nice long weekend, maybe see if there's any, some, you know, we have one of those theaters that's close by that has, you know, the Butler service where big reclining chairs, oh, nice. you know, yeah. get the whole smorgasbord and everything. So maybe see if there's any good flicks out right now. It's not been really any good movies. Last movie we saw was uh, dumb money in the theaters. And I wasn't a big fan of that, but, uh, Me neither. I thought the documentaries, yeah, it just, I didn't, didn't tickle my fancy. So, uh, maybe catch a flick, uh, eat some good food, maybe spend some time with some family or friends. But uh, yeah, get some time away from the screens. I'm looking forward to that. It's been one heck of a week where it's maintained a lot of my, com uh, just really had to be a lot of focus this week into the markets. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's going to be nice to get that three-day weekend. I'm looking forward to the break. How about you folks? How about you, John? Probably a lot of chilling. I think, like I said, when I think both my wife and son are, are a little bit under the weather, a little bit of a flu, something going on. So I'll be probably hiding from them quite a bit. I'll go out and take, <laughs> take care of a few things out of the house. Uh, maybe go to the range and kill some paper and um, <laughs> maybe make some nice meals for my family if they are still under the weather. So uh, nice low key, uh, still working on the series three. So I'll be do doing a little bit of studying on that as well. And uh, looking forward to another, another interesting and challenging week next week. Very nice. And you, Andre, any, uh, any uh, plans this weekend? Going to dinner tonight, but besides that, no. Going to my uh, favorite restaurant, Chicago Cut. Uh, it's a nice steakhouse here in the city. Looking forward to nice. it. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, haven't been there in a few months, so we'll see what's popping over there. That's Wolfgang Puck's restaurant, right? It is not. I, no, it's not. Chicago Cut. I forgot who it's owned by. It's, uh, it's a one-off here that. in the city. Uh, gotcha. It's pretty well. It's pretty popular. Popular. I lost money, Dolby. That's why I'm That's why I'm going there, Dolby. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> <but> yes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But yes, I'll well, help John, the I, hope, boys. I hope that uh, your family is feeling better. I hope that everyone gets well soon. It's very sweet of you to be uh, taking care of everybody in your house and everything. And it's just been a pleasure, again, to share the stage with both of you, Andre, and especially Hogue. I just always, always really enjoy the commentary that you bring here for not only me as a guest on the show, but for everybody here in chat. It's just it's just brilliant commentary. And I think that, you know, it's it's just top notch. It's we're really lucky to have your commentary on the markets here. Mm -hmm. Boy, you, you're embarrassing me, Rips, and I, I really appreciate that. And uh, 
you know, I will uh, uh, do my best to keep it coming, man. That's that's the yeah. that's the that's the goal, right? So, well, hey, be kind, to everybody. Be kind to yourselves. Be kind to each other. Uh, make sure you say a prayer for peace. We do have the shoulder tap segment coming out. Me and Mick are going to be doing the uh, fast check of people's uh, trading combines that they sent in to have us review. We're looking forward to that. Don't forget, we got Peter Tuckman uh, for the power hours uh, just for a little while, and Andre and Dolby are going to be joining. Don't forget about the uh, oh uh, the uh, top quiz. Uh, we've got uh, Back to the Futures uh, Strategy Lab with Anne Marie and Robert, and then the power hour at the end of the day. Andre Dolby and Danny Trades will be joining you for that. You never know, I might be popping in one or two of these at oh, some yeah. point, but. Uh, have a great uh, rest of the rest of the day, Rips. Um, you traded great today. Always so fun to watch. And uh, we will look forward to seeing you uh, at some point next week again. And uh, you're not going to be around on Monday. So we will probably be around on Monday. But uh, we'll, um, at least for, for, for part of the day. Uh, but, uh, hey, have a great weekend, everybody. Uh, well, Rips. You guys are all supposed to stick around because we got all this other stuff coming on today. Don't you leave. We'll see you shortly for uh, the shoulder tap segment. Blessings, everyone. We'll see you in a minute.
right, we are ready for shoulder tap with the rapid tap segment. Mick, how you doing today? Hey, I'm good. I'm good. I'm all fired up for this. This is a fast segment doing the rapid tap. If you remember last Friday, uh, instead of talking about shout outs for individual traders, pulling up their cards. Uh, we had a group of people that had submitted their own trade reports to us for us to take a look at them, analyze their trading. And we're going to be sharing a bunch of those people today. So I hope we can get through a lot of them. Um, I'll skip the shout outs today because it seems like uh, somebody already took that over here. You guys were talking about it. I uh, I was listening to the segment in the background, John, uh, when you're on with Rips and Andre. And uh, oh, do I wish I'm part of the I was part of those conversations on so many occasions talking about rollover <laughs> and and all that kind of stuff. Um, I actually liked trading the rolls myself. Uh, it was a good time uh, for someone who was doing calendar spreads. Um, you know, buying one month, selling yeah, the next right? month. We got we got a little sure. we got a lot of movement in those markets during that time. So um, that different was always ingrained. exciting. Different in grains than some of these other markets. Definitely, I agree with you. I know that. Um, yeah, there were a lot of people, a lot of grain participants um, that were only spreaders, um, and I worked very closely with uh, several of them. And then obviously, I was uh, with the prop firm doing market making. So um, it. The rolls for a lot of grain guys was their bread and butter. I know you said you like taking time off or sit on your hands, mm -hmm. but um, that was yeah. bread and butter for a lot of people. I know people that made quite a bit of money every single roll. Um, I'm sure they wish that there were more rolls. Anyways, uh, let's roll into the trading cards today. Let's um, do it. Spe oh, wait, going back to uh, the trading the, the spreads and the grains and stuff. Andre's going to Chicago Cut tonight. Actually, there was a guy who was in the wheat pit who's a part owner of Chicago Cut. Oh, really? Uh, at, least, at least he was initially, yeah. Um, so I thought that was kind of cool. I, I like that spot too, good food, but it's like way too noisy in there for me and like shoulder to shoulder uh, at, at the tables and whatnot. Anyways, popular, good food. Huh? Yeah, very popular. It's nice if you can get outside, uh, not right now, but summertime, sit out on the patio there uh, and have a steak outside. Uh, all right, let's roll into the trading cards today. Um, shout out to Abby. She did a nice, cool um, modification on these ones to you know make, cool. a, make them unique. So let's dive into Ephraim, Ephraim Y. Um, Ephraim is a trader who's been with us for a long period of time. I actually wanted to get to him last week when we did this, but didn't have time. Ephraim, um, he's been in and out of funded accounts with us. Uh, he, he's probably got over a dozen. And um, I take this one a little bit personally because I've worked super closely with Ephraim. Um, uh -huh. He's got a good eye for the markets. Um, but there's a lot of stuff that he does poorly. And I'm gonna highlight that today because um, he's one of those bigger swingers. He's not the biggest swinger. He's not a five figure uh, you know, day guy, but uh, definitely you know, makes and loses thousands and thousands of dollars a day. Um, he has a big problem with keeping his profits um, and protecting them. He can't limit his losses. Um, I, I, I have, let me give you a little bit more background here with Ephraim. I have spoken to him on the phone countless number of times, and he's always quick to answer the phone when things are going well and, and he's making uh -huh. money, and he will <laughs> not reply to me when he's losing money, which is exactly when you need to have that intervention more so than anything um, to talk about stuff. But when it's not working, he doesn't want to hear it from me, so I've kind of stopped working with him. You know, If he wants to make his own bed and, and not make adjustments or improvements, I'm going to leave right. it up to him to do that. Um, you know, I'll probably be keeping him in an XFA uh, because of this, you know, short term success that he continues to be finding. Um, so he needs to work on limiting his losses. And, and this is not for him because I know he's not going to listen to this. This is for everybody else out there. He's one of those guys makes three thousand, loses three thousand, makes three thousand, loses three thousand. Back in the day when uh, we didn't have express funded accounts and it was just live accounts and we had that daily loss limit uh, actually being a rule where if you hit it, the account would close. Um, he right. was someone who would on day one come lose $3,000, uh, lose his account in a single day. Um, that's just pitiful. Uh, I'll leave it at that. Um, so my advice to him or anybody else that might be, you know, trading similar to him, you know, 
if you want to make this a long term thing, which I think we all do, you know, you need to make adjustments because all he does is spin his wheels. Like I said, short term success. He doesn't take it seriously enough to recognize, adapt and make adjustments. Um, he just keeps replicating the same things over and over and over again. Um, right. And I already kind of talked about he loves talking about that, you know, talking his trading when he's winning. But, you know, Things are he runs good. away when it's not working. So um, it's hard to work with someone like that. And I've, I've lost interest in, in trying to help him um, because from everything I've seen, can't help him. So uh, let's move on from Ephraim unless you have any commentary there, John. I'm sure it's a familiar no, name. I'm just looking to his, just looking through his recent combines and just about every day is a daily loss limit hit. You can't, you, you know, you're not going to go anywhere if you keep doing that, Ephraim. And I know, I think I know Ephraim from, from the past. And uh, all right, let's let's move on. Yeah, he's not going anywhere um, doing right. that. So seems like we're having a little bit of an issue with uh, trade reports loading. But trade next, reports. can we pull? Can we pull up Dylan? I want to talk about Dylan. Um, this is a pretty easy, clear cut one for Dylan. We won't spend too much time on this card. Um, the biggest thing I saw here, uh, and this is from his recent XFA, is he's in 100K, um, you know, not risking, excuse me, I think it's 150K. I must have typed that out incorrectly, but not risking such a large percentage of his account because I know on day one in his XFA, he hit the $3,000 daily loss limit. Day two, lost $1,500. There's a few of these people in here. Um, so you'll notice a common theme as we go through and talk about them. Guys, you just can't. You can't risk that much early on. We talk about it. It's probably something that people don't like hearing because it's not juicy stuff. But like, by right. gosh, why would you get a funded level account and only put yourself in a position where you might be able to trade two days in it? It's like you've got an account that you can take payouts from. Why blow it in two days? Uh, so, yeah, daily loss limit. And then he lost the other third uh, on day two when he hit his max loss limit. Um Kind of let's move on to Fernando there. I mean, you that, don't give yourself much of a chance when you do that, you know. And you need to give yourself a chance as a trader. You're you're not gonna always, you know, everybody falls into these cold streaks and stuff, market states. Sometimes good traders can't make any money because the market's not really moving for them. Um, so you know, you don't want to be forcing things. And I just find it to be such a shame, you know, going back to Ephraim, daily loss limit on day one in a live account. Um, and and these traders that are hitting daily loss limits on day one, don't do that. It's so easy. Mm -hmm. You know, the stove is hot. Don't touch it. Um, you know, you, you can't control, you can manage your losses, but you can't control being wrong in the marketplace. The one thing you can control is how wrong you let yourself be. So don't let yourself be too wrong early on in the account because um, these cards today I'm talking about, all the other trade reports I've seen over my time here at Top Step, this is not an uh, this is a common thing. And and by gosh, let's uh, let's not be doing this. We need to you know give ourselves a little bit of a leash. Let's pull up for uh, Dylan. No, we just did Dylan. Ale. You wanted Ale. Fernando next. Okay, Fernando. Yeah, I think I skipped over Ale, Fernando. Um, here, here's another guy, Fernando. We just talked about Dylan. Same thing here. I told you it was a common theme. Daily right. loss limit on day one. So present, prevent yourself from risking large sums of money. Um, you're not going to improve if you're hanging yourself on day one and day two. It's like we right. all have ways to improve as traders, but I mean – there's no room to improve if you're just hitting your max loss. You can't learn anything from that unless you finally, you know, make the change to not do it again. Um, Eldis, let's pull up Eldis's card. Eldis is a little bit different than the other traders we're talking about because there's actually some stuff that they need to work on, but also some things that they need to continue doing that is really good. Um, so some areas for improvement over trading and being more selective with their trades. Uh, they need to stay away from the daily loss limit like the other uh -huh. traders before them that I've mentioned. Um, I will say when I was looking at these trade reports, I was a little bit appalled by how many resets that there were. Um, I, I don't like the resets there if you need to use it, but you don't want to use a reset as a crutch. You don't learn right. things from bailing yourself out and, and spending more money on that. You know, good traders are forged by grinding it out and, and you know, 
working through difficult situations uh, when their back's against the wall, uh, scaling down their size, limiting their losses, doing what they need to do and not doing what they want to do. So I think Eldis, you know, what he wants to do is give himself a fresh start when he screws up. It's not going to make you better, Eldis. And for everybody watching, it's not going to make you better when you bail yourself out like that. Mm -hmm. Enough of the areas to improve. Things that I want them to continue doing. Um, they've got a one to one risk reward ratio. It's a little bit. Uh, it, it is um, a little bit better than that. Um, right. So I like that. Also, they have really nice hold times. They're patient with their winning trades. They're impatient with their losing trades. That's good. I'll leave it. At, yeah, it's good. I'll leave it at that because with this quick rapid fire, we're not going to go in too deep on these. So I'm kind of just scratching the surface with what I'm mentioning here on these traders. So right. um, speaking of which, yeah, let's take a deep yeah, breath ahead, for halftime. We didn't get a chance to show yeah. the hot streaks in yesterday's best. So I have JD flying in from the rafters to do that rapid fire style. JD, the floor is yours. Here we are. What's up, guys? Hot streaks coming in, coming in. What's hot. up is your mic gain, JD. Turn it down a little bit. <laughs> a little hot. Are you? <laughs> You're good. How does James that happen? H. All right. What? 24 James H. Days. Brendan Niaben. Uh, yeah, top days, three yeah. all extended their streaks yesterday. Uh, James took home 200 bucks. Brendan put up 230 bucks, and Niaben walked away with a cool. 50 bucks. Hogue, what do they say about 50 bucks in Cicero, Illinois? 50 bucks is 50 bucks. 50 bucks is 50 bucks. All right. We That'll got two new people nice on the list nice lunch today. over at Freddy's, too, in Cicero. <laughs> That's a great spot. James H., really quickly, 24 winning days for 7,100 bucks. I love it. That's someone who's hitting singles and uh, could really scale what they're doing with the consistent profitability. Um, mm -hmm. That's that's impressive right there. I like that a lot. I like it a lot. Jab, jab, jabbing away yeah. at it. Yeah. And now our, uh, our two new members of the list today, Salil K and our guy, Andrew A., who some of you might be familiar with. Recognize that name from our Discord channel, anyone? Andrew A. is a member of the Top Step support team and our resident Discord guru, another nice Top job. Step team member, making waves at the Funda level. Hey, yeah, you Andrew, think that's a coincidence? Nice yes. We do and we do coach. All right. That's our new theme, right? Awesome. All right. Here are some PLs from yesterday. Yesterday's best. Jackson Cole, Kevin Matthew, and Bulkeron all trading in the XFA. Two things to note here. Kevin. Kevin and Bulkeron both trading using uh utilizing the trade copier across three XFAs. So their total PLs from yesterday. Uh Kevin, thirty eight thousand total and Bulkeron twenty nine point five thousand wow. total across three xfas for both it's just amazing man we got good traders here yeah cole's someone we've had our eye on for a little while now too he is he is trading really nicely well that's all we got for you i'm gonna get out of here finish up mick everybody wants to hear about the traders you're calling out today too all right guys awesome see you next Thanks, week you got right, it who's next? rapid fire all right, let's rapid fire. Martin L., let's pull him up. Uh, Martin's trading NASDAQ. He's a new member to Top Step since November. Um, we'll talk about his most recent XFA. Again, wiped out in two days. Guys, why are you letting yourself lose an account in two days? Um, I want to frame this out a little bit differently and talk about different parameters that are outside of the Top Step parameters, you know, um, 150, 100K account here. So you've got a 2,000, excuse me, a $3,000 um, max drawdown there. Max drawdown, so yeah. you know, two days, I, I know we hit daily loss limit and then lost the other thousand uh, on day two. Like you got to split it up. I, I don't understand why people become a funded trader. They get this great opportunity. You've got this tool to get payouts from, to put money in your pocket. And then you blow it in two days. Guys, like to, to kind of scale this, you know, if you were at a, another prop firm or something that you might have brought your own money to or something, I'm thinking like Chicago prop firms here, you know, where, where I was, you know, if you're taking big risk, like they're going to throw you out the door. Um, right. We don't do that here, which which is good because we let people continue to grow and learn. But I mean, 
put it in another way, um, this might be a little bit more straightforward than my other example, but like if you had a hundred thousand dollar trading account, which is not uncommon out there, you can't lose 50 grand in a single day and then lose no. 50 grand the next day. Like, come on. Um, so I always am like, what, what's going on with these people when they're busting out after two trading days? Um, I think Martin can work on not over trading. Um, as far as the over trading goes, there are some days that he's, you know, doing over 70 trades in a single session on the NASDAQ short That's time just... frame. I, I know the shorter the time frame you're trading on, the more opportunities you're going to see or think you see. Uh -huh. But I don't know anybody who's pegging 70 trades and being right on more than half of them and actually being profitable, especially the NASDAQ. Like if you're taking short time frame trades on the NASDAQ, you're probably looking for smaller profits on those trades, but it's the NASDAQ. Mm -hmm. It moves around so quickly. It's like your initial risk right out of the gates, like the second you put a trade on is an easy 20 ticks. Um, right. So it's super, super hard to scalp that. The risk reward there for me is not there, making that many trades. I've watched a lot of traders, guys. I've done a lot of trading myself. Short time frames in the NASDAQ is super difficult. And like I said, the second you put that trade on, you can almost assume that you got 20 ticks of risk right out of the gates. And if you're only scooping up smaller profits on those, you got to be right way more than half the time. But at 70 trades, you are not going to be right more than half the time unless you get a little bit lucky um, right. or you're working or you're working the long side on a trend or something like that. So uh, let's move on from Martin. I know we don't have much more time and I want to get to a few more of these guys. Can we pull up Mario's please? Um, Mario. 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 Uh, NASDAQ and gold. Um, not bad stuff here. Uh, as a matter of fact, you know, he's got 71% winning days and he's got a three to one risk reward ratio. Uh, he's taking regular payouts. Um, this is not bad trading here. I'm going to analyze it anyways, because he submitted it for analysis. Uh, but there's some things to work on. You know, he needs to cut his thousand dollar losing days out of his uh, out of his trading, because I've looked at a number of these accounts of his and He's, you know, uh, a relatively small P&L person, but every once in a while he hits the daily loss limit and it's like you're 71% winning days and good risk reward. Um, I can't remember what the winning trade percentage is here on him, but he's like taking five steps forward. Like you have five good winning days and then one day wipes out those five winning days. Wipes out everything. Um, yeah, that, that always... That always, I have too, and it was probably one of the most irritating things. Like there's nothing worse than wiping out, you know, two good weeks of being in tune with the markets and, and making money just with having a blow up trade. So we've all been there. Um, Mario, something to learn from. I think at a certain point, this is, maybe this was the case for you, John, but for me, it's like, why the F do I keep doing this? I was like, I just got to stop doing it because I was getting too right. mad at myself over right. it. Um, yeah. All, all this money that of, we earn it, eats up a lot of mental money, capital. Yeah, it does. It does. All this money that we earn is hard earned money. Uh, like, uh, you know, you say, John, it's the easiest way to make hard money. Um, yeah. But it, it is hard earned money and, and there's nothing like throwing it out the door. So, Mario, you got some good stuff going for you. You got a couple things to work on. I think probably those daily loss limit days, it's up here. Um, you're getting married to some bias of direction or something like that. Try and separate yourself from your bias um, and, and manage the money. Good things will come. All right, two minutes left. Let's get Milton up here because uh, also right. Milton has got some stuff that uh, is, he's got going for him and uh, some things to work on. Very similar to uh, Mario, Milton and Mario. So I think there's a little self-sabotage here. Um, same thing, small P and L's, they're consistently profitable. Um, and then, but they have that, those big blow up days. So wham. yeah, I mean, he's only right half the time, 51% winning trades. Uh, 
he's able to, you know, squeak out 63% winning days with a, about a one to one risk reward ratio. The biggest thing for Milton going forward, I'd say is try and tweak that risk reward ratio, because if you can be right half the time on your trades and you go from one to one to two to one, we're really going to see some nice strides in your progress. Um, mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, I, yeah. I think we should end here, John. Yeah, well, I think um, we have to make him sorry about that. The card. No, it's okay. We'll get to these guys next Friday. Um, yeah. There's always stuff to talk about. I'd rather have more content than uh, than less content. Uh, before we part, though, if, if you guys like this Analyze My Trade segment, or as we call it, Rapid Tap, give us a like um, in the chat there. I, I think it's fun. I think it's cool because I, I always, I've always thought that you can learn more hearing about people's failures or shortcomings than hearing about, you know, oh, so and so's killing it. They made this much money. Learning from other people's mistakes can maybe mm -hmm. stop you from making the same mistake before it happens. You know, we all learn from our mistakes, but if you can learn to not even have that mistake start for you, uh, it, it's a good thing, and it means money in your trading. So. Absolutely. All right, Mick. Thank you very much. We gotta we gotta call it there. Thanks again, uh, Mick, for joining us in your infinite wisdoms and uh, be uh, be around here. We've got uh, the uh, power players segment today. We got Peter Tuckman coming with us. So stick around. We'll see you in a couple of minutes.
to Power Players. Very exciting Power Players today. We have with us Peter Tuckman, the the uh, Einstein of Wall Street. How are you doing today? I'm great. I'm great. Thanks for having me. How are you? It's my pleasure. My pleasure. Uh, it's Friday. Doing a lot of trading today? You know what? Yes, I am, actually. It's been a really exciting week. I'm really happy that we are sort of starting this new relationship because Monday I came on and we sort of talked about what the week could be like. And now we get to really look back on it one day at a time. It's been a wild and crazy week. So we get to do kind of the, the new top step Wall Street Global Trading Academy uh, market wrap up first week. So I'm excited to be here. Awesome. Awesome. So what do we want to talk about? You know what? I think it's really important for us to note a couple of different things. Obviously, we're like six weeks into the year and the market is really forging higher and higher. Over, I guess, mm -hmm. the last six weeks of 2024, we've only had one down week. This week, all eyes were on the CPI number and the PPI number. Obviously, the market's been led by a lot of the uh, AI and the tech sector, and that's fine and good. It has been a reasonably good uh, earning season so far. But obviously, we're all thinking about what the inflation story is, CPI, Consumer Price Index, and PPI, Production Price Index, basically our gauges about where we're at in the inflation story and how is that going to look and how is that going to affect the Federal Reserve's positioning, whether we're looking at a March or a May uh, uh, interest rate cut. And so that's where all eyes were this week. And uh, and I can go all, I can go all into it if you want. Well, why don't we jump into it? There were a few talking feds that were very ambiguous that spoke today. Uh, talk about those rates and when do you think they're going to they're going to start cutting them back? OK, so let's get into it. Consumer price index. We saw it earlier in the week. As I said, you know, look, markets really are fascinated by the expectations that the media gives them, right? All mm -hmm. eyes are on CPI. And we are coming down. For me, it's important for us to see where we're coming from. We are coming from an 8% uh, inflation number down to around 3%, okay, which is really quite spectacular. However, all eyes were on this week's number to see the expectations that the world was being given was that for the first time since we've been battling this inflation story that we were going to break 3%. On, they were looking for an expectation of 2.9% inflation. Unfortunately, we came in at 3.1. So that mm -hmm. was a little hotter. I was a little bit of a hotter number. And I love the headline that came out on that day was it said, hot inflation number pours cold water on the market. The reaction to the, the, the reaction to the fact that the expectations were not met made the market overreact in so many different ways. On that day, the number came in at 3.1, not 2.9. Not only was it just a small tenth or two tenths of a percent difference, but it was that psychological threshold of three, uh, of the number three in the number that got everybody upset. Let's be clear. We did this week come into the marketplace and for the first time in history close the S&P 500 above 5,000. That's a major milestone and a major landmark that's significant. These are not just mm -hmm. numbers. These are, these are huge landmarks and milestones. So look, we've been, we've been, we've been teasing and tickling that 5,000 number for a while now, ever since the market has been on this incredible bullish trajectory and we finally close above it. That's significant. That means sure. that there's some really, there's a really good breath to the market. There's a really good breath to the rally. It's not only AI. The Russell is starting to rebound too. So what ends up happening? We we get we close out the market on Monday or Tuesday at a record high across the board, the Dow, the S&P, and the NASDAQ. And then suddenly this CPI number comes out that it does not meet everybody's expectations. And basically it's the old buy the rumor, sell the news mentality on Wall Street. And basically everybody who was in the trade, some legitimate reaction, you know what? It was a two percent, two tenths of a percent uh, under under de uh, delivery from their expectations. I think it was an overreaction. So, but let's. What's important? 
look, I've been around here for a long time. And what I like to do is forensically analyze the way the markets move and, and how they react to economic data and to earnings. What was fascinating about the way the market reacted to it, they sold it off hard. It was across the board sell off. However, on days where the markets are down, these triple digits, 500, 800, 1,000 points, if we close the market on the lows of the day, very often, more times than not, we will see a gap down on the following day and we will see a big follow through on the downside, mm -hmm. on the sell side. We did not see that on Tuesday. It was Tuesday or Wednesday, I can't even remember. We did not see that. At 357 on that day, we were down almost a thousand points. The S&P was down uh, almost 105 handles. And in the last three minutes of trading, the market stopped going down. It reversed and rallied back 35 handles and ended up only closing down 500 on the Dow and about 60 handles down on the S&P. That is so for some people who don't understand it, that may just be not that big a deal. But for people like myself who analyze these things in a forensic way, that was a major reversal. That meant that there were enough people that there was what we in the old days used to call there was a bid in the market. People found mm -hmm. a level where they did not, they were not bailing on the market. They felt that this was enough of a pullback, that they were part of it was short covering from the day. And part of it were people who felt, you know what? I, I, this news is not that significant. The initial reaction in the morning was an overreaction and they started to buy the market. And in the last three minutes of trading, we bought the market back. We, get, we took back almost a third or more of the losses of the day. And that was a significant uh, uh, buyback. And what that mm -hmm. did was it set, it set the stage for the next two days of trading because we did not have, we did not come in the next day and yesterday and today with a negative posture. We came in the market rallied once again and basically the, wool, the bulls were put back to work. Today we came in, the PPI number was once as the CPI was disappointing. We sold off this morning, not, not by any means a overreaction, just a very slight sell side and almost immediately there was a bid again in the market once again and we've now rallied back i'm sort of in a in a, in a cordoned off area so i can't see what the market's doing but we already rallied back so what this all means to me was that yes inflation is a little hotter than we expected some people probably do believe it may affect the positioning and the posturing of the federal reserve uh for mm -hmm. him. right now Right now, I believe it's a 44% chance of an interest rate cut in May. There will not be a cut in March. Is this, is this data in the last couple of days going to affect Jay Powell's uh, positioning and posturing in, in, his, in his attempt to cut interest rates? Maybe, maybe not. There's still a lot of other information that may come out between now and then that may govern how he addresses uh, the cutting of interest rates. But it just shows to me is that there is a bid in the market. There are buyers in the wings and that this that, that there are people who are really interested in buying any kind of a pullback right now in the market. Look, we saw a price target of NVIDIA come out today of twelve hundred and fifty dollars. We've seen a right. number of these other stocks like SMCI stock went from two fifty to over a thousand. We're seeing a lot of the tertiary, secondary and tertiary stocks in the AI space starting to get some traction. We saw the Russell index over the last two days that had sort of been weak for the last two weeks start to get some traction. That means that the breadth of the rally is more significant than we thought. It's just not those seven stocks that are, are carrying the market, that there is a rally in a lot of the mid cap and small cap stocks, and that's significant information. Uh, Peter, do you feel like some of those, you know, the Russell stocks, some of those that have been really kind of lagging behind the, the, uh, the AI stocks, you think they've kind of turned now and are starting to be part of that breath to the upside? You know what? Look, I think the Russell is a fascinating index to uh, to analyze. Look, it's you know the Dow is thirty stocks, the S and P is five hundred stocks, the Russell is two thousand stocks. Right. At the end of twenty twenty, at the end of twenty twenty three, 
we saw the Russell index, which is basically small and mid cap stocks, go from a 52 week low to a 52 week high in the last 46 days of the year. That meant that the breadth of the rally is way more than the magnificent seven. We recently, at the beginning of January, we saw some profit taking. We saw a little bit of the Russell lagging. However, there are a lot of stocks in the, and it was fascinating to me to find out, there are a lot of stocks in the small cap and mid cap who are in the AI space, in the Russell, that are starting to get some traction. And I think for people, I'm not an advisor and I don't recommend stocks ever, but I think it's fascinating right now for people to start buying in the NVIDIAs, the SMCIs, I think they're a little bit long in the tooth. You know, they are very expensive and I, I'm sure people are apprehensive if they haven't dipped their toe in them in that space yet. It's a hard place to really put your money to work at $750 up from 108 in NVIDIA right. and up from 60 to 1,000 in the other ones. But there are some stocks, it turns out, I saw yesterday that NVIDIA has it invested in uh, Sound Mound. That's a, a cheap stock in the AI space. They had put money to work in ARM, right, which has also seen a lot of uh, bullish sentiment over the last number of weeks. It went from, it, it IPO'd in September at 50 something. It went down to 35. It was sort of the dog of 2023. And in the last three weeks, the stock has quadrupled in value. And it turns out that NVIDIA had bought so, had, had invested in ARM. And so, you know, look, for me, it's fascinating to watch. Sometimes when you've got stocks that are, are really overbought and has everybody's eyes and it's a sector that's hot, it's important for responsible and experienced investors and for retail investors too, to look into some of the smaller cap and mid cap stocks in the same sector that are $7 stocks, $10 stocks, $20 stocks, that may be diamonds in the rough in that sector that may be a better, a more reasonable place to invest in than buying stocks sure. that are trading at way inflated record highs. Uh, Peter, I know you've got a, a limited amount of time. Can I ask you one more question? Absolutely. So you've been kind of, uh, you know, we've been watching stocks and everybody's been watching stocks. And every time that the, the, that the market breaks, there are buyers underneath this market. Every break seems to get bought, seems to get bought, seems to get bought. You mentioned a little bit earlier that you think that there's still a lot of money on the sidelines out there. How much further do you think that the S&P or the Dow or the NASDAQ can go before we're going to, before we're going to kind of, end up with that situation where everybody's already long and there's nobody left to buy it. You know what? I look, I, I, I hate to predict because I can only be wrong. Right. So I don't I don't predict rallies and I don't predict sell offs. I think that there the, that, that I think there's plenty of different tranches of people. There's the retail traders. There's look, I think it's a fascinating thing to to, to address sure. is that right. during COVID during COVID we had 40 million new people come into the market. A lot of them, a majority of them, got 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 smacked in the head by a two by four because a majority of them were not not had no education in how to trade the market. I think some of them made some money, but a majority of them got hurt pretty badly. And they kind of walked away with their tail between their legs and left the market because they had not been given the playbook like we do at Wall Street Global Trading Academy to teach people technical analysis and risk management. I think we're starting to see some of those people come back into the market now. Those who had gotten hurt back during COVID are coming back into the market. There are people with cash on the sidelines. There are people who are afraid of the recession that all of the mm. big people have been touting for a while. They're, they're, look, the media has been telling people that we are up against a recession. There are even people calling for a huge crash in, market in March and April. At the end of the day, there's no bad market. There's just a bad entry into the market. I don't think there will ever run out a time where there won't be somebody to buy this market. I think it's fascinating to note that this week with a number that was as disappointing as the number came out in CPI, it, was only, it, it didn't even last one day and the bid came in the market strong and they've been right. buying the stock market with a vengeance for the last three days. I think that's very telling that there still is a very tight bid in the market. Look, you've been in this business. You know what I mean when there's a bid in the market. That means that there are buyers in the wings at every little bit of a pullback, they're gonna start buying them. They didn't even give it a day to sell off and capitulate on the downside. They started buying it by the end of the day. So I think we, there's, a, there's a, lot of, a lot of buyers in between here and there. 
lots of lots of cash still out there. Well, well, Peter, I know you're you got limited time. I don't want to keep you any longer. Um, thank you very much for joining us and for your wisdom and and everything today. Uh, we look forward to having you back again very very soon. You know what? I I really appreciate it. Uh, look, anybody out there who's interested, I know that Top Step is 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 a great platform. Everyone is out there trying to get into the futures market. And you guys are really one of the, the the top the top step of the top. But what I think it's important for people to note is they still need to learn how to trade. They do need to get the playbook on how to trade using risk management and technical analysis. I am welcome to mentor and coach my, me and my partner, David Green, at Wall Street Global Trading Academy, WSGTA.com. Join us. We have a webinar next Wednesday. It's live. It's free. We'd love you all to come and get the playbook and the memo on how to learn how to trade this market. Use Top Step for your platform. Come and join us for teaching, and we'll all together, we'll make a bunch of money. Sounds great, Peter. And I look forward to one of these days sitting back and uh, telling a bunch of old floor stories with you one of these days. It would be my pleasure. I'd love that, bud. <laughs> All right. Well, we will see you next time. Have a great weekend. Trade well. And uh, we'll be right back with everybody here and, uh, in uh, just a couple of minutes here.
right, welcome back to the, the rest of the Power Players segment. I've got my good friends Andre and Dolby here with me. Thank you all for sticking on, hanging out with us today. Uh, a very interesting session uh, with the uh, the Einstein Einstein of Wall Street, Peter Tuckman. You guys, I'm sure we're listening. What do you think about what he had to say? It's great. Dolby's your bowl. Yeah. I mean, just in, what an incredible opportunity to have him on the show. Insane. You know what I mean? It's just like so much experience, knowledge, him be able to just rattle off all that information from the top of his head. I mean, he is about as in tune with the markets as as you can get. And I also love that he never really makes any predictions. No. You know, you that's how you know he's a true, a true, a, a true trader. You know, no predictions, no, no hot shot calls, nothing like that. He knows how so, dangerous the market is. John, I, I got a question. I, now, we're we're yes. talking about this in the in the waiting room here before we got back on. I actually, did it sound like he said that there's still money on the sidelines? I think that's what kind of what we gather. There's money on the sidelines to take this thing higher. Uh, retails on the sidelines. To, is that is that the, uh, what you gather from that? Yes, and you know, for whatever reasons, you know, he or whatever he's looking at, he believes that there's still a lot of money out there on the sidelines uh, for. Um, you know, continued uh, upside possible continuation. No prediction, of course. And now there was, a, I think it was probably, uh, let me look at the chart here. Let me let me look at the, the, the uh, S&P here. Oh, hang on a second here. Yeah, he was talking about what, uh, the Tuesday Are close or the Monday okay. close or the Tuesday close? He was talking about the, the Tuesday close. So, yeah, he was talking about, and and we've we've known this. I mean, Andre yeah. Dolby, we've been talking about the fact that every time this market breaks, it gets bought back up, right? Chart. That so, chart. and that's exactly what happened on Tuesday. This is the daily chart. This was the CPI day right here. The market opened, it broke, traded right to the previous day, previous week's low, and then closed back above the weekly kickoff level. That pullback off that low was what Peter was talking about and saying that, you know, there were buyers sitting down there waiting for the opportunity to buy a pullback. And we've seen that over and over again. I started hearing that uh, back when we were in this consolidation here, that the, that the, that the investors, including banks, funds, um, pension funds, all those, they were underinvested in the S&P. They were underinvested in stocks and they were looking for some sort of a pullback with which to 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 pick up some some bargains and that's when yeah. we were in this consolidation and again this is the daily s p chart uh this month-long consolidation actually ended up probably giving them the opportunity to start to begin to invest and then we see that the market has continued to push higher and higher and i think what peter is talking about more is the individual investor maybe some of your deeper pockets investors are looking more towards some of your mid cap and small cap stocks. So not only is the rally being driven by the Magnificent Seven and AI, now some of the laggard stocks, some of the smaller mid cap and small cap stocks are looking more, uh, um, more, what is it? What is it I'm looking for? M more attractive for smaller individual traders. So he's you kind of mentioned that, you know, we're seeing that the the Russell, you know, went from a 32 week low, a 52 week low back in October. No, here, let me make this big. Yep. This is what he was saying. So it, for, wow. back in October it was at a 52 week low. By the end of the year, it was at a 52 week high. So he's wow. saying that is part of the breadth of the overall stock market that is driving prices higher overall, the S and P, the Dow, the, the Nasdaq, the Russell is two thousand mid and small cap stocks, and they've become a lot more um, attractive to, to to smaller investments. It's you know it costs a, you you got to buy a lot of stock at seven hundred and fifty bucks if you're going to make any money on that movement you're probably looking to some smaller investments, some smaller stocks that you can get, uh, you know, a larger number of. And if they do move, then you're going to make your money on that. It's, you know, it's, it's inhibitive at the, at the price of some of these stocks. I mean, you know, this is just, uh, 
Wait, that's the wrong one here. I've got some of those stocks, some of the Magnificent Seven up here on this. So Microsoft, $406. NVIDIA, $726. I guess the, the expectation is $1,200. But if you're going to buy it at $726, think about the risk on that. If you know, you always have to think about the risk, of course. But you know, what are you going to make? How many are you going to be able to buy at seven hundred twenty-six dollars? If you can buy a stock for twenty for seven dollars, you're going to buy a whole a whole lot more stock. And if you get the movement in it, you're going to make more money on that. And that's kind of like the trickle trickle down effect, right? Of Nvidia and like SMCI. It's like people don't want to pay, you know, high three figures for a stock. So they'll go find maybe the second, third, fourth, fifth, fifth sixth, seventh, eighth best thing they can find, even if maybe the underlying stuff is maybe a little bit more questionable compared to like NVIDIA, which is like, you know, kind of a blue chip, you know, production guy. But I've missed all the AI stuff. I missed all of it. Huh. I know. I know. Let me tell you about the things I've missed. <laughs> I get about Apple. When it when it when it you know first came out, I could have bought uh, Microsoft when it first came out. I could have bought Starbucks when it first came out. I could have bought any of them. I was too busy having fun, learning how to trade, bartending, and partying to worry about that. And he, my dear old dad warned me. He says, "You know, you should take ten percent of everything you make and just start investing in things that you use every day and yeah. things that." Are, are going to change things in the future. And he was dead right, but did I listen? No, and by the time I started thinking about that stuff, it seemed like the the move was already over. So, uh, and you know, as far as Bitcoin's concerned, I see folks in the chat talking about Bitcoin. Well, part of the reason that I wouldn't buy Microsoft or I wouldn't buy Apple was because I've always been very distrustful of technology. That's a personal thing. It's, you know, you, how much has that cost me? Who even knows? I try not to even think about it. And Bitcoin is one of those technologies that, you know, I, I don't, I didn't really understand at first. I didn't really think about it. I remember the first time I, th I heard about Bitcoin, I was talking to somebody who was a trader at Top Step when we were still officing on the trading floor. So we're talking 19, or excuse me, 2011, 2012. And he said, you know, he made like 50 grand in Bitcoin. I'm like, what the hell is Bitcoin? He says, it's a, you know, it's a, it's a digital currency. I'm like, I don't even know what that means. And he's like, yeah, I had 50 grand in it. And then I, I held on to it and it all went away. So I'm like, well, you know, first off, what the heck is a digital currency? What's blockchain? What's all this stuff? So I educated myself a little bit on it. But again, so kind of distrustful of it. And that's cost me a lot. Well, I think it's, it's hard too, because we talk about this in, in futures all the time. It's how hard it is to, you know, buy on an uptrend or, or buy yes. a high. And it's it's no different with Bitcoin, NVIDIA, you know, maybe Facebook back in the day. It always looks too expensive until it's, you mm -hmm. know, it doubles in price. You just kind of have to what have have faith. I mean, I don't, I don't even know. Believe in the underlying. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. The technology, uh, the blockchain right. technology is probably solid. <laughs> In terms point, of like the Dogecoins, point point. Trey? Yeah, I mean, I yeah. don't know. It's it's why I always sit on the sidelines with with so much stuff. I mean, I wish I was a better a better investor, but it's it's. I think it's hard to uh, get into something early because it's not quite vetted yet, and then by the time you wait, it's too expensive. It's just it's so hard. Trading is hard. Investing is hard. <laughs> what is what's the saying, John? Hardest way to make an easy buck. Yeah, the, the hardest way to make an easy dollar. Easy to right? yeah. sure, yeah, sure so, is. As far as investing is concerned, I got my head straight at one point, but I don't make a lot of the decisions. I have somebody that I that I trust, that my family trusts, yep. that mm -hmm. manages a lot of that. And you know, I we talk once in a while, and and uh, you know, I I'll make suggestions. You know, what about you know getting into some hard assets like gold and silver? He'll move stuff around for me, and you know, I, investment wise, you know, we're, we're fine. We're fine. I don't make a lot of those decisions. I'm just, I don't, you know, I'm not smart enough, and and I try not to even look at it. The only time I look at my 401k and those investments is when we're, when we're at all time highs. Highs, nice, John. Me too, dude. <laughs> That's the only time I look. All time highs. Really, uh -huh. I had to do a password reset for my 401k. So clearly, I'm a little bit behind the times here. 
<laughs> so, <laughs> well, I know, like, I know well, some people when it comes to that stuff, it's like, uh, you know, buy what you know or buy what you use. I feel like there's a really famous kind of a uh, big investor who used to say that just go to the mall and see what you see what you like. What are you wearing? What devices are you using? Where do you eat? I mean, listen, for as much as I talk about Chipotle, I own zero Chipotle. And the last time I looked at Chipotle, it was like a four figure stock. Yeah. And I was like, there's no way this company that just sell beans and rice is worth four oh, figure. Four billion dollars. Taco Kids stand. Love it, though. Four billion dollar taco stand. Yeah, let's see. Where's it, where's it at right now? Oh, just a, a casual 2600 for sure. What? Yeah, that's what, I, that's what I said. Chipotle? Yeah, they, sell, they sell beans and rice, and they're trading at 2600 Wow. Time Chipotle for a split, insane. guys. Yeah. That's going to cost you. That's 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 when you buy those stocks when they're that expensive. When they when they when they do a split, that's why they do. And you can you know they do a four way split or something. You can buy it for a quarter of that price. But if if Chipotle is really twenty six hundred dollars, yeah, I looked it up. I looked it up. They were they got started in what oh six, so what eighteen years. They were trading at like twenty five or thirty, and now they're at twenty six hundred. I just okay. Isn't that okay, a, yeah. isn't the isn't the parrot company Starbucks in that? It used to be McDonald's. Oh no, that was McDonald's. That's Pop- that was McDonald's. But they it was Pop- Pop- or something. Yeah, yeah. Potbellies was a is a Starbucks uh, that startup. Was huge but for a while. It was the original Potbellies was just a one off store. It was on Lincoln Avenue. We used to go there all the time. It was yep. just a single yep. owner. His lease was coming up. The, the 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 people from Starbucks went into his store and said, "We like your concept. We want to buy it from you." He was going to pretty much retire, and he was going to lose his his lease anyway. So he sold him the concept for a million dollars for oh no, for oh no, oh no, oh no, oh no, oh god, oh a no. million dollars. Yeah, that's uh, sure felt like a lot of money at the time though. Yeah, I'm sure it did. And he was, he was retiring anyway. You know, he'd sold enough sandwiches, I guess. And Probably. He was gonna, it, I mean, that bought him his that boat, a, you know. That was a million dollars, what, like over 20 years ago? So that's, what, if inflation adjusted? I'm sure they're doing just fine. Just fine. Well, yeah, I mean, as long as he invested it. But if he oh, spent it on a $900,000 boat, he's screwed. Yeah, that's true. Go be there, um. The chat is enamored with what you're wearing, Dolby. Can we it's talk about it real a, quick? Yeah, it's a purple <laughs> blanket. I bought a purple mattress, and they gave me a, a free purple blanket. That was it. It's actually really warm, and it's like extra, extra big, so you can fit. Is like, it really a blanket, a, it, <laughs> John? Yeah, yeah. It, it looks like a cardigan. No, yeah, a cardi or a cape huge. or a. No, it's like a queen size blanket. It's massive. Look at this thing. I got like wings. It's awesome. <laughs> it's like a squirrel suit. Uh, I don't know. chat, chat. That is obsessed right fun. now. Yeah. All right, good. I love so, it. Uh, John, did you get out of that short? Yeah, no, I'm yeah. I'm leading the leading the thing, and and I gotta get out of it. It, it wasn't so, going anywhere, anyways. Seems like we're gonna be sideways here for for a little bit uh, for the lunchtime trade. Then maybe pick up. Oh, did um, did Fed speaker? Who do we have? Did Daily say anything? I haven't seen anything come across the wire yet. Folks, uh, at the top of the chat, there is the link for group coaching. Send me your questions. I will do my best to answer them. I do not know everything. Nobody does. But I always enjoy those sessions. I learn a lot from you. Just send in your questions. There are no bad ones. There are no bad questions. Only the one you don't answer. And we say that all the time. I know, but it's true. (laughs) And I look forward to seeing you there. Um, So I'm going to try that. Trading in a blanket. Yeah, yeah it's, my, Dol- it's my victory blanket. Mm-hmm. Uh, how have you been trained, Dolby? Oh, Andre, it was so good. Everyone's, everyone's favorite new Nasdaq trader. How's it? How's it going? So good. What we had a really, really good long at. Uh, nice. Hold on, let me get it. I was long seventeen thousand nine one six. No, hold on, we have a better one than that. Is that it? No, I got. I thought I got long. Um, 17,750. I got to have that okay. trade on here somewhere. 742? 
that look right? Yeah, no, I had seven forty twos. Yep, I had seven forty twos and sold at eight oh three. Damn. For like for twelve hundred. So nice. yeah, five minute. Yeah, five minute range. Um, on the on the Nasdaq, and then just a little buy order right below the five minute range, and then got filled and took it for some profit. Probably could have held it all day, and it's just like rolling. But it was, it was a really good, really good trade. That's a yeah. Dolby Time special. Yeah, and then I messed around with that second five minute range at like ten o'clock, yep. like nine fifty, and then I, yeah. that was like me, kind of mediocre. But I did end up getting a long that did really well. That took me up to like VWAP, which is like kind of where we're at right now. Yep. I know VWAP. Everyone kind of gets triggered when VWAP isn't like the exact thing that they see on their chart. But I have it as <laughs> right. sixty two evens approximately. It's always a zone. So. It's, nothing's yeah. finite. Everything's a zone. Yeah, I mean, what's a couple points between friends? So <laughs> yeah, some some good uh some good trades. I'm I'm glad that the uh that that long worked out. I thought it was very very low risk, long to be honest, because it was starting to range a little bit. And what was mm -hmm. interesting is that I like I like ranges in general. And when we first started the Nasdaq session, I went through the daily four hour, one hour, 30 minute, 15 and five minute. Wow. And at one point in time, not a single one of those was range bound, not one. Huh. And it wasn't until I went all the way down to the one minute that we finally started getting a little bit of like range bound consolidation around like, let's say like 930. And then I switched uh -huh. over to the five minute. And then I finally started to see the shape that I wanted kind of take place. And so then I got into that long and it worked out uh, really, really well. Really well. so what was the shape the five minute it, because it didn't make another new low yeah i mean just like you guys call it barcoding range yep. bound consolidations i know some people don't like trading that stuff but i actually really really enjoy that setup we're actually in a five minute range right now yes, we are. and kind of like what i want to do typically is take like the largest time frame so I'd probably daily and see if that's range bound because then those levels are really really good so this happens in a crude kind of frequently because it's not a super volatile market most of the time that you can get like range bound days in crude and like you don't want to get chopped up in the middle at all. So just find the range and then plot those levels and then try to trade around those because mm -hmm. typically you'll get like the best response from the market because you're playing a daily range. And so you get a little Fading bit more extremes. action. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. But I, I like range bound trades. So even like in NASDAQ right now, you know, I think anything above like between like 42 evens and say like 54, you know, just all those little stops and stuff are all are all right down there. So, you know, I just try to see like who's who are the happiest traders of the day and then see who are the weakest ones of the day. And typically the, the difference between the happiest trader and like the most scared trader is just one is one tick. Right. So yeah. if you bought uh you know <laughs> the lows of the nasdaq today at what say 17 evens or 17 a quarter that's a very very happy long but the person who has a order a short order below it or a stop below that is utter utterly terrified and so the difference between complete confidence and you know being scared poopless is is basically just one tick in my opinion agree so i just yeah i just try to use a little bit of psychology, a little bit of shapes, and uh, make a trade. But my 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 discipline is not good. Like my risk management is terrible, terrible. It's so bad, so bad. But I'm not in a trading combine, so it's hard. You know what I mean? I just want to smash yeah. the reset button every time. So right. You know, once we get a practice account on top setbacks, then I'll actually try to like pass one, pass one, because I can manage risk while still trying to be like entertaining. So then I can just throw a bunch of trades on the practice account and have fun and get reps. So that's the goal. Got to wait. Casey, Casey, are you listening? I would love. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he's slammed right now. But I would love a practice account in top setbacks. He's like, today's not the day, Dolby. Today's not the day. Absolutely not the day. Absolutely not the day. Uh, but yes, behind the scenes, everyone just you know, we're bu everyone's busting their ass trying to make uh top step X right. We will make you guys whole, so yeah, I think we're starting Buyer, to get close to this. But yeah, 100%. Your customer service rep today because they're they're probably in the weeds, if I had to guess. Yep, any anytime trade of eight has a little snafu, it's uh, the sirens go oh. off at customer service. So, Dolby, got a question for you. Is it safe to say you are now a full time NASDAQ trader and you've left crude in the dust no, in the rear view mirror? No, 
No. Okay. You could have no. fooled me. Come on. You could have Come fooled on. me. Come on. Okay. How many, how, how, many oil, how many oil trays have you made today? Zero. Mm, how many NASDAQ trays have you made today? Whole bunch. <laughs> Whole bunch. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because, well, I mean, You're a NASDAQ I mean, trainer. Uh, well, Thank you, John. I mean, crude oil wasn't doing anything, and NASDAQ was ripping to the oh. downside. Like, mm -hmm. what? CL mm -hmm. was, what was their range? 78 to 77.20? What, 80 cent range? While NASDAQ was just like dropping off a cliff. So yeah, I decided to trade that one. I mean, that's not a huge range, but it's doing good now. But what? Oh, we're kind of at highs actually. I haven't looked at crude oil in a while. Uh oh, yeah. it's it's Take breaking out of that, breaking out of that trend line. It is. Yeah. Let's go to the daily. See, like I think crude is in a daily consolidation right now. Actually. Mm -hmm. Right, so between about 76 and let's say 78.50. I mean, we've been in that for almost four or five days, so I would consider mm -hmm. that a daily range. So if you could, you know, I try to trade bigger levels if I can, because bigger levels, bigger time frames, you get better action, more follow through versus say like a five minute or a one minute. So I think I think we have a lot of traders to do that though. They they start you know they go macro. They want to start like the weekly, go down to daily, then hourly, half hour, and then you know you slowly draw your levels down. Maybe label your charts with the hot zones or hot levels, and then uh, you know execute your trading plan. Well, here's what I'm looking at: uh, Dolby and crude. If you want to go to my charts? Here's that daily chart. We have. Triangle formation, pendant formation, whatever you want. Yeah. Now, I, I've seen, I think we've seen over and over again when there's a convergence between a weekly, weekly kickoff and a trend line like this, there's a tendency for things to change. And it, even though it is still rollover and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not necessarily believing that this is any kind of potential huge breakout, which now that I've said that, the market likes to make a liar out of me. This might end up being a huge breakout, but that's what we're looking at here is, you know, we've we've tested one, two, three times up against weekly kickoff high, tested this trend line all three of those days. Now it looks like we're starting to build some volume. It's still rollover. The volume is a little bit blurry, but, you know, on the 30 minute chart, this looks like it could be, it could go all the way. <laughs> look how look yeah. how look how magnetic weekly kickoff has been during rollover. Magnet, 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 magnet. Now finally we're starting to see a potential substantial breakout. Last ditch effort is up against this high, these highs here. And we may see the buyers really come after this market. I don't know. Not predicting, just saying what I'm seeing here on the charts. Oh, I mean, I'm not super interested in, in taking shorts and crude oil. Also, I've not been paying a ton of attention to it. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I don't really know what's driving crude oil right now, to be honest. I think there's a lot of like weird geopolitical stuff going on. And that's, I don't think, I think it's been yeah. very hard for a lot of recent CL traders. You know, you mm -hmm. have Twitter on, on Hamas. You have, you know, China with their production or lack thereof. So that's an impact crude oil prices. You have geopolitical events are we going to war yeah, are we not going to war it's There's geopolitical going on. versus lack of demand geopolitical lack Ooh. of demand geopolitical yeah. lack of demand geopolitical lack of demand you yep. need some sort of change in demand i think to really change it what would or, change that yeah. what would well, change the demand Summer? hopefully something really good in the middle east would would change things dramatically yep and then we'd cool. see volatility kick up but it'd probably drop oil down which we would all enjoy i don't think any of us want to pay higher gas prices or higher anything prices because oil is in pretty much damn near everything so yes. it's you know it's kind of a catch-22 it's like yeah i want crude oil to go up because i'm long but at the same time you're going to pay for it at the pump dudes we could sit here yes. and chit chat all day long but it is time yeah. for the uh top quiz so Ooh, we're going to have good. to call this a session uh G, uh, Dolby, I think I made uh, me on Monday follow your lead and be Hogan a blanket. And try Hogan and trade a blanket, that way. yeah, I like that. Yeah, be a Hogan like a blanket. Um, and, uh, you know, I know you're, we're going to see you here again, uh, Andre and Dolby yeah. for 
the end of the day power hour. Looking forward to that. And uh, so let's call this a session. Do you guys have anything else you want to mention? Yeah, one second. I just want to say, uh, when we into, I want to make sure. I don't, I'm not sure that we're totally ready for top quiz just yet. I just got word that we might still be working on some, uh, you know, some loose ends there. But uh, oh, okay, you know, if we're trained sideways here around settle, John, there's no trades to be made, correct? I, I mean, in the S and P's, I just we're, we're we're barcoding around settlement, so it's basically we got to pick a direction for one higher or, or we positive or negative on day. In terms of, like looking for a trade, I'm I'm in comeback mode right now, so obviously yeah, I'm if, trying to I'm, I'm trying to make a if trade I'm here. Be- if I'm going to be taking a traded settlement, it better go my way right away. It's not. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. All right. So just right sit now, on your hands. And, uh, yeah, we're just we're shopping around VWAP here in the uh, NASDAQ as well. So mm-hmm. Maybe a second half move. It might be his power so, hour, Dolby. Are you excited for power, power hour? hour maybe. I'm thrilled. I still have to make – I have $1,500 that I'm trying to make still. So okay. I'm up 3000 I want to get the extra 1500 to reach that 4500 mark. Um, so we're going to try to do that during power hours, see what we can get, but I'm going to start up a practice account as well. So I can have, have fun in the practice account. So I can actually like maintain like a real, a real balance this time. That's the goal. That's the goal. Are we ready for a uh, top quiz? Are we still, uh, don't still bl- I don't believe so. Like yeah. Doesn't, okay. All right. Cool. 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 We can cool. hang out here for the next 15 minutes. That's cool. Right. That sounds like fun. Uh, we got yeah, some daily, we got some, we got some daily, uh, comments coming out here. Remarkable progress on inflation is not victory. There's more work to do on inflation. The Fed needs to resist temptation to act quickly when patience is needed. Thank you, Daly. Of course, there's more work to do on inflation. <laughs> They've been on fire today, John. <laughs> right? It's, you know, a whole lot of nothing. Yeah. So, yeah. not much of. I'm a- going to be on with uh, Anne Marie next week, solo, just her and I. Little, uh, little date. Okay. Little market date. Oh, you're not invited to that one. Sorry. I'm jealous, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm supposed to be on with Anne Marie. Me and Anne Marie just chopping it up. Well, I do I do, do some of the scheduling, so that might have been my dad. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's kind of the advantage of doing a scheduling. It's like, oh, I get to uh, pick who I want to hang out with today. But I haven't hung out with Anne Marie. It's not fair. You get to hang out no, with no, her it's good. Time, no, it's good. All the time. You gotta mix it up. Yeah, you're gonna have a blast. You're gonna learn a lot. I am. I am gonna learn a lot. I'm looking forward to it. Actually, I'm. Ho- I'm wondering if we can do something similar to what we did with uh, Coach Ray when we mm. had him on. He kind of coached me through a trade a while ago. So uh-huh. I think that's kind of cool. Like, oh, that was you know, cool. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I can yeah, be like the, cool. the, the vessel in which chat can kind of, uh, you know, learn learn with me because I've been to the trading combine a bunch, so. You know, I, I kind of know what Chad is up to as far as what kind of questions they may or may not want. So, so looking forward to that. It should be fun. Oh, there's Real Jack. quick update here. And Brooke, be careful because you are live now as well. Um, <laughs> I don't know if we're going to be able to do a quiz today. Um, Uh-oh. My old partner and nemesis, Kahoot. One second. Never mind. No way. James got it. All no right. way, James. In the so you clutch, guys can James. Sign out. I think wow. we got it. Now they're kicking us out. First, we were saving them. Now they're kicking us off. <laughs> Dolby. <laughs> yeah, no good uh-huh. deed goes unpunished. That's fine. We'll be back. We'll be back. <laughs> okay, Say right, goodbye, good boys. Goodbye. Later, ah. boys. Good job. Good job. Good luck, bro. Good luck. Uh, Enjoy Jack. the quiz. Enjoy the yeah. quiz, everybody. We'll see you Bye-bye. shortly.
everybody. Welcome to Top Quiz uh, Drama Behind the Scenes Edition. I think we have Kahoot working. It's going to be a little bit different today because James is going to be controlling the questions while I prompt them. Apologies in advance, Brooke, that you walked in on that, but welcome to the show. No worries. Awesome. Happy Friday. Happy Friday to you, too. I am excited about this weekend for a number of reasons, but I'll keep them to myself for now. Uh, I think this is going to be a good quiz today. As I told you before, Brooke, the questions today, sans one, are from Coach Robert. So all you Coach Ooh. Robert stands unite. And if you don't like the questions, that's Coach Robert. Also, uh, I uh, would recommend you don't have to post things over and over again in the chat to get my attention, but it's Friday. So today it'll be four multiple choice questions. If you get three or four right, you enter a raffle for one of 50 free resets. Five of those will go to the top five. So if you answer quick, that's you. And where do you answer quick? On your device. Once you click that link and join as close to 900 of you have. So it seems that Kahoot is working. Brooke, how confident are you feeling today? Uh, I mean, I, I feel confident about the one, right? You, you kind of already told me that that there may be a, a little bit of a yes. layup in here. Uh, but yeah, it, interested to see what, what, what Robert's thrown at us. It, it will be. I think you're going to be able to pick out which question is not from Coach Robert. <laughs> we will see. All right. Well, we're running a little bit behind. So we're going to get started James, as soon as you want to click that start button, <laughs> you, you can do it. There you go. Kahoot, top quiz. I have my in-laws dog barking at my dog in the background. Okay. Out of these instruments, which has the highest tick value? Is it silver, live cattle, Soybean oil futures or corn futures? All CME products. You know the top set product. You got any guesses? I will wait uh, till we die down. I'm going to go silver triangle. You are 100% correct. For the record, the tick values are silver 25 bucks, live cattle 10, soybean oil 6, corn 12 and a half. Brooke, you are off to a tremendous start. Let's Good see start. if we can. Yeah. We'll get you a bobblehead of your choice if you get all four. It does right, not have to but... be the bull, okay? Just <laughs> or listen. Well, we'll see. On the board, Kia, Connie, uh, Lanus, and Permu. Okay, cool. Doing well so far. And uh, let's go to the next question. How many times has February 29th occurred since January 1st, 1900? 87, 30 times, 43 times, or 51 times? Yes, this is a Robert question. This is a Robert question. I was getting ready to say, yeah, this, this, is, this has Robert written all over it. Um, I'm going to go 30. Somebody knows how to multiply by four. I think Robert was too kind here. You could have made this question real hard by putting numbers closer to 30. But yes, the answer is 30. Um, comments, does Kahoot have a problem? We'll see. But for now, let's see the leaderboard. Two for two. More run. <laughs> sure. First place and third place, Hey, Hey, Hey is here. These are nice names today. I don't get my usual, maybe there is a Kahoot problem because I don't get my usual heckling here. Um, so Brooke, you're two for two right now. I think you're going to get the last question. So it kind of comes down to this next one. Okay. So are we ready to go? Let's go. Let's rock and roll. The term MOC means... Method of characteristics, market on close, management of chain, change or margin of control in the trading sense, Brooke. Oh, these are all these are all valid choices, man. Uh, <laughs> I'll go blue. Market on close. Hell yeah! Oh yes, you're right. Oh my goodness. I think that this last question. We'll, we'll see the leaders first, but I think this is just going to be a. 
uh, victory lap for you here. Cahal. Oh, there's Jax oh, Cornhole. Here we go. All they right. Come back. <laughs> All right. All right. Whatever. Pump and dump. Governor of FOMO and uh, Mert MJ we've seen a few times up here. So, Brooke, you're three for three. We have oh, one yeah. final question left that we will get to write about now, James. <laughs> the anticipation. Which of these was not a popular 90s boy band? Backstreet Boys, In Sync, 97 Degrees, or LFO? Brooke. Are you confused because of the time? They're all boy bands. Um, one of these, one of these is not a one of these is oh, not a boy band, Brooke. 90. It's not 97 degrees. It's no, 98, it's 98 degrees. degrees. Oh, man. Oh, oh no. Close. This, oh. Is, this is why it's so hard to achieve the bobblehead. Degrees, 96 degrees. Brooke, Blew it on the last as time. we take a look at the, the leaderboard here, uh, Dannon, single print, and who's the winner today? Probably my cornhole. Oh, thank God. Kahal. Oh, Chop. Chahal. And then uh, Tick Tracy and something I can't read. We're in fourth and fifth. Anyway, Brooke, you killed it today. That was an impressive effort. We'd well, love to have you. you back whenever. I would love to come back. I guess now I have to go listen to some 96, 97, 98 <laughs> degrees. Yeah, I haven't thought of them in a while. Uh, please. Stick around because coming up, we have group coaching with Hogue. We have, once I do this correctly, so we got group coaching with Hogue. We got Robert and Emery. We got Dolby and Danny Trades and Andre coming in the play for Power Hour to finish off the week. Stick around. We'll be back right after this. If I don't see you, have a lovely weekend. Bye. All.
Good afternoon, friends and traders. Welcome back to Group Coaching. It is uh, the 12 o'clock hour, just after 12 o'clock Central Time, the noon lunchtime hours. Uh, we've got your questions. We had the form pinned in the chat for a couple of hours today. We let that marinate, and we got some good questions from you, as usual. Again, we will try to get through all of them. If we don't, maybe we'll get to some next week. Join here today. I am JD with the GOAT, Mr. Hogue. How are you doing today, Hogue? <laughs> I'm doing okay. It's good to see you, JD. Happy Friday. Happy Friday to you. You haven't had a break yet today, have you? I think you've been on TV since we started. Am I correct? Yeah, yeah. And you know, it's okay. I love what I do. This is great. And we love the way you do it, too. Thanks, Hogue. Here's Hogue, Senior Performance Coach. Yes, uh, it's February, so that's 41 years now of futures industry experience. I traded on the floor of the Mercantile Exchange for 20 years, migrated to screen trading 2009, and since 2011, it has been my pleasure to be here with all of you here at Top Step. And uh, let's get into the questions. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this screen so we can at least watch the markets while this is going on. We got the S&Ps and the NASDAQ coming off those highs. And uh, we'll see how this plays out uh, during the session. But, J.D., thanks, as always, for joining me for this session. And uh, we're ready for the questions whenever you are. Excellent. I'm always happy to be here with you, too, Hogue. Before we get started, we've got a couple standout traders that we want to mention. Thanks a lot to the risk team for shooting these over to us. Uh, Mr. Brett from our risk department, uh, always diligent on finding the best traders of the day. Uh, first one, first shout out to Shi Soon in the live funded account up $6,000 today. And then Nicholas T, a name that we've been seeing quite a bit of lately, uh, also in the live funded account up 4600 today. Some big numbers coming out of our live funded traders today. Pretty excellent. Nice stuff. work, folks. All right, into the questions now. First question comes from JPK. JPK wants to know, what is your opinion on the use of multiple accounts and the use of a trade copier across multiple accounts? In the real world, a trader typically operates with one account and trades are not copied. Additionally, what are your thoughts on presenting results based on the aggregated outcome of these multiple accounts? Such results are not achieved by novice traders when they trade on a single account with real money and a realistic position size. These practices can provide a misleading portrayal of how the financial markets truly operate. Interesting question from JPK. What do you think, Og? It's a very interesting question. Uh, personally, I am not a fan of trading multiple accounts. I can I can understand, you know, two, uh, maybe three, but twenty. That's a little crazy. And I agree. In the in the real world. You know, a, a person who has 20 accounts and makes $100 isn't going to view that as $100. They're going to view that as as $2,000. And that's wonderful if it's profitable. But if you lose $100 across 20 accounts, that's, 20, that's a $2,000 loss. In the real world, that is not going to be uh, beneficial, I guess, again, for everyone. Um, so I am not a fan. I don't extrapolate. I trade one account. Well, I may have two Two accounts, but there, there's a reason for two accounts. One of the accounts might be a longer time frame trade, more one more that I'm trading longer time frame opportunities or even swing trades, and then there's the day time frame trading that might that I might do in in another account. But I'm not a fan, you know. I I, I firmly stand by the 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 thought that if you can't trade one, you can't trade twenty. And in essence, when you trade one contract on one account and you have 19 copying that, you're trading a 20 lot. And, uh, you know, I don't think that most people, um, especially retail traders, have the experience and the mental capital, the, the mental capital to, to be trading 20 lots. So I'm, you know, I'm with you, JPK. I think that it is a misleading um, thing uh, for for people to be trading 20, 20, 20 accounts, uh, because the risk is the same. If it's a, tw if it's 20 accounts in a one lot, it's still, it's still a 20 lot. And again, most people, even myself included, I don't trade 20 lots. I've been doing this for 35 years. 
I don't trade 20 lots. I never really was much of a big trader. And I don't, I don't feel as though you have to trade big to be a, a good, profitable trader. I don't think you have to trade big. So, you know, JPK, I agree. It's a, it's misleading. Uh, and, and, uh, and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not a fan. I don't know what else to really say about that. I know that there are companies out there that will give you 20 accounts and let you trade copy across all of them. And, you know, if things don't go well, you're losing 20 times as much. If you want to be a 20 lot trader, build yourself up in one account, start trading one, trade well, add another contract, 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 trade well until you get up to a level of account balance and skill and mental toughness to be able to trade a 20 lot. It, it, it is a, it is something that is, that is learned and, and some people, you know, don't, aren't comfortable trading that kind of size. And if you're thinking you're only trading a one lot across 20 accounts, you're trading a 20 lot. It's a, it's a, it is a diff, it is a difficult thing to get your head wrapped around. Um, it reminds me, I was a, I was a one lot trader in the S and P, but I got one hand up. I've got a bid, uh, or an offer. I think it was an offer. And a broker looks at me and says, buy five and turns around. And I'm trying to say, Hey, I only want one. I only want one. And you know, he, and, you know, they're, they're, they don't, the brokers aren't, they're not going to care. They're like, yeah, you had your hand up. I bought five deal with it. Well, it turned out to be a good trade. So of course, some of the other locals around me saw that I was freaking that I had a five lot on. So I gave, you know, four of them away and it ended up being a really good trade. They were like, you know, yeah, I'll take one. I'll take one. So I gave four of them away Had a good trade. Uh, but it was, you know, two years before I was actually comfortable taking a five lot in the S and P pit. Now, remind, now, mind you, these were big S and P's. This was 25 minis. Uh, but it was something I had to work my way up to. And the, the the prop firm that I was at, they wanted me to trade bigger all the time. Trade bigger, trade bigger, trade bigger, trade bigger. I'm like, I my my heart's gonna explode if I try and trade bigger. So we had a we had a difference of opinion on that. And uh, so most people aren't prepared, aren't um, capable of trading twenty contracts. And a, a one lot across twenty accounts is a twenty lot. Get, get to be a good trader a little bit at a time. It, it, it's, it's, it's ridiculous to me that, uh, that that's even a thing these days. Um, that's my thought. JD, thank you. <laughs> a lot of people in the chat are agreeing with you too. Even Roy Jenkins is in here saying a 20 lot would give him a coronary. Right. Right. I remember <laughs> I got that five lot on and you know, I'm, I'm standing there with my stack of trading cards and I, I go, he goes five. I go, Oh, I can't even write down the trade. I'm shaking so much. It was, it was, you know, it was a lot of risk for a, for a one lot trader. I'm trying to write down five. I'm like, oh my God, my hands are shaking. I think I dropped my pen and the, paper, the card and everybody, you know, they saw it was a good trade. So I'll take one. Uh, all right, I'll buy one, buy one. I give for four away before I could even try and sit, try and get, get the trade written down. It, it, it's, you know, that's just me. I'm, I'm kind of risk averse and, um, and, uh, you know, that's, that's paid as far as risk management is concerned. Maybe it's cost me as far as some bigger profits are concerned, but I'm more interested in the consistency of profit than the size of profit. Makes perfect uh, sense. Thanks. Hope. Appreciate yeah, it. Elvis is saying, explain what a big S and P is a big S and P is five times the, the, the risk transfer. So like the E mini S and P you take the, you take the price of it times 50. That's the nominal amount of money that you are holding in your position. The big S and P at that time was, uh, well, it was, uh, five, I think it was 500 at that time. So you're multiplying that 50 by 10, you're multiplying it by 500. They, they actually ended up cutting the, contract in half. So the multiplier in the S and P's after that, you would take the price and you would multiply that by 250. And that was the nominal value of the, of the amount of risk that you were taking the amount, the nominal value of the basket of stocks that you were controlling. So at the, you know, at that time, 
that the the big S and P was times five hundred. So, you know, that was well. That's twenty five. That's a fifty. That's fifty minis, I think. Yes, fifty minis. Yep, that's correct. Yes, that's correct. Yeah, I, I'm not very good at public math, as you can see. <laughs> public <laughs> All math. Right, go ahead, Jeannie. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Og. All right, next question comes from Edgar. Uh, we covered this one pretty in depth yesterday, but we we could just do a quick refresher. This is a question we get all the time. Uh, in regards to your TPO charts, what platform are they on? And uh, yeah, these are where else? these are T four Cunningham T four CTS T four now plus five hundred. I think is now the is now the company that that owns it. Unfortunately, uh, you know, I've had it for so long that I still have it, but we can't um, we can't administer it. If you even if you were on T four in the trading combine or live, it's nothing that we can we can provide for you. They do they do charge uh, for, for it, and the the administration of it is difficult. So it's something that we don't do for traders, unfortunately. But you can still see it on other platforms like Trade of Eight. I like Trade of Eight's uh, market profile um, charts as well. There you go. Thanks, Hope. Appreciate it. Uh, all right. Lorvins wants to know, what is the real trend of the NASDAQ? I think what Lauren wants to know is, what is the underlying trend right now? We all know that stocks have a natural tendency to go higher. Is that what we're looking at right now in the, in the equities? Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, here's the NASDAQ. Here's the daily. The daily chart, higher highs, higher lows. The trend is to the upside. What about if we look at the weekly? Trend is is still to the upside. You know, um, we, here's a downtrend. Once we start putting in higher lows and higher highs, the trend then moves to the upside. So, you know, in multiple time frames, the trend in the NASDAQ is to the upside. And if you watched with uh, with uh, Peter, Peter Tuckman, you know, a lot of this is is driven by AI, and now a lot of it's being driven by some of the uh, um, lower cap stocks that are that are a little cheaper for people to try and get into. Um, but yeah, the trend in the Nasdaq is to the upside, and uh, until further notice, that's how it will stay until there's a good break. Kevy in the chat says the down, uh, it's a downtrend on the 15 second chart right now. How much stock do you put in a fifteen second chart to look at underlying underlying trend, Hog? And he's absolutely right. Trend is directly related to time frame. You can have a short time frame trend to the downside that's just part of a pullback and a longer time frame trend to the upside. Very true. And I think that's it. I'm seeing from chat on that one. All right. Next question comes from Swiffle. Swiffle has a question about options expiration. What does max pain mean and how does it affect trade decisions during mm -hmm. expiration? Okay, I'm not an expert on this, but I'll tell you what I understand as as I understand it. Uh, so when when there is a, a, a strike price that's away from the market and it, there's a lot of of open interest there, there's longs and shorts there, uh, the dealers, if the if the price gets to that strike price, that's going to put the uh, put the max amount of pain on the dealers because they're going to get exercised into futures, and if they get exercised into futures, they're going to have to liquidate those futures. So, you know, uh, understanding options is one thing, or understanding how options relate to futures is, is another thing. But max pain is usually. You know, when the dealers have to adjust their inventory because, you know, let's say there's a, a, a big open interest in a, in a strike price in a, in a call. Well, if price gets to that, that's going to that's going to cause some of those um, some of those options to exercise. And if they're exercised against dealers, the dealers have to get out of those positions. That's how I understand it. I've been wrong before and I'll be wrong again. The uh, person that you really want to ask that, and you may have that opportunity today uh, during Back to the Futures Strategy Lab with Anne Marie. Anne Marie has a, has a pretty good knowledge about that. And there was a gentleman that was uh, uh, 
frequent flyer for Make Hope Money, Joe, that talked a lot about that. He came on and talked a lot about that. This is something that I've got on my long, my my tall stack of things that I still want to kind of learn more about and see if I can use it. It's nothing that I'm using on a day to day basis or week or monthly monthly basis. Um, I'm not smart enough yet, but I'm working on it. Thank you, JD. You got it. Yep. And uh, Strategy Lab with Anne Marie and Robert today, starting at one o'clock Central Time, right after this group coaching session. Maybe we could get a few questions in from Anne Marie also. All mm -hmm. right. Moving on. Uh, Sadik wants to know how do you find levels, pivot points, support and resistance? What's your well, there's a, behind that? There's a million ways to skin a cat. Um, you know, there's there's congestion levels that people would view as support or resistance or demand or supply areas. Pivot points are, as, as I see pivot points, they're just a calculation based on the high, low, and the close of the previous day. Most platforms are going to be able to provide those and put those on the charts for you. Um, but again, you know, this is a... This is a, a loaded question because again, there's a million ways to to skin a cat. Time frame, you know, uh, the time frame charts, the type of chart. These are all going to be things that are that are going to be part of that decision making. Um, you know, support and resistance are. If, I mean, quite simply put, if with well, here let's use crude oil for this because we're potentially up against a an important inflection level right here's the daily chart so a lot of the longer time frame support and resistance levels or supply and demand zones or things like that are mostly for me going to come off of the daily chart it's the longest time frame we talked today this morning on the opening call about this probably possibly being a very interesting day in crude oil because we are up against Resistance. Well how, well, how do we know this is resistance? Well, the weekly kickoff level is one thing, and that's kind of proprietary. I give those out to everybody on the weekly kickoff level on Sunday night or Monday morning. I think it comes out on Sunday night again now, right, JD? That is correct. Okay, yeah, so that comes out on Sunday night. But, you know, this trend line is an area that the price has reached a few times, but hasn't really been been able to above. So these are levels that I would kind of view as potential resistance as price comes up to them, buyers back off, sellers take over. If you can see here on this chart, and you know, this is only one way to, to look at this. Uh, you know, we've seen one day try to get to, to close above weekly kickoff high was unable to do so another day, a third day in a row. The market is attempting to go higher, but you got to ask yourself how good of a job is it doing moving higher? So now today we've, we've got rollover coming over, coming to an end in, in, on Tuesday. It's going to make directional activity a little bit easier in crude oil once that happens. But, you know, today it looks like pretty good probability we may close above this resistance level and the trend line that would make the the trend line and this resistance level possibly, and I know JD agree, disagrees with this, into a support level. Sometimes resistance might become support. Look at what's going on in the 30-minute chart right now. So here's all those long shadows on the daily chart. One long, one long shadow closed below weekly kickoff. Another shadow closed below weekly kickoff. Another shadow close below weekly kickoff low, basically right on it. But when we have a breakout of it, we want to see good volume. We want to see participation. We want to see momentum. Are we seeing momentum in this today? But the market finally kind of came, took out that trend line, traded almost right back to it. Is this trend line now becoming support? If it is, then the market may find buyers down at this level and may end up with a continuation to the upside. So, you know, that question is an excellent question in so many different time frames, tools, chart types, and, and indicators. This is just one way to look at it. Um, a lot of my more important levels are also going to come from the 
profiles. So here is the S and P's, and this was something that we we we've talked about here on the. Uh, hello, let's get sized here. Uh, okay, so this is something that we've talked about. Are some of the features of the the profiles? Now, if you were here on Wednesday or Thursday, I should say. The, the market closed with a late spike, okay? This is a when, when the market opens, balances, and then price moves away from that balance and closes away from it at the end of the day. This late spike doesn't have time to show acceptance. So we look at where the market opens the next day. Well, the market opened in and above the, the, the high of the late spike. The, the base of the late spike becomes support. The market opens looks doesn't even quite get to the base of the late spike and then the market rotates higher throughout the session this is a support level typically when i'm looking at this market what did it do today the market opened traded down took out the low from yesterday but still couldn't even get to the base of the late spike from from, from tuesday and the market has rotated back higher at least for now so these, you know, these levels come from profiles, they come from chart types, they come from, from trend lines, they, the support and resistance levels are sometimes provided on a platform. None of them work, or all of them work. It all depends on the situation, the context of the market, and your ability to respond in the right way. Nothing works every time, nothing never works. It's all in your ability to execute and to manage risk. And, you know, that, uh, that to me is, is, of course, the most important thing is you got to be able to, to manage that risk. Finding the support and resistance levels is one thing. Being able to execute in and around them and manage risk is the real, is the real story. Uh, Sadik, I, I hope that that helped. There are so many ways to look at support and resistance levels. Pivot points, usually a platform is going to be able to put those on there. A lot of a lot of platforms will provide support and resistance levels. A lot of people look at them. A lot of people might use them. But you got to remember that a lot of people are looking at them and a lot of people are using them. That's one of the things that, uh, that, uh, that uh, you know, we kind of have to remember. We're not the only ones looking at these things. Say, Nick, I don't know how else to answer that question because there are so many ways to look at these things and you know we Anne Marie and I and I think um 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 uh, Rips uh and Deanna I mean we we're, we're all looking at things in a slightly different way it's amazing to me how often we come up with the same important levels even though we might be looking at things a little bit differently you 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 start to see these things and um uh, you know, hopefully with time, I don't know your experience level or anything, but you'll be able to find your way to find your support and resistance levels um, and, and your pivot points. Um, you know, sometimes those pivot points that are provided on a platform, they call them floor pivots. They're, they're, I forget the, the, the uh, uh, formula for them, but it's, it's relatively simple. Uh, but remember, a lot of people look at them. So you have to keep that in mind. The more people that take those trades at those times, the less likely they are to succeed. Um, I don't know. How, I don't know what else to say about that. Um, say that there is a million ways to look at it. Just keep learning. Keep sticking around. Keep listening. Uh, listen to to Riffs. Listen to D. Listen to Anne Marie. Um, you know. Listen to Dakota. Listen to the coaches here. We, we got Coach Jay. We got Coach Vince. Uh, you know. We there's so many good coaches here. Uh, Go to the go to the Discord. Listen to what they're saying. Take the take the things that that make sense to you and make them part of your decision making process. Say so, good luck. We're looking forward to seeing your success, and I we really appreciate the appreciate the question, JD. Yep, for sure. Also, we publish uh, our own little list of daily levels, and we post that in the chat every morning right around when fast market starts. So keep an eye out for that. Also, if you check out the website, topstep.tv, you'll find some other great stuff there. Uh, some great reading material. You'll find the daily levels in there and uh, pretty much anything else TV related. So make sure you check that website out too. Thank you, Sadik, and thank you, Hogue. Yeah, Kevin, All right, Kevin next... is, he's got the uh, pivot point formula. 
high plus low plus close divided by three. I, I remember it was very simple, but that's the pivot level. That's it. Who did I just see? Oh, Elvis threw out the old dancing bear moniker for me. He must be around for a while, huh? Thanks, Elvis. All right, yeah. next question. Next question comes from Michael. Michael wants to know what the benefit is of uh, moving into the Top Step Live account. Also, what happens to the money you made on the Express account when you get transferred to the Live account? <clears throat> well, the money the money that you get when you when you that you earn when you get into the when you move from the Express account to the Live account, it's put in real money in your Live account. You are able to take a payout when that happens, of course. Uh, but what's the benefit of moving to a live to a half step live account? You're going from AAA to the big leagues. You know, it, we wanted to keep you on a simulator your your whole life. You know, I don't think we'd be doing you any favors. You're making money. Make money in the real market. Get up to the big leagues. Get up to where the pros are. If you're successful in your at your express account your xfa account you just keep doing what you're doing in live you know all if you had three accounts all that money stacked up is going to be, become your your uh, account balance we do suggest of course taking a payout on on moving to that but it doesn't really change that much of anything you're still trading you're going to be able to trade bigger you've got that big account uh, and, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's trading the big leagues, triple A to the big leagues. Yeah. A couple more things. You have a little more freedom with the risk team to, uh, move around daily loss limits and whatnot, uh, depending mm -hmm. on the account size that you transfer over into the live account. So there are, there is some, some major differences between the live account and a SIM funded account. Uh, we definitely, it is not our intention to keep you in a sim account forever we don't want you in the sim account forever we want everybody moved into a live account we want everybody making real money all the time that is our goal yes thank you michael for the question all right hog here's the one you've been waiting for john wants to know when are you going to stop drinking <laughs> uh what time is it <laughs> <laughs> um well i made it to dry january um, you know, I had some wine, had a little vodka, had a little bourbon, but now it's Lent and now I'm back on the wagon for Lent, except, and this is a big exception for when we're in Vegas, but, uh, I, I really felt good when, uh, when I wasn't drinking and I don't want you guys thinking that I'm like some some booze hound that's you know smashed every night you know i'm i'm i do do things in moderation but i do things in moderation with consistency <laughs> and it had been probably decades since i took an entire month off of drinking and i was worried that it was going to be a lot harder than it was i didn't go to meetings i didn't have a problem i just didn't do it and i felt good so I'm going to do it again for Lent, again, except, of course, when we're in Vegas. And I probably won't do that much that anyway, that much in Vegas anyway, because I found, JD, that after not drinking for a month and having a drink, I, I didn't like it as much. For some reason, it hits me different now. Really? Yes. Uh, maybe I'll give that a shot myself. <laughs> well, that was a joke. I'm thinking if I, maybe with a little practice, I can get back to my old self. But I don't want that practice. I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, kind of good just cruising along. Yeah, if you're, but if you're, if you're feeling good, I'm not as much keep fun. rolling with it. Some of my friends say I'm not as much fun. <laughs> well, the thing is, sometimes you think you're having fun, but you're really not. <clears throat> then again, when we do get to Vegas, our uh, our late night powwows are one of the things I look forward to the most. And yes, we will powwow. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> All right. Next, Rambo. Rambo's on the list. Rambo wants to know, what is a TPO? We talked quite a bit about the profiles yesterday, but I don't know if we ever went into what a TPO actually is. Okay. Um, 
Rambo. I'm nervous answering this question for somebody named Rambo. Um, I better get it right. <laughs> a TPO is a time price opportunity. Now, on a market profile, this is, let's look at this a little bit closer. I know it's kind of hard to, to, uh, to see these little letters, but in the first 30 minute period, the range was from 5018 half up to, oh, pretty close to the high here. 50, 45, and a quarter. Each price during that 30-minute period is assigned a TPO. Each, tra each time the market trades, that TPO stands for time, price, opportunity. It is a time and a price where there was an opportunity for an execution. So what we do at the market profile is we take that 30-minute range, that's that red A, and then take the next 30-minute range, which is B. These B TPOs come down and trade below A, so everything is pushed to the left. Each little letter or box or whatever your profile looks like is a TPO. It is a time price opportunity, a time and a price where an execution was possible. You had an opportunity to trade there. The way the profile works is it takes all those TPOs and stacks them on the left axis so we can see over time where price has been spending time and where it has been rejected. Case in point, yesterday the market opened, it ranged, it left that range, and moved higher and created a new range. So this is kind of how the 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 the, the market profile exhibits ex acceptance and or rejection of price through time through time. If I were to split this profile, you could see that the oh, the first thirty minutes, second thirty minutes, third thirty minutes, fourth thirty minutes. Every time a price is traded, it is assigned a TPO. This one is separated to be more like a like a 30 minute chart, but each of these 30 minute ranges offers opportunity at every one of these prices, time, price, opportunity. When you think about the market profile, it is based on time. Where does the price spend more time? Okay, so when you think about it, the variable in the market profile is always price. Price can go wherever it wants. But if we keep this the constant uh, time, then we can see where the market is spending time, where it is not spending time, and where it is spending time. That's kind of the basic way that the profile works. There is a lot more to it, but that is what a TPO is. Uh, I'm going to suggest. Uh, if somebody would put the uh, market profile masterclass in the chat and, and, and attach it to the top, I would appreciate that. Uh, that would really be the best way, Rambo, to learn more about the TPOs and profiles and the vocabularies, nuances, and construction of the TPO charts or the market profile chart. Rambo, thanks for your service and um, thanks for the question. Excellent. Thank you, Hogue. Thank you, Hogue. Next question comes from Valentino. Valentino says, hey, Hogue, I'm looking to learn fundamentals properly. However, there's a sea of information on the net. Any, any chance you could suggest someone uh, reliable and professional, a book or a coach or something like that? Valentino. Uh, the, the link to the master, the market profile masterclass is now at the top of the chat. Of the chat. If you haven't seen it, if you don't know what what the market profile is, I certainly you know it, it's an it's an hour long, and hopefully it's going to help you get a better understanding of the vocabularies and construction of the profiles, and even some of the nuances. So, um, learning fundamentals properly. Um, well, 
fundamentals are, are, are something that most day traders aren't necessarily all that concerned with Valentino. Um, fundamentals really have, uh, have, uh, sometimes delayed effects on markets, sometimes opposite effects on, on, on markets. Uh, the, I think the technical side being a technician, technical analysis, market profile would probably do a lot better for you to get on the right foot as a professional trader. Uh, I don't know of any particular book or coach that is going to be able to teach you the fundamentals in a way that's going to be useful as a day trader. Um, you know, fundamentals are for, uh, green traders or longer term traders. Um, even some of the you know greatest economists make mistakes when it comes to fundamental information. Now, fundamental information, if for example, in grains is, you know, what's the, What's the uh, the total acreage of planted soybeans in the U.S.? What's the expected er, uh, yield of bushels per acre for that? Uh, what is how much are we going to be selling overseas? What does the Brazilian crop look like? All that information is really, I think, going to confuse a day trader more than it's going to help. Um, you know, fundamental information as far as economic numbers are concerned for your equities and for, you know, let's say, let's say the, the crude oil inventories. So often the, the, you know, the crude oil inventories will come out, come out off of what they were expecting and, and the market goes the opposite direction of where you think the market should go because of the fundamentals. So while I don't discourage learning about the fundamentals, it's a difficult thing to try and day trade with, you know, if you're a farmer and you've, you've got plants in the field, you're going to be very concerned about the fundamentals. And that's why they use futures. You know, if I just planted what I'm thinking is going to be 50,000 bushels of soybeans in, in November. And I think the price for that, for what I've got planted now is good. I can sell that in futures. And if the price down the street for soybeans does drop between now and when I when I make it, the price in futures is also going to drop. So the futures price is going to offset the losses of the cash that I have sitting out in the field. And that's how those fundamentals and those hedges kind of work in a very simple way. So don't concern yourself so much about fundamentals as being a technician and learning to be a good risk manager and 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 a good executor of trades. Um, to be, to be honest, I mean, Jim Dalton has been a trader for longer than I have. He is the godfather of the market profile. He says out, he says to his people out loud, I don't care what the economic number comes out at. All I want to know is when it comes out, because he believes that Everything that I need to know in the market is in the market. Now, does he trade into these things? Probably not. Will he look later on and see what the numbers are? Probably. But is he taking trading decisions off of, you know, fundamental, uh, off of fundamental or economic information? Probably not. Probably not. He's been around longer than I have. I'm sure he's seen, he's seen some pretty big days when he held positions into some into some economic numbers and some really bad days. And if, if I were to be, if, if, if I were to be Jim, I would say, I'm not going to trade into this, you know, unless I'm, unless I'm hedged, I like, got a futures position. I got an options position. No matter what happens, I'm hedged. I can take one leg off when I need to, but I'm not going to be trading outright into these positions. So, you know, as a day trader, Fundamental information can be helpful or it can be dangerous. And I would, I would prefer, I, I would suggest, and this is just me, and, and the people will always disagree, that you're not going to get good, viable day time frame, day trader information out, out of fundamental information. You know, it just reminds me of, you know, it's, it's the, the farmers want to sell it here. Kellogg wants to buy corn here. 
Well, we know where the fundamentals are. The fundamentals, the, the producers want to sell here. The users want to buy it here. What about everything in the middle? What does that mean? That's the speculators moving price up and down, facilitating trade for the producers, facilitating trade for the users, and trying to make money in the middle. And that's what you should be worried about. Not so much the fundamentals. It's how to find good trade ideas during this during the session. Make sense? Perfect sense. I think we're going to clip that one for posterity. Hoke throwing some of that Series 3 knowledge at us, too, on how hedging works. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Hogue versus fundamental uh, analysis. Let's check. Yeah, in the chat. but that's, I mean, that, that's the easy part. That's the stuff I already knew. This stuff in here, I'm like, what, what, when am I going to use this? <laughs> it's, like, it's like going to algebra in high school. When the hell am I going to use this? <laughs> Let's let the chat chime in. How many of you depend on fundamental analysis, day trading, equity futures? Most of our traders are trading the NASDAQ and the S&P. What type of fundamental analysis do you put into your daily trading plan? Drop a little note in the chat. We'll look over it. Thank you. The only, the only, the only fundamental stuff I look at is volume and open interest. Volume and open interest, which mm -hmm. I guess technically is a fundamental number, but it's also technical. Yeah, 100%. I agree with that. All right. We're getting short on time. We might have time for one or two more questions. Let's jump down to Lex. Lex wants to know, could you please show how to maximize the benefit of level two data? Thank you. Uh, what right. is the purpose? What good use do you get of seeing how much is better offered? A hundred prices away from the market. Okay, great question. Uh, the market, let's start with this. Lex, Lex. What's the market's job? The market's job is to facilitate trade. Well, what does trade facilitation mean? It price has to move or auction to the, the level that buyers and sellers agree to transact business. Well, when you see big offers, Look at this here in the S and P is 50, 55, 639 offered. Okay. Is that really there or isn't it? Uh, what about down below? I don't see a lot of bids and offers down here, big bids and offers. So I always kind of default to when I was a deck holder in the lumber pit in the lumber pit for John Fisher. Now John had a pretty big deck in second month, second month, uh, lumber. JD's dad had a deck in the front month lumber. <clears throat> Love JD's dad. Gentleman. Almost more than I like JD. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> I'm sure he's listening too. Thanks, Hog. <laughs> all right, good. Um, so, but, you know, you, you, it, as a deck holder, your job was to organize all the paper orders that came from all over the trading floor to a to a a file system that the, that the broker could file through if the market moved quickly the downside was always the inside uh, i should i should see if i can find any old orders or dupes so you know the 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 orders were buy sell you'd have the the the, the downside with the closest price at the top so if price started moving lower you could peel through the deck and say, okay, I got five to buy here. I got to sell stop one, we'll stop, stop one here. And then on the other side, on the outside, you would write what the order was on the back so that if the market moved higher, you could peel through the, and, and see the orders on the back and be able to execute while you're going through the deck. One of the biggest decks I ever saw was Roman Sasson, who was also in the second month lumber. He had wire orders. I mean, his 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 order deck was i'm not kidding you i mean it had to be this big and you, i'm surprised he didn't get carpal tunnel holding on to this thing because he had such a a large pile of orders in his hand so i would you know i would say you know hey john the the downside's real thin today there is a whole bunch of orders on the upside today and he would say that means we're going higher. And I'd say, why? And he say, he would say, because 
the market is going to go to the liquidity. The market, and he used to just say this, the market is going to go to the point of greatest aggravation. The market is going to auction to the point where most of the buying and selling is waiting to happen. So if you're looking at level two delta, uh, once sometimes, not all the time, you know, you've got this big order up here at 50, 55 even. You know, whether people know it or not, there is liquidity above the market and the market will attempt to go and test into that liquidity. There's a lot of business to be done there. Price, it will probably go there. So, um, you know, like everything, having that knowledge of, you know, what's above the market or what's below the market, it can be a blessing. It, it, sometimes it can, it can be a curse. There's nothing that we can lean on 100% to say it is absolutely going to do this or it is absolutely not going to do that. This is an ambiguous environment, so any any information that we can that we can ferret out that says you know there's a lot of liquidity up there, we may go try and take out that liquidity. That's important information. It's not saying buy here or sell there or do this or do that. It's just part of the nuance that you have to kind of meld together in your brain to look for good trading opportunities. So you know we're always looking. Hey, you know what? There's a big offer at 50.55. It's now almost one o'clock. If this market moves higher, are they targeting that that liquidity up there? You know, is there a higher probability of price going to see if that liquidity is actually there? If traders know about it and they're looking at it, they have a tendency to bring price there. So if I were to look at this dome in the S and P's right now. I would say, hey, John, the, the, the upside looks really thick in the deck. Uh, you think we're going to go higher? He'd say the market always goes to greatest aggravation. So he would take, you know, the, he would take his part of the downside and part, part of the upside so that if the market did rally and if it rallied quickly, I would just be able to hand him the rest of the upside where he could peel through and execute the orders. It was it was, uh, it was quite an uh, quite a uh, quite a business. <laughs> but you know, being a deck holder, being a broker, we had the knowledge of knowing where the liquidity was, but we couldn't tell the we couldn't tell the locals that. Couldn't tell them that, or maybe sometimes. <laughs> we'll get into that later on, maybe. <laughs> well, that's about. We'll clip that one too. Hogue talking uh, level two data liquidity. That was a good, good bit. Hope you guys were paying attention to that. Thank you, Hogue. All right, we are just about out of time. I want you all to stick around right after this for Strategy Lab with Robert and Amory. Should be pretty good. Uh, there were some questions coming in earlier about uh, options expiration and how they affect trading futures maybe Amory could touch on that if she's listening uh maybe we can get her to come in then after that we have andre dolby and danny's trades coming in for the power hour possibly a little pulled pork coming our way to close out the week <laughs> uh, and that's what we got for you for group coaching hogue you got any dad wisdom you want to share before we end it um yeah i don't think i don't think i changed it but let me let me find one let me see what i got here uh, here, this is a good one, especially for especially for trading futures. The beatings will continue until morale improves. In other words, if you don't have the right mindset, <laughs> the beatings will continue. Have a good mindset. Happy traders make much better traders. I, he used to tell me that when I was uh, when when I would be having a rough time or a rough day or just you know down on myself or down on trading or whatever it was, I'm trying to get to this thing here. Well, forget about that. So, uh, you know, it, a lot of what you're doing, a lot of your success is going to depend on your mindset. So, if you know if the beatings are continuing, change your morale. And sometimes that takes a little bit of time. We talked about that yesterday with uh, 
with rips and everybody, uh, you know, sometimes get, things just get too close. Things get too angry, too venomous. Got to let go of that venom. So, you, you know, you can change that morale and you can stop the beatings for sure. All right. Blessings, everyone. Uh, have a great rest of the day. If I don't see you, have a great weekend. If I don't see you, remember always pray for peace, please. And, uh, and be kind to yourselves, be kind to others. And, uh, and we'll see you on, on Monday. Uh, I'll see you on Monday. We still got a lot going on here. We get back to the futures strategy lab and, uh, back to the end, uh, power hour at the end of the day today. So I'll be watching, uh, have a great weekend and I don't know what else to say. Blessings to you all.
Welcome back, traders. Welcome to another edition of Strategy Lab with Anne Marie. I'm just going to be hosting this segment here, Robert, Coach Robert. You've seen me all around here, and I'm sure I've seen all of you before as well. Anne Marie, welcome, welcome. I did something special for you today. I took my little green screen back here, and I took a little AI tool, and I said, <laughs> give me a combination, give me, create an image that combines trading and a laboratory. And that's what it has once we pull it back up. It's a really cool thing. Once we get on the bigger screen, you'll see it. But that's what it came up with. It's actually really freaking cool. Uh, and I'm like, I'm going to use that because we're talking strategy lab. So why don't we let the AI do some stuff, create some, Absolutely. get some creativity and have some fun with it. So that's my uh, my gift to you for this segment. And uh, I think you get some gifts for us. First of all, how you doing? How are you doing? And then we'll get into our topics. Great. You know, I sort of... Um... I know that it's a buy the dip formation. The dip was just so savage. I have found myself uh, giving back a ton of the money that I made on the way down thinking, all right, it's going to go down some more. And so it's, yeah, you know, so that's kind of been a drag. But other than that, uh, it's been a uh, good. I'm excited to talk to you today about, you know, all the things that we have going on in uh, the markets and in top step x as we um do more in that space so yeah mm -hmm. I'm, I'm ready to get after it absolutely well if you do see something you want to take let me know we will production uh, i think james is back there we'll absolutely switch over to your charts place that trade if i see something i'll do the same thing so we're at the a lab looks like we have uh your top step x charts up to begin with so why don't you kick us off with what you're looking at there well, what I've got is the NAS up on a one hour chart so I can see where the main areas of congestion are. And I can see that we're going from one edge to the next. So if this uh, trade were in motion, I would have my two minute chart up to look for these lines that I actually drew from the one minute, the one hour picture. And I would be stair stepping from one to the next. I just have uh, moving averages, and I hate those. I just have moving averages <laughs> in the view app sitting up there right now because I really, um, I put the Bollinger Bands up there for us to look at when we were doing fast markets the other day, but I really am not a fan of Bollinger Bands because they change formation so rapidly between time frames, And so, you know, we're still hopeful that they can uh, code for us a, a really nice um, uh, VWAP ribbon for inside of here. But for right now, we're just looking at the VWAP and it's essentially flat. And so that tells me that we've got buying at the bottom, selling at the top, and the net net of that is zero. And so that flat action is is telling us that there is uh, a resistance line up there somewhere and we'll see you know what it looks like so there's going to be a trade potentially coming somewhere around uh 17,910 so i'm going to go ahead and position that up while we are talking sure um the irony being, if I were taking one, I just happened to miss it. I'd be going long right now up to 17,908. So it's kind of funny that while you're waiting for the trade to execute for you, I would have a position going into that area. Isn't that, isn't trading lovely? I absolutely love I this. Know. This I hate to say Thank game, you. but you know, with this, this job, it's, it's absolutely yeah. incredible. We see so many times. Yeah, two people talk about all the same stuff. One says, I'm long, I'm short. And it's, I, and they both win or they both lose. It's, it's incredible. Yeah, I guess maybe the only occupation that you wouldn't really want to call a game is, mm. you know, maybe you're a surgeon and somebody's <laughs> life is in your hands. You don't want to call that a game, but everything else can be a game. I mean, you want to call it listen, a practice. We spend so much time working. Why, why can't it be a fun game? Why can't we look at it like you know, a gaming space. So I love that. I'm sorry some people get offended by that, but I certainly don't. So I do. I really, I do like looking at it. But you can see why it is that I'm looking to short up there. Mm -hmm. 
because sure. I've got congestion on the one hour and it's been running really one, two, three, four, five, four out of the last five hours. It's been really running at a clip. So I do expect it to just settle out in a little bit. Excellent. What was that price again you wanted to go short at? Um, I have one set up at 17910 and one set up at 17915. Okay, I'm going to go short right now. I'm trading a micro, so it's going to be a real piece of cake. I'm literally going to click on, yeah, I know if I click on um, sell market instead of buy market. <laughs> so I just went short with one micro. I'm going to drag my stop just simply up and out of the way, but I'm also going to add an order to the chart as well. Um, right around yours. So it's a, it's just a micro. So if it goes against me a little bit, I'm going to tag in where you are. If it goes a little more, I simply get out. I did this the other day as well. No harm, no foul. So I'm going to go up around, let's go around uh, 22 or 20-ish, 21. How's that sound? We'll do a we'll do a, a, a limit sell for one. And then I'm in, once that enters, I will drag my stop a little bit further away. And we'll just so make you're a combination. Going it's up here on the screen. I'm going short. Short. Okay. So yes, what's... I'm taking it right along with you. Okay, you're just getting in before me. I'm only trading a micro, so I'm putting a micro on right okay. now. I am currently gotcha. short, and I'm going to add one just a little bit. It's not necessarily adding to a losing trade because this is the strategy. It goes. I just. I hate being early. If I'm wrong, I'm generally yeah. early. So this means, if I'm right, but I was a little early, it's going to hit me, and then I'll drop down and short it. Uh, at yep. 17,921. But if I was mm -hmm. wrong, I'm just going to get out of the trade is right after it fills. So that is the process that I'm using at this point in time. So we'll see. Okay. Because what if it doesn't go up? I'm still going to be already been one short, right? And it's a micro, so yeah, it's not exactly. Yeah. It costs yeah. 100 and bucks. I, yeah. I do think about that quite a bit um, in terms of saying, well, I I have the same problem. I will leg in. It's not. It's not really a problem unless you're sized up too far, but I will have a tendency to get in a little bit early. And so what I'm doing now is trying to cut down on the number of trades and just letting it miss me if it does. Um, mm -hmm. But I do see, you know, my momentum indicators are all saying, listen, the chart's getting a little tired. It's going to come down, likely test this bounce zone at 889 and then try another bounce ahead so it could be a it could be pretty nice long right there at 889 well we'll go and we'll see what that happens yeah. but i think you mentioned earlier kind of everything is kind of flattened out and isn't that the hands on the yes. butt type of scenario yeah yeah it's a, it's a yeah. wait and see right yeah, so, so the mostly the quick strike trade is is really what I'm after right now, following in the direction of the uh, moving averages that are very tight on the small mm -hmm. time frames. And so this might be a place where a trader would scalp or a trader would say, you know, I'm just I'm just hanging on to see how the flow of the formation goes. So that's what we're looking at um, earlier. Um, someone was talking about how options expiration affects price action in the market. And yeah. in general, and I don't want to get all wonky uh, because I am an options gal and I, I do trade options quite a bit. Um, what I want to do is, is try to make it as straightforward as possible. And so what I'm going to do is drag my option platform over here. And we're just going to look at something like SPY, right? Mm -hmm. So let's, uh, let me do this. And let's hope that we can see it all right. I'm going to put it over on this side so that we can have, nope, don't want to do that. Uh, let's just pop it up this way and see how that looks. Hmm. Are you going to bring that over to the new screen? Yeah. So let me okay. see. Um, let's see. Window entire screen there we go how about that 
Can we see mm, that I think now? it covered you. It took over your camera view it there. Took over so me. Little... Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's try that again. All right. Um so while you do while you're doing that, let's just ask the chat if they're interested in going long here, if they think it's gonna keep going and pushing to the upside, or if they feel that we've exhausted that move because we just pushed up um on the NQ from seventeen eight ten up to seventeen eight ninety five here in uh, not too much time. So do we think that move is exhausted? Or are we gonna keep going up? Let's just go into with the chat and have them take a look at their charts and, and comment and let us know what your thoughts are. Okay, when this trade right now, my, mine is currently at in profit five dollars five fifty, six dollars six fifty. Uh, now this is a micro, so if you're talking minis, that would be six hundred and six hundred fifty dollars, right? That's just the way that it works. Why am I trading micros? Well, I'm on a fifty k account, and what is my drawdown on a fifty k account? My, I'm sorry, my drawdown, my daily loss limit uh, is a thousand dollars. I can lose two thousand maximum. So I am viewing this as if I am trading a two thousand dollar account. So if I am trading a quote $2,000 account, because I will lose the account if I lose $2,000, I am looking at it as a $2,000 account. Well, if I make on a $2,000 account, if I make $200, that's 10%. If I lose $200, that's 10%. And I don't want to lose any more than 10% of my entire account in a day. So it's a lot easier for me if I'm going to manage my risk, jump into the micros and consistently build up a couple hundred bucks every day because we know once we're funded, $200 a day, you need five of those over $200, you can start taking payouts. Is it slow and steady? Absolutely. But it's also very risk managed. I am a sucker when it comes down to risk. I hate losing money. It's part of the game. It's part of the game. It's how it has to work. We all do it. I just don't want to lose any more than I really need to be, and I certainly don't want to lose a thousand dollars in a day and hit my daily loss. Limit. That's half my account. If I lose a grand in one day, that is half of my entire account. Now, if I have a personal account of fifty thousand dollars, am I going to lose twenty-five grand in a day? Hell no! <laughs> I'd be quitting at that point. So I'm just trying to scale it, and that's the reason I do these things. I have a target of twenty-seven bucks. To me, that's two hundred seventy dollars. If it were a mini if my account uh, size was comparable to that. So that, so that's why. Did you figure it out, Anne-Marie? I think so. All right, Let's take a look. See. Yay, no? Yeah. There it is. All right. Yeah. So I'm not sure how well we can see these, but here's, here's the big picture. This blue line, um is uh just the bid and the ask the open interest and the volume so volume is what we're going to look at today but we're now, looking at options in, options correct we want to make sure options, we're looking at options. Yes. okay very yeah, good thank you and so what we're looking at are the spy chains and they're very liquid that means that the bid ask is one penny wide Meaning, if I were to buy and then immediately sell, I would only lose a penny if price stayed the same. And so slippage, one of the things that we do experience sometimes in uh, the futures market, if uh, things go a little bit sideways, um, that's not uh, a significant problem in, in SPY. So here's what happens. During the day, traders will come in and it's big money, big money traders come in and they will sell puts and they will sell calls. Now, whenever you sell an option, what you get is the amount of the option put into your account. So if I were to sell this one right here, that's highlighted, which you probably can hardly see, it would, I could sell it for 40 cents. That means $40 because they move in hundred lots. And if the price never gets above 503, and this is spy, it's at 502.68, I would collect that 40 cents. 
Okay, so I just heard order filled. So let me go peek and see what filled. All right, the long side filled. And so let me move that stop up so I am managing the risk properly here. Want me to go there? Yeah. All right. I just closed that position also that you're moving your stop there. It went down, it came uh, right yeah, in. Yeah, very the nice area. short. Yeah, yeah, very good. So we're talking, very, very I know nice it's not short. a lot, but it's a it's a profit of $21. Absolutely. And to me, that's a $210 trade on a mini. I close it for the day, one trade, one time, hit over my $200, do that four more times, I start taking payouts. That's what I'm trying to show on this. We are five for five now, by the way, on taking trades online. Excellent. Absolutely excellent. Okay, so... Here's the thing. Let's go to the ES because the ES also has options, which are also fantastic to trade. Um, so let's go here and let's look at those chains that are expiring today and we'll see where everybody's sitting. Well, that's deep in the money. That's very interesting. All right, so the, vol the volume is not nearly as big in the futures option space, not nearly as big. And it really is the spy chains that move the price action round and about. So imagine if you are someplace like Goldman Sachs and every morning you come in and you say, I'm going to go far away from price and I'm going to sell a strike. And I'm going to sell 200,000 of them. And I'm going to do it on both sides. So I'm going to sell 400,000 options and I am going to collect $10 for each side of them, right? So that's 20 bucks. That'll give me what? $8 million on the day. All right. They do that every day, mm. every single day. That's how the that's how the trading um, that's how the trading desks make money with these algorithms. And so what they'll do is they'll look for the delta, and the word delta is twofold. One, the probability of something expiring in the money. So if I look at something and it's got a delta of one, it means that the market makers at this time are saying it is 100% certain that this option is going to expire in the money. That's what a one means. And if I go all the way down to this one right here where it says wow somebody's really what is that person doing okay so if i go down to here and i have a 0.02 that says the market makers have said listen there's only a two percent chance that this option expires in the money now if you've sold an option when it goes in the money, you're going to start to sweat. So imagine if you're like these guys over here, who this morning, a total of 414,000 options at the 502 strike were sold this morning, hoping that they would expire worthless and it's 2.30 Eastern in the afternoon, 1.30 Central, and these things are now in the money. And so they are going to sweat. Now, here's the thing about these kinds of options. The leverage that it takes, the way that you lever, do you know how you just said, hey, I'm going to sell here, and if it mm -hmm. moves in my direction, then whatever? right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to yep. wait. And then, but if it moves against me, I'm going to add 
the only option. once. We're not gonna. Yeah, yes. only once. Just just but in case I was early. I, right, right. Go on. The option traders will do that. So they will say, "Holy cow, my five hundred twos are in the money, or my five hundred two. Yeah, my five hundred twos are in the money, and that makes me nervous. So I'm going to go down and I'm going to sell the five hundred fours. And so what the five hundred fours do is give me more money." just in case my 502s go in the money and I need money to come good on the trade or they have to roll it into the following week. So just a little bit of mechanical flow in there. The big thing is this. When you look at a chart and you say, what's moving the market? You're going to see where everyone starts getting nervous by staring down where the most options are sitting. And that is between the 501 and the 503 area today. There's almost a million contracts that were opened up just today. They were opened up just today and they're, they're all short by people, the dealers are long, but they are all short, hoping that price action falls a little bit so they can have it expire worthless. Okay, Whether can you talk about the, the or, yeah, can you talk ahead. about the expiration and like what's called the, what do we call it, the Greeks? Can you go into that just a little bit on the high level? Cause it's, uh, we okay, wanna see how this relates into future. So yeah, yeah. Okay, so high level, a Delta means one, the likelihood that an option will expire in the money. The theta is how much time decay is sitting in the price of the option. So if a whole day goes by, which here right now, our theta says 30, that means this option, which is $93, $30 is a cost of time. It is the time premium. The closer we get to expiration, that theta is going to drip lower. It's just going to keep dripping out at the end of the day. And so that's something, of course, you want to look at. But as a trader of futures, the big thing to look at is how many of the options are cluttered around what prices. And so between the calls and the puts, we have between 500 and 503, and it looks to me like three, six, seven, eight, two million, two million options are sitting right between the numbers 500 and 503. Now remember, every one of these options you multiply by 100 in terms of price, right? So whatever the price action is sitting here, it's times $100 times, you know, almost 2 million contracts sitting in this space. And they are either going to have to roll it into the following week, meaning they cover it, right? If they're short, they buy it back and then sell it into next week, or they just sit and take the heat. One or the other is going to happen, but the deeper the big numbers go into the money, the more likely the market will start to rotate in the opposite direction against them. So for instance, if this 502, 416,000 here now, if it goes deeper into the money, it means they are losing money because they're short the calls and price is moving up. If they're losing money and short the call because price is moving up, chances are price is going to continue to move up against them. And so that sort of movement makes the market quite elastic. The bigger things that actually move the market intraday 
is really the function of what happens when they begin to cover. What happens when they go, you know what, I'm going to sit here until X, Y, Z, and then whatever time it is, and then I'm going to have to get out of the trade. Okay. And from that perspective, that's really how those options move the market at the corners. It's probably not as important as you think it might be when you say, Hey, can I look at these options and tell what price action is going to do? You're going to be a lot better off staring at your charts because it takes a specific level of skill that you have to implement consistently. And it's just much better to say, Hey, listen, I'm just going to look at my charts. And okay. That's, that's a wonderful explanation to very, um, very mid mid level on it. Um, a couple of things I want to throw out. Maybe you can comment on these. Is that there's a different language when you're dealing with options. Oh, and look at that NQ Absolutely. just went right down and tapped it. Yeah, it's a different yeah. language, right? We talk about long and short. I always think of you know short is easy because you know I'm short, so short down, right? That's going down. So if yeah. short is down, then long must be the opposite, which is up, since you can't really understand it. For options, there's puts and calls. So I think the same way. Mm -hmm. I always think of the phone. I'm gonna call and call someone up. I'm gonna call them up, mm -hmm. or I'm gonna put someone down. <laughs> right that's how i remember that's a good it way to myself look at that. Yeah. yeah it's like you know that's just one way and, and then we talk about expirations because futures have expirations and futures have different expirations we have the equities that are rolling every three months and you have like oil which rolls every month but with options there are different roll time different expiration times right and that's yeah. when the the prices you just get less and less in the, of, of value until it reaches zero you're just like okay but if maybe on top of that, if you can comment on this one thing that I, I hear, and I am no, I don't know options. I have never in my life traded options. I know enough about them just to be – to almost know the buzzword. That's about, that's about all I know about options. But one thing I do hear is that traders that, are, that do trade options and they're, and they're good at it, they say they like it because you can be wrong and still be a little bit right. So is that a true statement? And if so, can you explain that? Okay, it is. And so, but it depends on what you're doing with the option. So here's the interesting thing. I like to sell premium, right? And so if I'm selling premium, it means that I'm selling a call or I'm selling a put. Now, if mm -hmm. I sell it far off out of the money, the stock can move up, it can move down, it can stay still, and no matter what, I'll still make that money just so long as it doesn't move too far. So right. that's the options. Options are like the most powerful skill saw that you might ever want to use. And with any skill saw, if you don't know what you're doing, you can really, you can lose a limb, no problem, right? <laughs> and so right. even though leverage in the futures is something we must be concerned about and we can lose money, we can lose more than we um, put at risk in the futures market, options are another lever up the chain. And that's really why I suspect top step and most all other um, prop firms don't offer uh, futures, excuse me, options, uh, because mm -hmm. the leverage would be monstrous to carry. The risk profiles, <laughs> they would be otherworldly. And so the best thing to look at when you're thinking about options is, yeah, I see them, I understand them, but I don't, I don't want to focus on them unless they become my primary tool. This is what I, I want to say until you see something that says, you know, let's say there's something that says, you know, 10 billion MOC with a B, right? You know, mm -hmm that that's going to be all kinds of massive covering 
whatever it is, either they're covering long or covering short. If you've got an MOC number that's gigantic, you know it's going to move the market in a very, very big way. But for the chains, I would say if you're keen on learning to trade them, that's one thing. But if you if you just go, hey, how do, how do they move the market? You're much better off sticking to your volume profiles, sticking to your price action formations, and just, you know, staying away from the space other than going, oh, that's kind of interesting. I don't mean to be, I don't mean to sound, you know, whatever. It's just a space that can be very dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. And I can tell you, I stepped into the options market and lost a million dollars. And so I know what I'm talking about. It is it is hairy and they can move. And uh, thank you for answering that, that question. Um, I did look at them. I've never traded one in my entire life, never bought so anything uh, or called put. Um, why? Because I'm just a simple guy. I may have some complex stuff going on up here, but I like to keep things simple, right? The Occam's Razor yeah, approach. And mm -hmm. as soon as we started entering, I started reading about it and learning about it. I'm like, okay, I'm going to place this trade and I'm going to win or lose, but eh, I'm going to take a look at it in a day or two. And like, no, no, no you just, you, you automatically lost because it's devaluing as time goes on. I'm like, well, I don't want that. What if it's not doing what I want at that time and it's going to in the future, but it now it's it now it's worthless right it's like oh wow this is really something and then there were so many underlying um um i would say strategy components that come along with options trading the in the money and out the money working with the butterflies and the iron condors and i was just like my head was exploding and oh my god sorry my uh antivirus thing just popped up to renew did i just lose it lose everybody no okay it just happened to show up and take over my whole screen antivirus renewal Sorry about that. I can't control technology sometimes. But once I found out that I was just getting so much more complex with that, like, mm, I don't think I want to get into this. And this is way, this is probably six, seven, seven years ago when uh, I started getting into uh, trading after the whole 2017 Bitcoin craze happened. And I left what I was doing and became a, a, a penny stock trader, which was horrible for eight months and lasted a ton of money. Uh, but then went to futures. But I was looking at options at the time frame. This, you know, this options, this crypto, this futures, there's, yeah. you know, the outrights. But I didn't want to do all that stuff. So I, it was great that we have more of this conversation on options to get a little a little bit more of an idea. Before we move on, I did want to take a check over into the markets. We'd like to split that up. It, excuse me. It looks like the uh, ES and the NQ, the two equities, I have them up on five-minute charts. They're the two top charts that you're looking at now. They pulled back some, and although I'm not a big trend line guy, I will do this for all the trend line traders. And we're going to put a we're going to put a line on each one of these just so just so we can give it a a a visual and see what we're doing just about that right there. Um. So. Not too much in the market, not too large of a moves. I don't expect too much out of it, just dropping down, recovering a little. It's a little bit right around settlement price of, of yesterday. Um, we'll yeah, see what happens. Hopefully right. we get some good push-ups towards, towards power hour come up here in a few. What else do you have on your options chains there in your options knowledge? I'd love to hear some more of that. And then um, and I'm going to share a little yeah. thing, a little funky thing we got on a moving average outlay that I think the traders would be interested in. I think, you know, I've sort of tried to uh, put the kibosh down on uh, digging into that option space because, you know, I really, it's a space where you can get into a lot of trouble knowing just a little bit. And so mm -hmm. the big things to remember is if you say to yourself, I wonder what market participants are doing, go to the chains for whatever platform that you're using, if you can see the chains and just see where they're crowding. If they're crowding in that space, you probably don't want to trade in that space. You want to trade outside the space because if it doesn't move, then everything goes to zero right in the center. And if it does move, your edges are going to take, uh, your edges are going to get a lot of upside. So for instance, this is one of the things that makes options beautiful. There's a trade called a strangle, right? 
And what a strangle Mm -hmm. is, is that you buy a put on one side and you buy a call on the other side at a different strike. Now, a straddle, just like if you're getting on a horse, they would have the same strike, only you would buy a call and then you would buy a put. Same strike, right? The strangle Mm -hmm. twists it and puts the put at a lower price and the call at a higher price or the other way around. But I don't know why somebody, I mean, that'd really be betting. Um, that, that puts you in a, in a, in a fair bit of a pickle, unless <laughs> you had, you had some other strategy behind it. So what that means is big moves get captured. So you can buy an option, the further away it is from the actual price, the, the strike, the further away it is, the cheaper it gets, but also the less probable that you're right. And so it could have a delta of two, like two days ago, two days ago. Yes. Two days ago, the 500 calls were, I don't know, they were like two pennies and they went to $3 by the end of the day. Yeah. And so, but knowing that it's moving there is one of the reasons we use volatility bands, right? The volatility bands tell us, hey, this is what's happening. This is what you need to look for, X, Y, Z. And so that's why I love focusing on those volatility bands and getting them up in a space where we can use them more effectively in our trading. So I'm very excited to see what you're talking about from sure. uh, the moving average perspective while using top step X. So I'm mm-hmm. Absolutely. And thank you again for going through that. I know we hit some things in, in chat. We're not an options trading um, uh, you know, company, um, but knowledge is power. And hopefully you did learn something. And one thing that I learned out of this is, well, two things actually. One is, yeah, I'm, it's, I'm not interested in trading options. <laughs> uh, and and two is that some of it has the same features and the same things um, uh, surrounded and wrapped around as in futures. Like there's longs and shorts or calls and puts. Exactly. There's strangles, right? And there's straddles, right? Um, that is an opening range, breakouts, highs and lows. Uh, you're still looking at price changes over time. Uh, futures has an expiration date, albeit different than options, but they do have an expiration date. So there's some similarities in there, and we just wanted to come out and just present something else to you just to show you that, hey, there's another way of looking at this. You have another platform, something else you can do. And I, I know a lot of traders that will trade intraday. I shouldn't say I know a lot. I know of traders that will trade intraday futures. They will have options and hold them for maybe a week or two of the expiration and try to get in and out of those, but a little bit longer. So they don't really have to watch them all day long. And then they also have investments that they'll check in eight months. That's a great way, which is not trading advice <laughs> whatsoever, but that's a great way that somebody may want to look at diversifying their portfolio. I'm going to take a short right now, selling market, and I'll tell you, and I'll tell you why. This is going to play right into it. Uh, Traders, what you're looking at here is a moving average uh, above and below. I'm actually, bam, I just flattened that trade. It I, That was right Beautiful. off the bat. It's exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's exactly. They, I couldn't even get the position in to tell the production team what I took. So we just took one. I, I, I marketed in. And why did I mark it in? I'm going to go explain this for, uh, yeah, we got time. I'll explain this in one moment. But you see that red, that red moving average line that is a 100 SMA, it's red because I have it calculating on the bottom of the candles, not the close. The green calculates on the top of the candles, not the close. So if I'm going on the downside, I'm, I want to make sure that the dang market is going down. So I'm not going to go short unless I'm under the red moving average. Because if I'm at a close, what if the last five candles were really, really, really tiny candles, but they were all closed on the upside? And I'm like, oh, am I going to go short here? Oh, I'm sorry, but they would close on a downside. I'm like, am I going to go short here because the market is going up? But if the market's going up and the candles close barely on the downside with big long wicks, that might not be something I want to take. But if I'm plotting the um, two moving averages, the same, they're both 100 SMAs, and I'm using one to plot averaging the high of the candles, the other the low with the same amount, uh, I have a better idea about this. I say, okay, well, let me just let me just 
take it only if that red one goes instead of the close. You can add one more component to this. And look at this dump off. I'm going to toggle over just real quick to the other. Hey, what do you think of those? What do you think of those uh, spontaneous trend lines that I don't use and don't really know much about? No, I'm just yeah. kidding. Mm -hmm. I drew those on there so we could see what's going on to bounce, 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 bounce. I honestly have no idea that it's going to break like that, but it, it really did. The NQ and the ES came out. Do we have news coming up or something? But um, it feels like it. Yeah. That feels like it, a newsy move. It did feel like it. I got book map on my right. I technically my book map. It's the bubble thing on my right hand side from Quant Tower, and I. By looking at that, yeah, we still got places to go. Um, back to top step X. Sorry, I'm bouncing around there, but we want to jump back to the markets whenever we see something moving like that. Yeah. So, crazy. yeah, look at that. Um, that is amazing. Isn't that, that is isn't so that amazing? From 870 to we – we're 100 points down oh, right now. Right. We're 100 points down wow. right now. This is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. You can All right. Yeah. Why? See what's see what's going on. And for folks, let me I've said this before. So while we're at it, if I may have taken a short I'm I sorry, a long. What if I took a what if Yeah, that was good, right? What if I took a long right in that area because it came down to my moving average and I think it's gonna go back up? And it didn't, it broke through. And I said, actually, you know what? Okay, I got stopped out. But look at this support area. I'm gonna take a long right there. And then I go and get stopped out. And what happens if right in between there, we had VWAP and I took a long right there. So I took a long, got stopped out because it wasn't a moving average thing. VWAP was below it. I took a long for a bounce off VWAP and it went through it. And then I took a long again at a support level and it went right through it. Okay. I can go back now and look and say, oh my goodness, you should never catch a falling knife. You don't know it's a falling knife until it is a falling knife. I did this before. Also, uh, I just want to make sure this new trader's watching. But this is one of the things, the, those cliches that, that drive me crazy. You know, a trend is a trend. Yeah, well, it's not a trend until it actually is one. And then by that time, it might be too late, as we just saw with those trend lines. Okay, I said all yeah. that to say this. Yeah. Uh, these moving averages here, they're 100s. But... Here's my thought. The whole point of this whole story, and I hope you're with me with this, Anne-Marie. I'm going to put another moving average on here, but it's going to be half the size of them. Let me turn it on. I made it yellow. Okay? So I have my high of my moving average here and a low of my moving average. The green is the high, and the red is the low. Well, this yellow one is half the size. It's a 50, closing. It's a 50 moving average on the close. Okay, now mm -hmm. why do I want to do this? Because if I'm in a long position, say I'm in a long position, then I may want to get out of my long position when the faster moving average hits the top, not when the real one. So if I have a, a like if I did a moving average crossover, 50 and 100, it crosses over and I go up. Well, crosses over, I'm up. But I want to get out of that trade, not when the 50 comes back down to the 100 again, but maybe at a 20 crosses the 50. Okay, and then I'm not going to get into a short until that 100, until that 50 goes below that 100. And then when it curls up, I want to get out when that 20 crosses the 50. So I'm, I'm waiting a little bit longer to get into those trades. And then I'm using a different faster moving average. So when the market rolls over, it's going to pop off quickly and potentially get me out of that trade in profit. Does it work all the time? What's, of course, it does not work all the time. Of course not. What size? It's not a bad what thing. Size Go ahead. Sticks? What size candlesticks are you using? Yeah, these are one minute candlesticks for the. I put okay. it on here for um, it's just so we can get some trades in with a faster movement. If I had an hourly mm -hmm. on here, we're gonna look at one candle for forty five minutes and not yeah. do anything. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I wanted yeah, to do yeah. that. And if anybody knows me, I'm in and out of trades quick. That's the second trade we took pretty quickly. It's. It's a micro. We are up 37, a whopping $37. And if I looked at that and I'm doing a mini with a larger account, that's a $370. You're, you're up. You walk two trades, two wins in, out. It took maybe seven minutes for both of that to happen. I'm not saying rush it. I'm just saying we want to keep our risk managed. And I'm trading a micro, so I'm trading a percentage of this little tiny account that I have, which is really $2,000. Does that make sense, Anne-Marie? Yeah, I like it. I like it. I took the how would the I took mm -hmm. the same trade um, that did. you did because I saw it falling off. Yeah, and so I was up, you know, five hundred bucks in a snap. So I mean, because it felt like a stone, which is why I love it. Did I love shorting? 
I love shorting because it's just everybody running for the fire escapes at once. You know, you sell and ask questions later. And that's um, that's part of the, the sweet spot of all of that, as it were. So I wish I'd mm -hmm. held it for longer. I wish I'd held it for longer. Yeah, isn't that funny? It's um, whenever we're in a, a trade uh, that doesn't go our way, you know, we didn't hold it long enough and we had too much size on. But if it goes our way, we're always out too soon with not as much size on. It's just I know. <laughs> welcome to trading. So I wanted to demonstrate that. Thank you for letting me jump in there because I really wanted to, to demonstrate something. And, and that's something I'm doing, folks, is I'm working on a process in the background that we can be going over a lot of these top step X features. And we'll just have these little breakout segments really short and say, hey, look at what you can do with this. Here's a couple different opportunities, a couple different ways, alternative ways you can use certain indicators, alternative charts that you can use, combinations between the two. Just kind of something to work on in, in, the, in the background that we're running through um, production right now. And hopefully Danielle's listening and she'll approve what I just said. Ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> Now nah, we talked about it before I came to that. We are still selling off. Uh, I will be honest. I will yeah. not be jumping into a short trade at this point, although it may continue. It may continue down quite dramatically here. Um, how else did you do today, uh, Anne Marie? Did you take anything this morning? I did. Um, I caught the move down, and then you know, like I mentioned at the very beginning, I got a really nice move down, and on because it was it's so funny and it's this thing with cognitive bias that we have even though we know what should happen so one of my favorite books ever is a book called thinking fast and slow by daniel kahneman and so it's it was truly it was a revolutionary book for me because he split it into the sense that he said, hey, listen, you really can't do two things at one time if one thing is, if the, both of those things are very complex. So, for instance, you cannot do mathematical computations and, um, I don't know, bake a cake. I don't know, whatever. <laughs> measure something, measure something specifically on a gram scale, right? So you can't do that. And the, the part of the brain that really gears up and says, hey, I got to really focus, that's called system two thinking. That's what he calls it. And then the other side is system one thinking. It's where you and I first meet, we look at each other and immediately our brain goes, something we either go oh he seems nice or oh i don't like her or whatever right it's that instant our brain so our brain loves to use instant shortcut kinds of things and so in this book now i'm a trained statistician i'm educated as a trained statistician and in the book he says listen even if you're a trained statistician and you know cognitive biases, you are no less likely to make that mistake. You are just as likely as anyone else, even though you have the education. And it's because we're hardwired to make snap decisions on the go. So back to my story this morning, I said, you know what, this is a buy the dip formation. If you saw my video in the in the lab or anywhere else, I said, hey, listen, it's a buy the dip formation. We look for the deep edges and we're going to buy them. Well, I went short on the way down, but the move was so fast that every little bounce I tried to short again. And then I heard Isaac Rivera was long and I was like, oh, OK, well. That's probably what's going on right there. You obviously are sitting on the wrong side of the trade because it's holding that bounce action. And he's saying, listen, I'm carrying this bounce up into this area. And so I gave back a ton of what I made during the day simply because my brain kept going, well, that moved down so fast. I must be wrong about by the dip. This is going to roll over. Now, 
it is rolling over. We are near the lows, mm -hmm. but it took all day <laughs> four hours right, right? but early it's four you were hours, right right you were right in my yeah. same and vein yeah equals wrong right but early yeah right but wrong. early equals wrong that's a great stat yeah. to have but we need to run Anne Marie. i'm sorry we have to jump into this oh my gosh. i want to hear the it's rest fantastic. of that isn't that go by fast? I really appreciate speaking yeah. with you, the statistician side of things. Thank you for sharing all that options information. I know we can get something out of it. Um, even if you don't trade them, it still has a lot of similarities with what we discussed earlier. As always, appreciate it. I will see you the next time. But right now, we do have Andre is going to be driving this segment. We have Doby jumping on here. I don't know if he's going big. I heard him say something earlier today that he's kind of backing it down and reeling it down a little bit. But we do have Danny's trays on as well, and maybe he will uh, put the full lot on there and, and have some fun at it. Hopefully we didn't steal the thunder with this big drop-off on our little Strategy Lab segment awesome. going on here. But we're going to put That's the great. beakers away. We're going to take our uh, computers, and we're going to shut them all down over here. And uh, we will see you on the next segment, folks. Stand by.
know what time it is. You know what day it is. It is the final power hour of the week. We got a special guest, Rips, back with us. Danny Trey's making a uh, guest appearance. You see him at the bottom there. How we got? How we doing today, fellas? Danny, how are you doing? Welcome. Good, good. I'm I'm barely up on the day today, but I'm up. You know, so had a positive day today. Very good, Rip. Thank you for making uh thank you for doing a spot appearance here on Power Hour. It's gonna be awesome. Dolby time with the shades, uh too cool for school. Uh his shine's so bright, he needs bright. Shade. Yeah, I was gonna say his shine's so bright, he needs shades today. I, on the other hand, hit my daily <laughs> loss limit, uh getting long on that breakdown. Kept getting long, kept getting long, and sure enough, uh yeah, took the took the L on the day. So I'll be driving, will not be trading here, but uh hopefully these fellow these fellows can uh, make some profits. I can live vicariously through them. So, uh, anyways, guys, do we we did not see any headlines for that breakdown. I didn't see anything, but I gotta say, Dolby, it looks like you just got LASIK surgery. You are looking fire, my man. <laughs> yep, I'm feeling That's it, man. Says. I'm feeling it. <laughs> yeah, wow, yeah, I see that. Start speaking to third person, Dolby. <laughs> Dolby, how do you do today? Oh, we're doing good, man. I'm up twenty nine. But two thousand nine hundred, almost three grand. Got uh, I'm gonna try to get another fifteen hundred in power hour. That's the goal. Wow. Okay. Okay. Hold on. I wanted the blanket back. It's still here. Still got it. Dude, <laughs> just styling and profiling. You see that, Danny? Yeah. Yeah. I love it. You know, I didn't uh, go style today. I just normal. That's good, man. No background What's... today. You know, You're kind of blinding me with the wrist, though. I mean, look yeah, at what that happened piece. there? What happened? You trade with that ice. That What's looks like up? a chandelier. It's getting cold in here, a little icy. <laughs> uh, I love That's why it. I got a blanket on because it's so cold in this room. That's right, man. <laughs> ice on his wrist. <laughs> love to see it, though. Uh, love to see it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going to meet up with Rips today. Let's go. That's All what right. I'm let's about. do it. Let's do it. A couple SoCal bros yeah, in the yeah. house. Danny and I, uh, we connected on the cell phone and uh, about, what was that, early start of this week, we were chatting it up and chopping it up and we actually live close to one another and I'm super stoked to uh, go out and take the wives out together, have a little double date and maybe enjoy some some dinner together. It's going to be fun. I'm super excited. Send some pictures. Yeah. Send some pictures. We'll post it. Most here. definitely. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Well, I like, right, I, I like NASDAQ to the short side. We got like, yeah, five minutes things are looking pretty the- heavy over here. On the Nazi, yeah. Why don't we do a little stop run of uh, seven twenty? See where that goes. Let's, you know where our goal should be. Our goal should be to catch a big move. Let that big <laughs> move come in. Yeah, I like that. I like that strategy, Danny. I'm not gonna lie. This bro. That was a that was a big move. Uh, anyone caught that short to the downside? I Good caught the longs more. this morning. I was uh, I was there. I caught a little piece of that short. I did. I ended up catching just a little taster. I've been pretty worn out for the rest of the day, but. Yep, caught a little bit of a taster here. I'm up uh, 15,800. 15, wow, wow. Hey, uh, so Rips, did you just did you just sense the panic selling? You're just like uh, point, click, and pray on this one? You just felt the panic uh, selling coming in? Yeah, I mean, was- you know, I was watching the auction. I happened to be at the right place at the right time. Uh, I was watching the auction, and we couldn't auction any higher. It just kept on right. kind of bouncing up, and we I saw a lot of liquidity kind of being displaced to the top side there. And it's just one of those things where, you know, it's not usually going to snap that hard, but it was one of those things where it was just, it, my book map couldn't even keep up with that snap to the downside. So I ended up just going down and down and down and down. And I was just, Hey, hands off, pay me. <laughs> that right. was pretty much it. Good on you, man. Good on you. So it's been a good week then rips. Would you say overall? Yeah, pretty good. I mean, it can always be better. I, I really wish that I would, would have caught 200 points to the downside off the open today could have been a $60,000 day for me, but you know, we take what we can. Ooh. That's right. That's right. <laughs> You go, no, I'm done. Sit down the hands. I'm done for the day. Lesson learned. Uh, it's close to break even, too. But uh, that last move to the downside, whoo, boy. That was that Yeah, was so uh, I, I'd like to see these 769s break out, uh, break down, rather, uh, in the uh, NASDAQ here. I might try, like, a little one-lot taster here, looking for a breakdown of 769s. Nice, I like you. that. Oh, Don't be time. oh man, this, this is how bearish this Don't is. I hit join ask and didn't even get filled. Just yeah, I, I hit sell market. That's right the way now. to do it. You got a Dolby time right in there. <laughs> right? I don't like market orders, man. Look know. at this guy. Man, imagine when Dolby time's number one on the leaderboard. What's he going to have a throw? He's going to have a crown on and uh, a I scepter. I would be the most obnoxious person on my earth if goodness. I was number one. A little throne he'll be sitting in? My goodness. That'd be the worst. Get rid of this wicker chair. Get a proper <laughs> mink coat. Uh-huh. Ooh, be proper good. mink coat. I like that. A little Versace. Yeah, like that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, you know, 
Next time I go to Aspen, I'm going to pick one up. Yeah. There you go. So we get a little bounce there at that 769 level. I do want to add into this if we're getting weak here. Try to just do a little scalp here to the downside into these 55, 755. That's what I'm looking for. It should pull me down. It doesn't need to be that big. UK is putting downside pressure on inflation. That is the latest headline. Uh, BOE's Pill, the chief economist, is speaking right now. What is his name? The Pill? Pill, P-I-L-L. -L. Like the, uh, the thing you take in Ibiza. Oh, okay. <laughs> I took a pill in Ibiza. <laughs> there you go. You know the tune. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Who's that? Did you guys see that long Twitter thread like yesterday from Mike Posner? Is that why you brought that up? Uh, I missed that, but he is legendary. He had like a 10 year, he, he wrote that song 10 years ago and he went through line, line by line. My life's so much better now. I don't need pills and the Bisa and things like that. It was pretty <laughs> melon. <laughs> it was pretty wow. melodramatic. Check that's it out. That, no, that's, dude, the song is a banger, man. Just let it sit. Just let it sit. <laughs> Speaking of sitting, this price is sitting right here below 769. We're not getting that crack I'm looking for. I might have to come out of this trade pretty quickly here if we're not going to get really? this flush of Cito to the downside. Is that Sherman? Uh, <laughs> Zoom Delta usually is. Flesh of Cito is, uh, it's, it's on the, I told you, it's on the trading handbook, page 67. We're up to 67 now. <laughs> a lot of pages What's 63? <laughs> uh, was it 63 before? Oh, well, yeah, then you went to 64, now we're on 67. Apparently Dolby hasn't been reading the manual. I mean. <coughs> Dolby. I've been very busy. Yeah, uh, that's why. Are you guys feeling short? Let's go. I'm, still I'm, short. I'm taking a little bit of heat on this position, but I'm looking to add if we get this flush back down below 70s here. I want to see weakness no. below the 70s to add into. But right now, it's not, it's not agreeing with me. I'm getting a little uh, pullback here. Oh, I might cool take a little bit map? more heat here. And waiting for it. Still at 775 here. I come out of this thing. All right. If you guys get out of shore, I'm gonna get long. Whoa. <laughs> I'm I'm not there yet. I mean, I'm not saying that this is the bottom. Uh, this is the bottom of the market here. I'm trying to see if we can get flush below 70s, and I could add into this. Danny trades. I just want to see if we can get this strength to go uh, hot and heavy into this for a nice little break of that 769 to the downside here. Okay, let me. Uh... Bank of England's pill again, yeah. out with some more pill speak, I guess you could call it. <laughs> Not exactly Fed speak. I'm going to cover half of this size. Come back down to five lots here. So realizing a little bit of a loss on that one. All right, you guys. So you guys thought I have the short? I'm halfway out. I took a little bit of heat there. Okay. Not fully out. I want to add back in if we get that flush back down through 70s, but... It's not agreeing with me yet. We still have a lot of bid support down here, which makes a lot of sense because you know we have a lot of bid to cover down here. What do you? What do you got? I got book map up right now, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, just watching book map, seeing if we can get this flush back below seventies. It's a key area of the market right here. Seven sixty nines have been a nice point of uh, contention that we've been watching, and if we break those seven sixty nines with uh, some strength to the downside, then we could potentially see this flushing down to seven thirty seven quarters. So that's what I'd be looking for there. All right. Let me see. Oh, okay. Let's make it short like 90s or 96. If we can We've got a back. Delta. Delta, delta of minus 14,000. Minus 14,000 Delta ES right now. Wow. Isn't that yes. something? I have positive 1,300 in the NQ. So we have room here for this to rip to the downside. Still just trying to be patient in this. I don't think yeah, the big moves might come, come out of this. Dan, yeah, Danny Strait, what, what are you looking for? Like, what level do you want to get to so you can find something big to sink your teeth into? Um, I, I'm, 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 I want a long. That's it. I, we're, <laughs> I just we're want in, that uh, long. Love it. I just joined Love that it. screen on your guys' thing. Let me change it. Hold on. I want to show you what I'm looking at here. Yeah, for sure. Uh, hold on. I got to. You talked to Pelosi today, Danny. <laughs> How's she Speed doing? Dial. Not yet. I just right. got to see my screen. So, 
This is what oh, I'm looking you. at. We got two uh, demands. I'm, there, I'm in the long right now. I hate to say it. I'm in longs. I just covered Danny, so you're good. You're, I gave you the okay. runway. You're good to go. <laughs> uh, yeah. That drops me back down to 13,300, yeah. so a little bit of loss there. I'm in longs at 75, so I'm mistaking these longs all the way until – I know I'm on trading view, but my entry is 75. Um, but I'm thinking about writing these up at least to these highs over here, 100 ticks over here possibly, maybe 100 ticks. So basically, I'll kind of explain a little bit of my strategy, right? And then I'll have a 50, I'll have a 60 tick stop loss. So I think the risk to reward here is pretty good, right? I think it's pretty solid. Um, 60 tick dub, maybe we can put it at 65 here. And then 100 tick win. So pretty much what I look for is, I don't know, take a look at uh, ES, right? And take a look at NQ. So I did get an early entry. Um, I will get out. We hit that 65 tick mark. Um, ES is bouncing at 50% of the midpoint. I use that as a psychological level of the market, of, of the zones that I mark. Once ES gets below that 50% mark, then I have the opportunity to play short. Um, so again, I'm long. Even if I get stopped out, I'm not going to have a short thesis till we get under that 50% level. So once we get under that 50% level, then I'll play, you know, I'll consider playing some shorts. But right now, I got a long bias until we at least break this 50% level. Once we break that 50% level, then I'll consider saying, all right, you know what? The shorts are going to pop in. But right now, I'm staying long. They get an entry at 75, um, but I'm going to stay long till we get, I'm going to stay just long, you know, until we get below that 50%. That's it. I use my levels very 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 properly so you know um we take a look at these zones over here it's a pretty tough demand zone the way that i view the market is let's take a look at the five minute right this is how i view it so what caused us to balance over here was this balance right the top of this balance was the last point where those sellers were able to bring price to and they could have had control before again the market ended up coming down so again it's a level where we could easily bounce um then we have those the whole zone the market open to the bottom of the zone that's the zone this is the liquidity level and then 50 percent is that psychological level that we pay attention to right and then again we want those buyers to head into here once we head into here this is actually first tp right here right so this is actually first tp this area 70 90 90 that's the first tp area and then if we break that level, we go for this imbalance gap fill. So do I think price can go all the way and fill this whole gap over here? I do think it's possible. Um, but with the type of market we're in, it's tough. Again, my, my strategy is more of a reversal strategy. I don't think a lot of people really understand, you know, the type of strategy that I use in the market. It's uh, I use these uh, things that are called like liquidity levels. I know. Uh, it's just the term that I use. There you go. We're about to hit that T first TP right here. Um, How many contracts you take TP? on that one? Uh, <laughs> ten. But okay. it's that first liquidity level, and um, that we're seeing here. So that's the level that I'm paying attention to. Um, there you go. It just smashed. So at this point, I would move that stop to break even, right? So once you hit that first TP, you always want to move that stop to break even. That's what you want to do, right? And then you let the rest ride. Like at this point, you have to have no worry because again, what's going on? You're taking no risk anymore. You know, right. at this point, you're only riding, right? You hit, let's say 65 ticks. You could have sold at that TP level. I'm holding my full position. Just going to try to write it up again because I'm up for the day. I'm down to take that risk. If I get stopped out, I might have some slippage, maybe 100, 200 bucks. But for me, every time I trade, I'm always that type of person. You guys know me, right? That's down to take that risk. You know, I'm all for risk, you know. But is there really any risk here that we're taking? Not really, right? We're not really taking any risk because we already hit that TP level. Stop is moved to break even. So we hit back at this level. We get hit at break even. That's fine, right? We can always find another entry too. You know what I mean? So again, my stop right now is chilling at exactly 75. And on my trade over, if you guys want me to pull that up, I can share my screen to that as well. And 
Um, I'm going past this liquidity break, and then we have a liquidity gap. Again, it's a term that I use. So this whole green spot is a liquidity gap that we have to fill. So we might get end of the day pump, maybe, right? Again, the market's very tricky, you know, so we never know. Um, <clears throat> you know, we keep hitting that liquidity level. We keep hitting that first TP and rejecting off of it. Again, we're gonna have to see what the market wants to do. But again, stop is move to break even. It looks like it's about to get hit. And we're just ranged down in this five minute. Yeah, yeah, just got are. hit at my break even. So yeah, right. are you flat, Danny? Danny, Danny Trace, are you flat. flat right now? All right, I'm what's your uh, what's now. your PNL? What's your PNL so we can update it here on the screen? uh right now it's still a thousand that would have been a great trade if i would have taken profits i didn't take a single profit on that but that's the risk that i take you know what i mean um you know it would have been a great trade but i'm, I'm up a thousand five hundred on the day right now oh, i'll pull it up let me uh again those longs might still pull in make a make their way up into that liquidity gap over here from top to bottom and then uh We'll see right now because we just retested that level on ES. We keep hitting that level too. My first TP just keeps hitting. So I'm not in any position right now. I'm flat, but we might go and fill that imbalance gap up there. We might go all hey, the Danny, way up. Hey, Danny, Danny, is this uh, what do you what, what account are you trading? XFA Live Combine. What are you trading? Just so we can update it on the screen. Uh, there. uh Combine right now. Combine. Okay. Yeah. And let me see if we can grab a a little short scalp. At uh, 98 okay. evens and then QB, top of the five minute range right here. Like, I think I'm risking like 300 or something. I do I have another like XFA coming, okay. but you know, I do have uh, another XFA coming right now, but I haven't gotten it yet. Hey, <laughs> patience, patience. Coming. It's coming. Where are you at? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we right here, man. You know where we're at. You know where to find us. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I know, I'm patient. All right. But yeah, those lines still popping in. Yeah, we're running into that 797 and three quarters level. We want to clear over that to start to see this popping off. Yeah, that's that's the level that I want to see us auctioning over is 797 and three quarters. That's where I think that there's going to be a really nice long opportunity. So we'll have to see if that kind of transpires here. I'm just watching the liquidity here in Bookmap, seeing whether or not we're going to take out those 797s right now. Big rejection there. But if we pop above that level, it's going to be pretty extreme to the north side here. Keep us posted. Uh, Mark is catching a bit of a bid here. In the meantime, before we hit the 230 early MOC imbalance, uh, uh, sorry there, Jack, what do you got there? I think you got some shout outs. Yeah, we just wanted to shout out a couple of standout uh, traders in the live funded accounts today. Uh, she is up $6,069 into the weekend, and Nicholas T is up 4600 So great job, y'all. I'd also like nice to point trading. out that uh, NVIDIA is now has a larger market cap than the entire S&P 500 energy sector. <laughs> oh, my. <laughs> okay. That's that incredible. Uh, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. Totally that normal. Right. Totally normal. Uh, yep. Nothing to see here. Totally normal stuff. <laughs> Nothing to see here. Uh As the markets are kind of wrestling with this 797 level. We'll have to see if that kind of gives out or not. Got 76% uh, long bias in the NQ right now. 66% long bias in the ES. Yeah, my trigger point is going to be seeing the auction over 797 and three quarters. That's really what I'm going to be looking for on my end here. <clears throat> I still want to it see is just kind of stalling out up here. Andre, you've you've been watching the tilt a lot today. Is it just me or has Nasdaq been incredibly bullish almost all, all day. day today? All day. All day. Even on that sell off about uh hour ago or so. Um it only it only got to 50-50. They must have gotten killed on that long. Uh, the longs must have gotten smoked because yeah. it didn't I mean, really just unwind. 70, yeah, seventy thirty right now. Yeah, it had to have gotten smoked on that. Uh, those longs probably gonna fill that gap over here. In, in yep. what I think is gonna happen. 
you know. Um, so I'll find another entry. I pulled up my trade over screen as well for you guys. Thank you. Um, yeah. Uh, I find another entry here. Hey, we got 2,600 yeah. people watching right now. Power hour on the Friday, last uh, trading day of the week. You guys would be so kind. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. We really appreciate it. Uh, we got a big week coming for you guys next week. I uh, don't know what our full schedule is for Monday. I think it might just be a half it's a half day trade. Are you guys, Rips, are you going to be trading on Monday? You I want to take uh, the days off since we only have seven vacation days after that. So it's like, you know, any chance uh, I can get to have a break from the screens, I'll take it. For sure, for sure. That's I'm a huge fan of uh, getting some some break from the screen time. <laughs> Absolutely. It's right. uh, going to be whatever, whatever session. Although, who knows? With, like, the volatility today. Right. Let's see if it carries over to Monday. Monday might just be bananas. You never know. Could be light and whippy yeah. and, uh, yeah. Guys, yeah, we, we missed that. Missed that I might get in again. Yep. Yeah, hop in there. I'm in the long again, guys. Okay. That was not me. Someone has their charts. I think it's Danny. Order filled. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Then. That was me. So I'm taking a light contract on here. I'm only taking one. Everyone in um, chat just double check their platform. Toby <laughs> 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 time. Toby like that one. Look at those shades. That was funny. Look at those shades. <laughs> I do want we to need a Dolby Time above. soundboard over here. Yeah, we do. Yeah, not going crazy on this trade, not going heavy, but I do want to. Okay, what do you long from Dan? Any, any, what do you long for? We got to update the board. Ninety-three right now. Ninety-three. Thank you. Yeah, I do want to see the break above this level. If we get the break, I'll add more to it. Right now, I'm staying light. Um. So yeah, we get the break above. I will uh, add into this position right now. I have a fifty-five tick stop loss, sitting at seventy-nine. Here they um, come. We get that pump. That, that's what's gonna be. It's gonna be nice. Yeah, and we'll add to this. We'll go heavy on this too. So yeah, we'll they're coming. Wait. They want it. They want to swipe these seven ninety seven. No, we're gonna get the whole fill. I think we might get the fill. We might get a little pump back. That's the only thing that I don't want. You know, pulled pork. We already got the longs from the from the bottom down there, but I didn't maintain that position. So, <clears throat> um. This is it's so funny that one too. The one that the longs I had down here, I got stopped at exactly at break even, and then it bounced, popped back up. So right now, yeah, those are the worst. Again, those are the worst. We're above that. We're above that gap again. So my stop at seventy nine and not going super crazy on this position, again is 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 a good thing, right? I want to stay light until we get that momentum push, and we stay above at least ninety one. If we can stay above 91, like right now what's happening looks very good. Everything looks good. Look at the five-minute. Looks good. Again, I just need that. The, the only reason I'm not going heavy into this is because the buyers, they're not pushing up right now, right? Yeah. They're struggling at yeah, this level. They're kind of uh, they're kind of getting weak once right. we get up to that level there. Yeah, exactly. So they get weak. So, again, we don't add into weak buyers, you know? We take those light. Again, we're, we are having an early entry suggesting that the buyers might come in and Pull price all the way up, but we want to take it easy on positions like this, at least for me. Yeah, that's very good advice. Agree. You know, um, now we're under this level. So this was the level we want to maintain over 90. Here we go. See if we get that pump now. Um, I'll, I'm, I'm over here talking about my trading view. <laughs> it's because I chart on trading view, but I trade on trade of it. You know what I mean? So it's, gotcha. uh, it's, it's tough, you know, but. It's still it's really trying to push up. through this level here, but we're we're running into some yeah. weak buyers and some heavy sellers as we it, get up here. It's exactly. I agree just with you. Right? me already. Like, yeah. Where are you at there, Dolby Time? Where's your fill looking for? Uh, I want 98 evens. Just just stretch this five minute range, just like by a couple ticks, and roll back over again. That's evens. what I'm trying to play. Uh, I'm getting in more on the pullbacks. So if we get pullbacks, we get more buyers. I'm going in heavier. And I, I might grab some ES as well. ES might be a good one as well, you know? Oh, yeah? We got movement? We might send it. Uptick on ES. Oh, send it? Hell yeah. Oh, nice. Oh, maybe I tried yes, to shorten here then. One. This is a better... You know? mm. hey, early MOC. Uh, what did I see? 70... What you, what you got there, Rips? Early MOC. Uh, I've got nothing coming across my board so far for some reason. Okay. I got nothing yet. I got 73 million sell side. Just in wow, there we go. Confirm. Pretty light. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
All right, I'm going to work on order in ES too. It's basically this the same five minute range trade. But it's, it's going to have to move a little bit for me to get some action here. Yeah, this thing looks like it just doesn't want to push up just yet, but we're also not rolling over hard enough yet. We have room all the way down to kind of 75 to catch Man, some we wins if we do we start to roll there. Yet. But yeah, this might be a good area to be adding to finesse a long side yeah. position. But I agree. It's just, yep. it's, it's just still not kind of perking up yet like we want to see. We want to see this thing slamming through 91, like Danny said. I'd try longs too at like 60. 60 that's i mean i don't think we'll break 75 unless it's it, it's a, like that would negate the trade for me if we're slamming through 75s oh interesting i see okay it's like just too much weakness in your opinion so if we get that low you think we could go down to like 20s or something mm -hmm. yeah like we're rolling right now if we don't catch here at 75s i think it's going to be too weak to hold God, what was the high? 97s and i needed 98s damn so what four ticks i missed that short buy unfortunate Than anything right now. God. Not 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 chasing this though. Yeah, the sideways trade's wild. Yep. It's close. It's close. Would have been a good trade. Would have been like almost twenty points in like five minutes. All right, they're coming in now. Let's go. This is the time to add right here. Uh oh. Go we're going full pork. Whatever. Me. We're going full pork. Pulled Mash pork, him. baby. Pulled pork. Pulled pork, dude. Yeah, <laughs> dude. Just pulled pork. Whatever, dude. You know what? Eight contracts. I'm going to pass this eval. Hit my win limit. You know, show what's up, right? <laughs> Here we go. I love it. Full pork, man. Full pork. I, I love that buying oh, pressure. We hit that you level on ES perfectly, man. We nailed that level on ES perfectly. All right, what'd now, you buy, Danny? Danny, what'd you buy? You gotta keep keep me updated, my man. Thank you. Thank you from what price? 83. 83. Thank you, sir. Right here. Yeah, but we need this move up. We can't get the push down. We keep going up to that key level and then rejecting. That's my only issue. I know, that's so why I'm trying to get yeah. it. All right, let's see if we can do 96 and a half. 96 and a half. 96 and a half. Cat, what are yeah, you doing right low. now? 25 minutes. Good job. And we got that solid. I mean, the Delta update from my man John Hoagland. Minus 11,000 as of three <laughs> minutes ago. Yes, minus 11,000. Rips you in a hat. Place a trade on my keyboard right now. These are really quick. I can do a market internals update here. Uh, the nice yeah, volume is at 462 million shares, which is 5% above its one month average. Decliners are leading advancers by 1.5 to 1. The NASDAQ volume is 4.25 billion shares, 2% below its one month average. Decliners are leading advancers by 1.4 to 1. And the VIX is flat at 14 spot 05. Thank you. All right. Look at this. Beautiful. We need the break of that 91, and then we add more. We need the up and over. <laughs> 91. Right now, I'm in eight contracts. I'll hit 10. We just need that breaking over. It's a tough level, but, you know, we keep hitting that level. Keeps yeah, it just keeps yes, rinsing right over. below it, looking to, to bust on through. And there's you have to figure that there's a lot of shorts that are going into this close here, and you'd figure that if they're not getting yep. the price that they want, they're going to yep. have to be covering. Agree. Mm -hmm. Come failed moves, come fast moves. I just can't get filled on anything right now. And I refuse to take a market order. Hold on, boys. We need that pump over 91, and then we're solid, dude. Give it to him. No. Not yeah, this is some of the uh, stickiest price action I've seen in Power Hour lately, so it's just unfortunate. Yeah, it is very tightly wound so far. But when it winds up tight like this, the longer it consolidates, the bigger the move that we get. You have to remember that. Mm -hmm. So... We could have a You're rocket right. ship through 91. Why is that, Rips? Sorry, why is that, Rips? My game plan. The longer that we consolidate in an area, the more orders that are building up, the more stop orders that are going to be laced up on this uh, on the dome here. And yep. uh, the longer that we remain in a range, the more stop orders that are going to be stacked on either side. And some side has to break. Some side's going to win that tug of war. But 
You might la run into a lack of follow through. So if we get through those 91s, we don't see follow through, it can whip right back down. So what we want to see in the case of Danny's trade, uh, we want to see this ripping right through that 91 and follow through. Good stuff. Good stuff. <sighs> When should I lose hopes, Rips? What's that? On these longs. When should I lose hope on these longs? 75 break and confirmation through 75. So I'd say like a flush down to 65 would be, uh, you know, pull the rip cord on it. Hey. Like right now, it's just, you know, it's kind of just weak, soft here. But, you know, if we, uh, if we gather some liquidity back here at 75, we could force it back up. It's just a matter of time. You know, whoever gives up first, it's, uh, it's kind of hot potato here because if the, uh, if the shorts capitulate early, then we'll see that move to the upside. But if they're stubborn no, and they're holding till the bitter end, you know, you could have the longs giving up first and then we have a move that would snap us to the downside here. I'll definitely get out like around 74, okay. 73. Yeah. 73 is going to be my stop on this. Yeah, I think we just need to uh, we need to have this hold these 75s. If we don't have bid support at these 75s, it could end up being curtains here for the long side. Like I said, you know, you have a lot of shorts that are sitting here. It's just a matter of when they're going to capitulate. If they're looking for below 769 to capitulate, then, you know, they're just going to keep hammering this thing short. I'm going to see if I can actually get. Oh, it's not me. If I can get, get long. Yeah. The bottom of this five minute. NASDAQ, on a, Dolby. On a, yeah, NQ on a stop run. Rex, like what I was saying like earlier today, like if you look at like a five minute range, like all the happiest longs are at the very bottom, and then the weakest players are a tick below that. Yep. Right. Who, yeah, it's know, generally longs who have their who have their stops at like 60, 60 evens or, P, or like uh you know, shorts who are doing like a, a stop order to get in real quick, like they are by far the weakest and most not confident traders are just a tick below the happiest people in the market. So I want to see if we can get a stop run of the five minute range and then maybe shoot back up again. Yeah, below 769 is where it gets extra speedy to the downside. As long as we're holding above wow. that, there still is a hope that we can revisit the uh, the top side move here. Right now, we're gathering a lot of liquidity just below 75 on the bid side. So we'll have to see. 20 minutes. Man, already? I need more time, Dre. I do. Oh, here they go. More time. Nope. Hello, NQ. Here's the bottom of the five minute range. Yeah, I'm working 61 and three quarters in NASDAQ. Yeah, I mean, we're about to break the lows. We're about to break 50% here. So we'll see what happens. All right, NQ has flipped in tilt. It is now 53% short bias. That's probably bullish, to be honest. Yeah. They've been, like, wrong all day. Yeah. So we have a nice 15-minute uh, range, too. So got three bars. Pretty good. Sweet. All right, we got this. We got this. All right, we got filled. So there's that yeah, flush below 769 to the downside three here. Quarters. I'm risking 300 on this. This feels terrible, but it's NASDAQ. Some momentum doesn't mean like mean anything here. If we get a bounce up towards 769 again, I might look to take like, you know, one contract taste or short or yeah, something. Do it. Let's go buyers. <laughs> Let's go buyers. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I don't so, know. Rips, I don't how know. did you? Mm -hmm. Rips, how did you win know? on? Yeah, I went long uh, 61 and three quarters. Rips, how did you know that there was a bunch of sp like space below 61 and three quarters? Like, how did you know? It was uh, 769. I mean, that's the level that we're tracking there because you can see the, the signature is left behind on the tape there. And, and if we we're going to crack that level, we're going to get that speed to the downside. You took that long, though, right on that reflex? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in. Yeah, 61 and three quarters. Nice. Yeah, we're in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, this is just what happens with this type of liquidity, because think about it. You have shorts that are hammering this thing. They need to get paid. We're coming close to the end of the day. They're not going to hold this out. You're going to have some knuckleheads are going to be holding this out. But that move right there, we break below that. Everybody's rushing for the door to cover. So they're either going big to cover or the market covering. And so that's kind of what we're Got seeing it. on a move like that. Got it. Got it. Yeah, we're below 50% now. So 
Yeah, momentum is not great, but I've learned my We're lesson. We're about to get below fifty percent. It is gonna go under here. Um, I'll stab at the shorts. Um, again, momentum and Nasdaq I mean, have flipped so fast. I really want to show my uh, what's it called? I forgot. You can link your trade away to Trading View, right? Yep. Yeah, you can. I kind of show you guys what I have right now, but are you still in the trade, Danny? No, no, that's my screen right there. I'm flat. Flat. Okay. Yeah, we can get back above 61 and three quarters. That'd make me a happy boy because then we'd also get back within the 15 minute range as well. In the five minute range. Yeah, so 50% line is about this area here. 52. So once we get under 50%, that's the sign of short. Right now, uh, we're just chilling around uh, 53.75. 50, 54 flat is my 54.75 is my 50% area. So we get it under that 50% area, I'll go short. ES is already under 50%. I'll probably stab at ES shorts um, here. Uh, one contract on ES shorts, not NASDAQ. NASDAQ's moving too fast right now. Yes, yeah, NASDAQ range. could be interesting in the next yeah. uh, two minutes here. I still haven't, you know, I'm still not convinced, but we'll see. I'm, we'll I'm see. Yes right now. I'm not like convinced yes, either, to be honest. I, I this like does not yes feel shorts. great. Yeah, no, short is under my 50% mark, and it's retesting. If ES gets above, let's say maybe like 27, I'll get out, but ES is below that 50% mark, so. I'm gonna I move my stop up. Yes. Sellers, sellers. I'm with you, Noah Hall. I'm with you. Now we need the break on NQ. We get the break on NQ and ES falls We're super breaking. hard. That's gonna be solid. I mean, two cons if ES. <coughs> just trying to stick yeah. with that plan. I'm tightening up my risk just a hair. So from like 300 down to like 240. I'm not huge. But like ES was ro like rolling over. Like ES looks terrible. Like that would have been a really, really good short, like five minute consolidation short if I could have gotten filled at like 31. Yeah. Need the fawn ES. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, this is a nice flush here now. Yeah. I told we're under that 50% mark. Love it again. And we need that continuation. Yeah, we need to stay weak under 750. Like we're, we're you, under 50, 20 in the S&Ps as well is what we're looking for here. 50, 20, under 20s. Less than a minute till uh, liquidity injection. Yep, this is going to be a big one. Yeah, it is. Keep us... Uh, Especially uh, Mopex. Keep 50% what from what, guys? It's 50% uh, is the level that I look at when I'm marking my zone. It's a psychological level that I talk about. It's like the middle of my zone. Every time we're under that 50% level or above it, I have a short, long thesis bias kind of thing that occurs in my brain. NQ is still holding above that 50%. ES is below it. So that's why I went short on ES and not NQ, right? Because NQ is a little bit scary right now. It's ES a wild one. A chance to pop. If ES doesn't break, I mean, if NQ doesn't break, it's not going to too much. You know, we need that break. I on almost ES. want to get long again. Yeah. Uh, we're going to get, I'll probably get out. Eh. All right. Let's try long. All right. 61.50 long and Q. We're going to try it again. Let's see if this 15 min can pop back up again and hit the top of the range, which is 93 and a three quarters. If I don't get on this, if I don't win this one, then I'm probably just going to wrap it up for my uh, trading combine account and switch to practice. That's a good plan right there. How'd you uh, end up doing on your combine today? Oh, currently we're up like 2,700. Hey, that's an amazing day. Oh, man. Right there. Dude, hang on that's to that. Good. Hang on oh, to that. That's, that's I got one more right trade there. with 300 risk, so. There you so go. Yeah. We'll still be in good shape. Oh, shoot. Yes, sir. This is nice. Danny's getting that fade we're looking for. Very nice. Yeah. We just got to get under 50%. Yeah. 
you know, on NQ. There you go. We're under 50% on NQ. We just got to close because we keep coming to this level. We just got to close. We close, we're going to drop hard. Yeah. And then everything will just continue. We're going to go down to at least 39 and 40s. Okay. 39 and 40s on NQ, but I'm holding ES. I'm not holding NQ. NQ's, I think it's too volatile right now. Um, and it's going back and forth too much. Uh, yeah, ES not, is a lot easier to hold. Not loving you know, this. But another risk, one so. minute range. But see, here's the problem though. I'm long the top yep, of the one minute range. Which is trash. This is tough. There it is. There's that big flush of seat though. Yeah, we need 40s though. We need 40s to get okay. wiped out. What are you short and from, Danny? Get wiped out, we're good. I'm short from ES on 5,023. Thank so, you. Oh, we got you. There's two cons. Hey, but it's all right. Yes, for 5,023. We just need that break. We need a huge flush right now. Did you just lay back, watch it? <laughs> Is that what you do? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. Wait, you want my glasses, man? Dude, when I'm losing, <laughs> I do the same thing, though. When I'm losing, hey, I you. literally just go like this. You know who to call, uh, Danny Trades. Get her on the phone. <coughs> See if we can get this big drop here to the 40s. We just need 40 to get wiped out. Once 40 gets wiped out, we're chilling. Because we could bounce anywhere above 40. The longs could still come in. But again, it's the risk you take, right? So what can you say? You know? And I, it's, uh, I'm still short on this, taking it all the way down to the 40s. I mean, for people who want to sell before that, they can sell before that. But that's people that don't like taking risk. Mm -hmm. You gotta lose to win. You know what I mean? You get, you get what I'm saying. Rips knows. You gotta right? risk it to get the biscuit. Yeah. That's right. Risk it for you the Rari. Lose, <laughs> no risk, no Rari. Win. No risk, no Rari. <laughs> when, when do you win? All right, now would be a time to get short on NQ. I'm not gonna do it though, because again, it could pop. But right now would be the time to get short on NQ as well. 12 minutes. Go 12 through. minutes, boys. Told you. What did I say? Yeah, this right is now was a beautiful, time. beautiful, beautiful call that. there, Danny. Very nice. Yeah. 40s. We're at 40s. This is the level. This is it. This we is everything. This. We got to rip through this. And, uh oh, 40s, 40s. What did I say? 40s is key. <laughs> we got to rip through this. I'm still in Andy PS shorts right now. This 40s is Rips tough, is loving right this. Guys. It's it's really it's, 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 Woo. Took one off, took one off, so we ride the rest. Oh, I took everything off. Never mind. All right, we're done. I would have keep riding, but I sold everything. Wow, nice dude. He's know, on fire. Uh, <laughs> what I say about that entry on NQ though? Look at that. That's oh, huge. incredible. Can I That's show my uh, trading view? Is that okay? What's your PNL, Danny? You What's your PNL so we can update it? Um, on the day. Yes, sir. Let me say like two thousand. Like two thousand. Nice. All right, Robert. Robert, put yeah. like two thousand up there. <laughs> <laughs> like two. Um, it's kind of like uh, the best. So yeah, yeah, you know. <laughs> um, check my trading view screen right now, and this is the fifty percent level I was talking about. Um, right here, fifty percent level, right? Yep. See how we kept bouncing on it over here. Okay, so we kept bouncing on that long into the level. practice account. I think we're yeah, coming, coming up. up and, My is fifteen thousand um, delta. Yes. You know, kept coming up on it, and um, you know, we ended up breaking through it. That's why I ended up taking short. <coughs> so, uh, ES good. had already broken that. I think that was a perfect exit too. You know, so that yeah, was you um, nailed that perfectly. Yeah, 50%. Yeah. Look at this volatility here. We went uh, right oh. up in the NASDAQ. We bounced about 25 points to the top side, and now we're ripping right back down. This is, uh, this is I mean, this is the most relaxed power hour I've ever had. Not trading yeah, is true. beautiful. <laughs> yeah, right. Way easier. I love being the spectator. This is awesome. Well, 
going to come down to uh, what do we do here? Get that money. I'm long on my practice account at uh, 43.25. 43 and a quarter. Okay. It's not really nine like, minutes, like boys. Nine entry. minutes. Not really great. MOC entry. minus 690 Consistent. million. Thank you. Thank you, Carl Hungus. Memo C minus 690 million. Carl Hungus is on it. Carl He's Hungus a top step TV legend. Love seeing him in here. Mm-hmm. Carl Hungus likes Big Lebowski. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this is just barreling to the downside here. It's wild. I just pulled pork, pork, pork the short, guys. Full pork the short. I love practice accounts so much. Eight minutes left? That's nothing. Buckle up. So, Dan, are you going to trade on Monday? Uh, there's no – it's President's Day, right? I don't it's even half, know what we celebrate on President's Day. It's a half day. We just celebrate – It's a half our, day. Our, our, all the great presidents, Danny. Is that what we do the, on President's Day? All the great dead presidents. It's Washington's Andy. birthday on Monday, right? We just Good celebrate day. some freaking old man that can't even have Alzheimer's. <laughs> oh boy <laughs> I believe it's uh, George Washington's birthday is what we're celebrating that's the, the uh, fella on the, the one dollar right, bill right, 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 right. oh boy oh boy yeah, alright alright it's just nah. a ho- it's just a bank holiday that's all is it right. no, I, I, I'm pretty sure isn't it George Washington's birthday I'm, I'm not I think it might be it might be ripped but you, <laughs> I'm not even trying to make a joke up, here right, no, you can't even bring up George Washington without you know just somehow just barely into politics talk because I mean it's George Washington oh, okay but, gotcha gotcha uh, yeah <laughs> Yes, your intentions were very innocent. I think it is George Washington's birthday. His birthday okay, was February I thought, 22nd. Yeah, make sure I'm not going crazy. Oh, it here. wasn't. We were way off, Rips. We were way off. Wait, it's not it's George close. Washington's birthday? Apparently not. Yeah, his birthday's oh, the 22nd, we... but on the 3rd February, we honor the first president, George Washington. His birthday. Yeah, is, uh, I mean, I'm sure. looking at the nice here, and they're they're saying in big, bold letters, Washington's birthday. So unless it's a, mean, yeah. well, like a different Washington. <laughs> Hey, we got six hundred. We got six hundred lots sitting on the bid at five uh, fifty fifteen S and P's. Five hundred sixty on the bid now. That's some good stuff right there. Yeah. What, so what's uh, the deal with this uh, sell off? Like, why are we actually <laughs> selling off? We've been so bullish for the last wild. like forever. Right. What's forever. really going on? Well, you know, a lot of the catalyst right now is what we're seeing in Nvidia. We've had Nvidia basically dictate the directionality <laughs> of where the NQ goes. And, uh, you know, what's happening here is either a lot of profit taking or people are going heavy into puts in, uh, in NVIDIA here. Because if you think about it, I, I don't want to go too much into options. Anne Marie was actually really talking about options here. She, she gave a great discussion about it earlier. I was listening to that. Anne Marie, if you're here, big shout out to you. Uh, but yeah, she, uh, she was going into that. But basically, you know, if, if there's folks that are buying puts, the dealers who are selling those puts to hedge those positions are selling the underlying. So if there's a lot of put buying going into NVIDIA. They're selling the underlying. They're selling short NVIDIA, the actual stock ticker. So mm, pair that with it. people who are taking profits because we're pumped up all the way at 740. I mean, we're talking about a 13, 14 <laughs> uh, flush there in NVIDIA to close the day. Nice, 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 nice. Actually, 5, the, the NVIDIA chart. What? Yeah, 5, I was going to say what? 5 Five thousand the S and P is pretty comfortable for the dealers as well. Mm. Uh, my long is in the money now by a couple hundred bucks. There you go. Let's go, Dolby. Dolby time. Dolby time. Why not? A little practice account action. Preserve my trading combine. Switch to the practice account. Chat. Are you taking? You know notes? they say, Dolby. Practice so makes important. perfect. It does. Just abuse Minutes, your practice boys. account, chat. Just abuse it. Smash that reset <laughs> button as much right. as you want on your reset account. I got fifty percent. I know account. there's only five minutes left, and uh, uh, the shorts it's might come in. Ever. If we stay again, the shorts might come in again below fifty three. If we stay below right. fifty three seventy five, this is the time. That the shorts are going to come in if they come in. If we get above 53, then longs will write it up. I know there's five, four minutes left, but you know, that's where my analysis is at. We 53 is that key level, and we got to pay attention to it's either rejection, fall down, or we keep going up. Yep, we either go down or we go up. <laughs> well, you know, in the uh, in the I'm final. In the final three, two, and one minute here, we're going to see a lot more, because uh, it is Mopex Friday here, we're going to see a lot more liquidity coming in. 
and this can get very, very violent. So if this, I mean, it's Friday. If you're if you're really coming down to the wire, just lock it up for the day. You know, no, don't don't uh, don't do anything Absolutely. crazy because there's not really much you can do after the bell rings. It's just going to be it's over until Tuesday at that point. So just what you a know, damn week, right? Lock it up. You definitely know you're tilted if you're still trading on a Friday five minutes before close. Yeah. Yeah, when I used to trade equities, I would uh, find myself when I was extra, extra tilted, I would be uh, trading until <laughs> about 8 p.m. in small caps uh, on a Friday, nice. no less. Yeah. That's when you know you're really degen dolbing out there. <laughs> well, time, I man. never did that. Don't, don't tie my name <laughs> to such poor behavior, Rips. I would never. <laughs> we got three right, minutes. We are uh, two know, and a half minutes out from the close here. Two and a half, two and a half. Two and a half. So at this point, what should we do? I mean, that might be all she wrote, Danny. That might be all she wrote. It is kind of holding these lows here. There might be a, an extension to the top side to close us out here. That's kind of what happened uh, at the uh, <laughs> the last move here uh, yesterday. Yesterday was an extraordinary move to the top side, but that was because of earnings. We don't have earnings today that I'm aware of. Just double check my schedule here. 400 lot on the 19 bid in the S&Ps. 400 lot on the 19 bid. Okay. We are kind of holding it up here. All right. Not doing a whole lot. It'd be nice to get over like 55. He's short taking a Final 120 cover. seconds here. He's short's got to cover, no? You would think, right? Uh, I think that a decent amount did. The Delta kind of brought back to neutral here in the NQ. Let's oh. see the S&Ps. <laughs> Oh, Delta <laughs> and the S&Ps were at negative 18,000 in the Delta. Come on. Come on. I mean, come on. Two minutes. 600 line, 19 bid. Trades. 19's trade. Question in chat. How will the market be on Monday? I think it's going to be pretty uh, choppy, dead, skippy. I'm not going to be, uh, I'm not going to be trading it myself. No. I wouldn't recommend it. Take the day off. Treat yourself. Three-day weekend for the Yeah, traders. there's only... Only seven more market holidays in the year besides uh, Monday. So, you know, live it up. For, spend time with your friends. Spend time with your family. Enjoy your life. Final minute here, not, folks. Final 60 great. seconds. Final minute of the day. Final minute of the week. It's been one hell of a week, guys. You guys were awesome. Yeah, dude. Insane dude, week. what a week. Good TV. <sighs> good volatility. Yeah. We will be on Monday. Uh, it'll be uh, half day, but we will be on in the morning. So please tune in. We got some special guests. We got, we'll let you guys, we'll let this sucker trade out right here. Let's watch this play out. Thank you to everybody who tuned in today. It was a real yeah. pleasure sharing the, uh, the time with everybody out there in chat. I hope everybody has an amazing, amazing weekend out there. And uh, please enjoy that time away from the screens. Yeah, Rips, that was a masterclass today on how not to oh, get, uh, yeah, that was very well done. It was not easy trade, but the volatility was there. And this is what, wow, seven, wow, big offer in the S&Ps. There's a 900 lot chasing to the downside here. Wow. Holy smokes. He just hit the bid. Here we go. NQ's hanging in there so far. Bids are stacked. Now. Here we go. Here come the buyers. Bids Bowsers. Wow. Bids are stacked in the S&Ps right now. Look I'm still going to get this on. Yeah, that sounds good. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining us. All the Bell to Bellers out there, thank you so much. Rips, you the man. Great trade today. Danny Trades, thank you for jumping on today. Dolby time, dude, keep those shades on all weekend and rock those <laughs> when we see you on Monday. Uh, that is all for the week. We got, uh, like I said, half day on upcoming with Monday. We got Stock Market Wolf, Hogue, Deanna, myself, and MP in the mornings, as well as uh, Shoulder Tap and Power Players and Top Quiz. So uh, full lineup for the half day. Thank you guys for joining us. Uh, it's been a pleasure, and we will see you guys next week. Yep. Yo, are we have the live.